Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to another wonderful Saturday stream. Gonna try and beat my previous time of nine hours uh, for the last stream today. Hopefully gonna get this done in five to six hours actually, um, or less. That's the goal for today, is to be quick and speedy and I've got a good amount of stuff already planned out um, for the storyboard. Uh, let me just close some stuff real quick. And now we're here on Illustrator. Uh, I went ahead and already wrote out everything uh, that needs to happen for each scene. It's already up above each of these uh, little sections. Uh, I had, okay, so this week should be a little bit easier than previous weeks because I've kind of already got the style pinned down. Uh, Noah and I were actually working on a review project all week. Uh, where we were doing visual exploration, uh, trying to figure out what styles we could throw at a potential project and, and see what stuck. Um, and this one was one of the favorite ones that, that we did. However, it didn't end up getting chosen uh, because it was actually too stylized. So uh, anyway, I see uh, Islam says, hey. Naeem says, hey, how are you? I'm doing fine, doing well. It's a lovely Saturday. Lorenzo says, let's go. Let's go, Lorenzo. Broken says, hey. And Shoeb says, hi. Hello, everybody. Glad to see you again. It's going to be a good one today. Anyway. Here is this wonderful style we're going to be using today. Uh, it's this like kind of mix between some of the normal gradient stuff I've been doing. However, I I really like some of the older graphics from, uh, you know, those like title cards from the old Looney Tunes. Uh, let me, hold on. Let me grab this source and then we'll open up. Uh, is it this one? Yeah. Okay, so we got Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Uh, I found this Google Drive link a long time ago on Reddit that has every single title card that was ever used on Looney Tunes. And it's all this like interesting shading with cool colors and and like the lighting looks, looks interesting um, on a lot of these different cards. And I mean, there's, there's hundreds of these because it's like every single episode that was ever made. Uh, so taking some inspiration from that, and uh, that's how we're getting to, let me turn off that now. That's how we're getting to these like really cool looking gradients um, that I think should look really interesting and feel a little bit more like impactful and dramatic than some of the stuff I, I usually do. Um, it won't feel as cartoony, I think, but we'll see. I've got some, some, fun, uh, some fun little things I think we're gonna throw in today. Uh, Danny says hello. Orion says hello. Krishna says hello. Shoaib says I have one question. How do we find music for motion graphics like you did? Uh, there's a bunch of different stock music sites. Um, it also depends on what you're using it for. There's there's a bunch of places where copyrighted music is protected under fair use. Like if you're using it for an educational purpose, you can use it uh, generally. Um, but I always stick to just using stock websites like artlist.io uh, is the one I primarily use uh, and it's what we use for most of our RV projects too. Uh, however, there are a bunch of sound designers who are usually more than happy to work with uh, motion designers to make custom sound for their videos and animations. Uh, Islam says, can I imitate parts of your work? It depends on what you're imitating it for. If it's for commercial stuff, uh, probably not. But <laughs> uh, if you're using it for practice, that's cool. That's why those project files and things are available on, on uh, Gumroad so that you can get reference. Abdul says, glad to see you. Glad to see you as well, Abdul. Oh yeah, I'm realizing now I haven't even shown you the audio we're using today. So we're making eight scenes. And here is the wonderful audio that we are going to use. So not custom uh, sound design like last time, but it's just a song I found on Artlist and I spliced it up. Um, so anyway, this should be good. Lots of impact there. Very cool, like ups and downs and all sorts of things we can animate to. So anyway, let's jump into it. Uh, funny thing about this is that I kind of already have the first two scenes made uh, <laughs> because they were what inspired this video to begin with. So I'm just going to go ahead and move these down here. Um, there's going to be this little like uh, little pillar 
thing. And then I need the ball over here. Let's have it be like that size in the center. And I'll turn the music back on. There we go. Oops, I meant to do that. Cool. Sway says, hey, <laughs> from Instagram updates. Uh, Danny says, artless this time. Yes, artless this time. Uh, Sway says, from Instagram notification. I saw the notifications and I was like, let's go. Glad to hear it. Glad to see everybody today. I think this is going to be another one of those where by the end of the stream I say, I think this is my best one yet. So we'll, uh, we'll see. I don't think I should make it that huge. I mean, it looks kind of cool up there, but there's something about the proportions because these weren't exactly or 1080 by 1920 when I made them earlier. So I'll have to mess with these a bit, but that's okay. Uh, that feels fine for now. I'll mess with the sizing maybe in a bit. Uh, and then we've got these cool things. I'm gonna grab those, move it down here. There we go. And then make it larger. Yeah, this ball's gonna have to be a lot smaller because we're acting like we're zooming into uh this top pillar on the second scene it's the same as this one the colors are just different we're going to change the background and all that stuff but that means this is definitely going to have to be smaller which is perfectly fine it can be tiny it feels kind of cool to be in the midst of this like glowing thing though but i think really what's making this look so much more interesting to me than a lot of the other things um that i've been making with gradients is that there's just two light sources i i mean i i think that might be it because i mean there's this one light source down here at the bottom of the the gradient um in this background but then there's just this implied light that's coming from over here that's only being shown on the objects and not the background which i think looks pretty interesting um which i just hadn't thought about before so i think it should be should be pretty cool now that this is a lot bigger though i'm going to make this two point instead of one point Cool. Uh, let me, whoops, sorry, microphone. We're going to have this three tiered tower appear because the beginning of the song is like, Bring! so we're going to have uh, each one of these tiers show up uh, as that's happening. And yeah, those are all still the same height. Anyway, and so then what we're going to do is zoom into this top layer and kind of like swirling a drink around in a glass, we're going to have this uh, top pillar kind of rotate back and forth as this ball rolls across it but it's going to bounce on top of it first and that's how we're going to have like the big zoom transition happen um and then i want to do this really really cool perspective shift uh where i want to do uh like right now we're looking at this from like a front view i want to turn the i'm not doing any 3d though but i want to tilt the camera up um so it goes over the top of the uh of these and so it ends up looking more like uh we'll have just this top down view that'll have this ellipse on the top here which will have to be a different color um or something which way does the light go it'd be kind of like this um and so that means i'm gonna have to figure out how to make this like fake 3d shape situation happen and i think i've got it because i went in blender yesterday um to just emulate what sort of camera movement i was looking for and i i think i've got it figured out on what i need to do essentially all i need to do is have this pillar down here be extra long and then the bottoms of it need to be uh curved not like that though how am i gonna do that maybe i'll just that's what i'll do i'll add a point in the center and then I'll mess with that. Bring it down slightly. Because I need to emulate the roundness. There we go. That's perfect. Uh, actually, wait. No, it's not. It's like, <laughs> I think I let go of shift for some reason. Move it down a little bit more. There we go. And so then all I need on top of that is just this ellipse. Uh, it just needs to be the same width as this thing. And it'll be kind of masked behind it, I guess. But it'll start like this size and then just slowly increase until it's the top uh, of the cylinder. And this thing's gonna be like pulling up 
uh, into it as that happens. It's going to be some complicated path animation, but it should be cool. Uh, let's see. Islam says, yeah, just for learning. Yeah, no problem. Of course. Uh, that's why those are there is to help people learn. Uh, Motion with Nas says, I made it this time. I saw uh, a couple of your, your comments and things on, on Instagram. Glad to see you made it out. Uh, Danny says, how do you get the white on the gradient of the ball to look like that? Uh, all this is is just one radial gradient. Um, that's that's it. So there's just white at the very top, and then you drag from the center um, of the radial gradient is like right at the top of the ball. Um, and so you'll have the... Uh, white at the top and then it's like a slightly darker color but some sort of color and then a the darkest color you want to use and then something that kind of like blends it into the background um that's usually what we we do for those um let's move that to the back for now so this looks really strange right now but it's just how i need it to be set up in order to be able to do the transition uh and then once we have that like top down view I want to change this into a radar screen. So I actually need reference for that. Let me grab it. Uh, so let's see. Danny, Charlie says, wow, this looks good. I really hope it turns out good. I, I want to do these gradients justice. I think I might end up doing like a posterized time once I finish animating everything and to make it be like 20 FPS or something, just a little bit less smooth than usual. Cause I think that lends itself well to the like kind of older, more dramatic style. Um, anyway, uh, Danny says these gradients look so good as well. Appreciate it. And then also says radial gradient, but the center is at the edge. I see. I see. I learned so much illustrator from your live streams. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I, I didn't even use illustrator for the longest time. Whenever I started doing after effects and, and motion design, I was sitting there using pen tool within after effects and, and it was kind of a nightmare until I realized I could just make everything way faster in here and then port it over. Anyway, all right, top down version of previous scene match cuts to the, t oh, I'm not even to the radar screen yet. Uh, top of a signal tower that builds up from the bottom of the frame. So I need this ball, but I'm gonna need to change, actually wait, it'll be back to how this one looks. So I need that ball for just a second. Wait, what did I just do? <laughs> oh, oh, I just, I just hit undo accidentally. All right, and then, Put that one there and then okay so now i need a couple different references i need the reference for a signal tower signal tower uh let me get a couple of those this is probably a good reference let's grab that one and then just so I have it for later, I'm gonna grab a radar screen. And let's see, one that has like a bunch of little dots on it. It would be ideal. Oh, this one's kind of cool. One second, guys, I will get back to reading chat. I just gotta find this real quick. Actually, wait, let me just pull this up on my other monitor. Uh, okay. Uh, Ryan Arts had a message deleted. Uh, not sure why. Motion with Nas, I can't wait for the 3D perspective animation. Me too. It's going to be real tough, but I, I think it'll be really cool. And Ryan says, can I use your live streams as tutorials? That's Yeah, that's the, that's the purpose, um, is for people to be able to learn and better understand the techniques and things that I'm using. Um, so feel free to follow along. Uh, and, and if you can't stay for the whole stream, again, I mean, I don't know how long it's gonna be given the last one was like nine hours, but I'm trying to be faster and more focused this time, I promise. Uh, the live streams are always kept up afterwards as recordings um, of the whole live stream. So, and I might actually get someone to start doing cut down versions. I mean, like when people ask me questions and I'm talking more about like the business side of things or they have a specific technique question or something like that that could easily be something that could be cut up into like a 30 second clip that can be put on like youtube shorts or somewhere um so i think i might have someone start doing that too for just like extra little bits of insight for people who don't want to watch a whole five hour long video which is totally understandable um anyway that's a decent looking one there's so many radar screens I don't need one that looks that realistic though. Just give me like 
Sure. This one will work fine for reference, and then we can make a way cooler looking one based on it. Radar screen here. And then any other spots where I'm going to need reference, I'll just try and grab it now. Message retracted. Is it a bot that's retracting these uh, or something? Like, is it YouTube's content monitoring system or something? Because I see it happen every stream, and I'm not sure why. <laughs> um, anyway. Radar turns into planet in space. We watch as missile launches from planet surface. I agree with the cut. With the cut. Oh, okay, cool. Glad to hear it. I think it would be good to have bite-sized content like that too. Um, so that way other people can still get value from the streams and stuff without having to necessarily sit there and watch the whole thing. An explosion as it turns into an easy ease keyframe. I, the last two times, I, I want another explosion in this video, but the last two times I've just done the same technique and I don't want to just keep doing the same thing over and over again. So this time I'm going to try doing an explosion similar to something I did for a client project uh, a little while ago and we'll see how that works. But I just need to make sure if I need any other reference. I don't think so. Um... Missile command. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for like those old, you know, those old kind of uh, platformer type looking games where you're one tank and another person's another tank and you just take turns shooting really, really high volley shots over at the other player. I want that sort of like missile launch coming out from the, uh, the planet here. Is it called like Tank Wars or something? Yeah. That's that's good enough reference. I'll take that. Cool. Let me move that over here. And then zoom out. Should <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, this is going to be kind of funny. So we're going to have this signal tower turn into this radar screen. And the, the radar is going to ping on like a bunch of these like happy or, or good uh, things to have on the radar. And then there's going to be one bad ping that happens that turns everything red. And it's like, uh-oh, there's some like enemy or something. And so we're going to zoom out and we're going to have this planet. A little missile is going to fire to go and destroy whatever that like enemy thing is, uh, which will actually be like a moon shaped like a linear keyframe. So just the diamond shape. And then the missile is going to hit it. When it when it explodes, it's going to turn into an easy ease keyframe like that hourglass shape. And then here we're going to zoom out from there. So previously we're just seeing the planet and then the one little keyframe moon thing uh, and nothing else. But we're going to zoom out slightly to show like dozens of other linear keyframes that all have like really terrified looking faces on them now as they just saw this other keyframe get like blown up into this easy eased thing. Uh, I think that'd be pretty funny. And then everything falls down, turns into a ball, kind of like this, that's going to bounce on a platform. Uh, and then the second bounce, it's going to turn into a square and uh, like stretch out to match cut to our word this week called wander, uh, which I chose because originally this was just some shape thing. I was sitting here just thinking, oh, these are really cool scenes. I want to work with these. Um, and then this like radar thing popped in to my head out of nowhere and uh, then this like moon thing. And so I just I just figured like my mind is kind of wandering all over the place and that's what this video is going to be. But it's going to look really cool. So we'll see. David says, hey there. Hello, David. Glad to see you. BZOA says, sounds awesome. I agree. I think it's going to be great. Um, I've always really wanted to do a shot where I've got like a super far away view of a little missile just like going in a perfect parabola until it hits its target. Um, I think it'd look really, really cool. Anyway, uh, let me check something really quickly here. <laughs> okay, there we go. What's happening on this one? We need our cell tower. That one's all good. I can probably just keep this same thing here, except we don't need this like weird thing at the bottom anymore. We can just meet these two and have them be here. And it will be, instead of this, we'll have just the ball going straight on top of this thing. Um, Maybe I want it to do like a, hmm. 
it could be cool to do some sort of like circular platform or something just so it doesn't look so similar to this one from before um but that could just be a way to like call back to the beginning and bring it back to being like oh the video's about to end um potentially we'll see but for now i think that works and then it'll turn into this square which means i should probably actually just have this built out as a square to begin with if my smart guide want, wants to show up cool uh and then i can just use like round corners to be able to turn it into a circle it looks real goofy right there <laughs> right now but uh it'll work fine eventually someone is blowing up my instagram right now uh okay got it i'm just gonna actually turn my phone on silent okay uh matus i hope i said that right welcome greetings from brighton uk this time nice oh bit earlier i think is what you got it okay <laughs> i was like bit why is that like some i don't <laughs> i just didn't know what was going on um cool glad to see you uh hey austin what did i miss uh we we're just in the middle of storyboarding we uh only have a couple of them boarded so far so no worries you really didn't miss too much at all everything is all good we are in the middle of figuring out how to make a signal tower that's the plan so i'm actually going to turn that uh into a little ring and then it needs to be linear not radial for these cool and i'll make them two point strokes and then we'll do another one of these let's do times 1.5 whoops i meant to have it be Although maybe, maybe that'll be something cool to not have these perfect circles. Uh, and then we can do another one of these. Uh, whoops, actually wait, let me do. And then it was what? So times one, I have to remember not to rotate things because we figured out last stream that that's what makes it so I have to reset all my gradients um, once I push them to After Effects with Overlord. Uh, huh, thanks. Uh, David says, I was wondering if you were taking time to eat along the streaming time. Yes, of course. Of course, of course. Especially on a midday one. Though I did have a little snack before the stream started, so no worries. Uh, I need this one to be times 1.5 and then times 1.5 again. That's kind of cool looking. It's a little less readable as an actual signal tower, but then maybe that means now I just do the full times 1.5. And then another one. Maybe like in between these a little bit. Mm, actually, let's have it be like significantly larger. Feels a little too uniform, I think. Looks kind of like an atom a little bit. Uh, or if you're doing Moses fasting 40 days. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, Danny says, wait, what? Rotate doesn't work with gradients and Overlord. Can you explain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. So the way Overlord ports, because I mean, if you take uh, a normal Illustrator file and you try to just drop it into After Effects, it won't register the gradient. Like it'll just show up as gray. Um, it's just not even supported natively. So what Overlord does will take the position data of each point along your gradient and then be able to actually import that to After Effects. However, if you rotate your shape, then it goes through like all of these other different equations and things in terms of how Illustrator calculates where those gradients, gradient stops should be now. Um, and Overlord isn't able to access that data, that location data anymore um, once that math happens. So if you do rotate a shape, you have to uh, redraw the gradient in Illustrator before you send it to After Effects uh, or uh, overlord just has no idea where it is um anyway let's see what would make this feel a little less like an atom i mean i could just i could just delete these but i think they look kind of interesting what if i just have one of them that might work better and it's like kind of like an eye but not really it's kind of fun and we'll just have that sit right in the center. Oh, whoops. I wanted it to just be along here. Cool. 
uh, how did your idea come to mind? Uh, I, I only give myself like, uh, maybe an hour each week to come up with whatever concept I'm going to use. I mean, I did this, I came up with the concept for this one last night, um, over the course of an hour, something like that. Uh, and the only goal in those sessions is by the end of that hour, I have to have an idea down and that, that like kind of arbitrary deadline that I give to myself seems to work pretty well each time and, and making sure that I, uh, that I've got, uh, that I've got a good idea, a good enough idea by the end of it anyway. Um, then if I was trying to like sit there and figure out the perfect thing to make, uh, I might not necessarily have that, you know? Um, let's see, we've got Lorenzo says, greetings from the Philippines. It's 1.30 a.m. here. I'm just going to watch the stream until I fall asleep. Totally fine by me. No worries on needing to stay up uh, super late. We, uh, we will have this up on the channel um, as soon as the stream's over. So no worries. Mm -hmm. If I move this, is it going to... That looks, that looks a little better, I think. I think it feels a little too, like, tightened up if I have it like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Charlie says, I really want to start doing these, but I get started and just get so bored and need to do something else. Then I try again and it's just repeated why I prefer logo animations. Totally understandable. I mean, that's how it was for me for, for quite a while. Um, actually, I can, I can show this for a second. Hold on. Uh, let me turn on my big monitor real quick okay uh actually wait hold on <laughs> let me let me pull the thing up beforehand so i don't <laughs> just docs client info like that okay so here we go on the big monitor now you can see my you can see my file explorer as well uh i've got this whole folder called fun loops and like ever since i've started doing these weekly uh which was around like the 13th of january pretty much all of these have been published uh I, but i mean there still definitely are some that haven't like you see some in here that are like two days apart i can guarantee that i just had some idea that i wanted to try and then i was like ah this isn't really enough to make a whole video or whatever um but anyway there's i mean there's so many of these that are in here that i just like never saw the light of day but i once i started kind of like just alleviating that like pressure on myself and not really having it be that big of a deal it was easier to make those creative decisions and not have it be this like perfectly polished thing um but getting so bored uh i can understand too because some of these times i'll feel like i already did that same thing like three or four times um but you know you just gotta <laughs> uh so he says this folder contains all loops for to hypnotize you to get inspiration from austin <laughs> Yeah, this is this is where they all are. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I understand the getting bored also because it can kind of feel like you're doing the same thing over and over again. And I think what helps me through that a bit, and, and it's something that I used to do when I started doing motion design, was just going on Vimeo uh, and looking up like Motion Reel 2019 and then Motion Reel 2020. And you can see all of these different reels that different freelancers and studios made over the years. And there's just so much in there that you can be like, that's really interesting. I want to do my take on that. Or uh, I thought that that one scene from this reel was really cool. And this one scene from another reel was really cool. Can I like mix those two things? Um, that that's helped me quite a bit as well. But also before, whenever I had like when I'd gotten bored um, and, and wasn't it felt like I wasn't able to come up with an idea that I really liked. Another thing that really helped, and that's still the reason that I do these like words every week, is that if I really can't come up with something, I can at least think about like from a more like artistry point of view, I guess, um, what what I've been experiencing that week or like something I'm going through or, or those sorts of things and then find a word from there. And then that's just that's my brief now. That's my prompt. I need to come up with something centered around uh, that word. And, and that's been super helpful as well to keep ideas floating uh, because there's a there's a good reference or a good metaphor somebody uses. I'm, I'm going to butcher it, though. But generally, the sentiment is sometimes the most like terrifying things from a creative standpoint is when you have like this whole nice beach and you've got I, I mean, it's like endless coastline. There's so much sand for you to be able to build sandcastles with. 
And so it's like, where do you, where are you going to start building a sandcastle? How are you going to like, what size is it going to be? And all that different stuff. You have no idea. There's just so much possibility. But, um, if you give yourself a little sandbox and you can only work within that little bit of coastline or something, it's way easier to come up with ideas. And I think giving myself a word prompt, uh, has been my version of doing that. Um, but hopefully that helps. Timo says, sup Austin, glad I can finally join. Glad to see you, Timo. We gotta hang soon. We gotta gotta chat and, and catch up. Uh, Sway says, Austin, we need a course. Perhaps, someday. Uh, I just don't have the time to be able to do that right now. <laughs> um, but maybe someday. Let's get back in the here though. All right. Close so those top down version of previous scene magic cups from the top of a cuts into the top of a signal tower. It builds up from the bottom of the frame. Okay, I want a little platform for it to stand on down here. So I'm just gonna grab that. And then I need the actual lines to reach up to it. Or I could just have like a little pillar maybe i don't know we'll see we'll see what happens here let's do it's just kind of like a rectangle with the the bottom points split Ooh, or i could just do this like electrode looking thing that's kind of fun except then this thing would need to float because it doesn't really the gradients don't make sense when it's just sitting up there on top of it um, that doesn't look too bad. I might want to round these. And then I can pull these out a little bit. What's like half of this? Uh, divide by two. And I'll just move it to this halfway point. What's that look like? Ooh, I need to smooth these out for sure. <laughs> I might have moved them too far. I should have done the rounding afterwards. But how does that look generally? It looks kind of cool. I think I might have liked it more when it was just the straight up, like the tighter gradient, I think looks a little more interesting. Uh, Space says, is that Neptune looks like neurons? Uh, like neutrons? Kinda. Um, I was thinking about making like a signal tower, but... This doesn't quite do it. Um, so I might have to might have to change it. But that's okay. Should that be in front of there? It just kind of looks like an I now. Like a lowercase I. Though I'm not entirely opposed to that. Um, let's see. I'd made a cool looking... Uh, a cool looking, what's it called? <laughs> uh, cell tower for another video in the past. I want to see what that looked like. Uh, shared drives. Yep. Uh huh. Let me find that one. Should be in boarding somewhere. Where is it at? There we go. Oh, yeah. It was kind of like this fake 3D looking thing that was kind of fun maybe that's part of the reason why is this needs to be like way smaller like everything feels a little bit too uniform right now that could be it and then have like even more of these coming out of here or just fewer of them. That looks kind of cool. It's a little less cluttered. Huh. That's kind of fun. And then I think I, I will do just like a, a flat, sharp thing here. Uh, let's do the width of this top circle here. And then do like half the... No, not half the height. That's too much. Let's do like three quarters of the height that it is now. That might even be too much. But I was thinking we could do like 
just a straight up point and that like that might look interesting it doesn't quite catch the the gradient as well though uh you can make a slope shape that could be interesting like a like a right triangle what if we do halfway in between here and here and then move these down so like halfway in between there and the actual the actual thing and then bring those gradient rings back out in front that looks kind of cool not entirely opposed to that what if we do just a line that could be interesting as well i need pen tool just a line that goes straight up there. There's not enough substance there. <laughs> it looks so cool like this, though. I just need it to be... It's not getting enough of the actual tower cross. Have you considered making a Discord server? It would be super dope. Uh, we actually... Okay, so that was a thought originally. It might happen um, because we are actually getting some uh, new hands-on uh, people at RV. Uh, which is very exciting. It's just been me and Noah for a super, super long time, but we actually just got uh, signed contracts from both people that we uh, are going to bring on as contractors to work with us. Um, one of them more is a production role, uh, helping us manage timelines and those sorts of things, uh, as well as like compiling data to help us make better business decisions and that sort of thing. And then another one is someone that we're going to be teaching motion design uh, and, and general design to be able to help us on client projects and that sort of stuff. Um, so anyway, uh, it might be happening now that we actually have some extra people that can help with that. But uh, before, if it was just me and Noah, it, I just don't I don't have the availability to set up something like that um, super well. So uh, it'll be good now that we have the extra help, but I think it'll be good. I am excited about it. Is it just this one that's making it look so weird? I think it is. I think it is this one that's messing it up. I think it might need to be more clean. And then what if we had these rounded again? That looks fine. I'm cool with that. Let's do it. And then I'll just grab another one of these and make it significantly larger maybe a little bit less okay cool <laughs> stay hydrated <laughs> uh bzoa says great to see the company is growing second guy is super lucky to be learning from you guys it it happened to work out well that uh he also lives in in raleigh uh so he can actually like come to the house and and be able to uh, see us work uh physically where like there's a lot of remote work happening now and that's that's cool like that's going to be what he's doing um a good amount of the time but once a week he'll be coming to the house um there's just some of the like soft skill things that would be much more difficult to get across over discord or zoom or whatever we would meet with him on because uh he wouldn't be able to necessarily like shadow us in client meetings and that sort of stuff if uh if it was over a zoom call um it, it'll just let him see more of the stuff that uh, just kind of naturally happens without us really thinking about it. So he says, stay hydrated. That's the plan. Got my water. We are good. Can bring this a little closer. It's a little bit more dynamic that way. <laughs> I could move to Raleigh too. Oh, great. I'm going to start the next great migration to Raleigh. There's already too many people moving here. Housing prices are going crazy. Because Apple's building a, a new campus out here that should be open next year. So things have been going a little nuts. Um, what if I do the thing down here? That feels a little a little too sharp, but it does feel very dramatic. Which could be cool. Anyway, that's fine for now. I, I'm good with that. Uh, oh wait, actually, hold on. We should do a little connecting piece here. I think that'll make it feel more like 
what I'm looking for. Except I don't want that gradient at that angle because you can't see anything going across there. So what if we do like, uh, let me select the right one. Hello, select the stroke, there we go. And then do like negative 90. That messes with the shadows too much. What if I do just one color? Like it's just the dark, dark teal. Are these also two point? They are, okay. But now this one looks way too intense. So how about that? Uh, <laughs> yes, North Carolina, uh, David. And VCOA says, I'm already packing my stuff. Uh, Vusan says, you're so inspiring. I hope to get to your level in my lifetime. Cheers from France. Oh, merci. <laughs> I'm taking a little, little bit of French on Duolingo. I was thinking I was going to be able to say something a little more eloquent than just merci, but I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, merci beaucoup. There you go. Uh, Anbeek says, it's too late, Austin. I've already bought a house in Raleigh. I'm using Ravi as my reason. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I just hope my, my neighbors don't get mad at me when there's all of a sudden a bunch of people here. Oh, that's funny. All right, we've got this cool, like, remote-looking thing. Uh, now we need to make a radar screen, which I'm a little bit more hesitant to do, but we'll figure it out. All right, so it's going to be a pretty uniform circular thing. Uh, and I'll, I'll keep just this same gradient for now, but I'm definitely going to... That looks really cool in the dark, though. That looks really interesting, but I need it to be more subtle than that. So I'll have to, I'll change something. It'll be fine. Uh, okay, so we've got, oh, it's actually just, okay, no, it's a, it's a bunch of rings, but it's also got a bunch of uh, lines that come out from the center. And what does it do? It's like every 10. Okay, I got it. I got it. So we're going to change the gradient to be... Uh, we're going to delete the red that's there. And then now it should only just be like barely showing half of it. Uh, we might have to have it fade off more. So I'll have like the dark there and then add the like fully black section over at the end. It's not even dark enough. <laughs> what if I do full black? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's too much. Shucks. That's unfortunate. All right, whatever. Um, okay, how many of these are there? There's a little circle in the center, and then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll do a little one there, and then do what? Like times 1.5? No, that's way too small times two and then copy paste and do it again these are way too close together we're gonna have to do like times four or something whoops didn't mean to delete that one. Oh wait that one would have been times four already that's fine it doesn't need to be a super detailed one cool and we'll have all of those in the correct space. And we'll have one... Ooh, making this gradient's gonna be interesting. This gradient to do the like pulse as it goes around. That should be kind of cool. I'll have to do a layer style on that, I think, in order to be able to do the angled gradient. Because I don't think that's... Yeah, you can't do anything other than linear or radial. Uh, here. That's fine. All right, and now we need every 10, so we'll have one that comes up from here. What color these are going to be, I have no idea, but we'll figure that out later. And so 360 divided by 10 is every 36. That's not right. Well, no, it is. I just am being silly. What's 10 over 360? That's what I should have been looking at. 10 over 360 is 
which is... Why am I... I overcomplicated that so much. It's separated every 10 degrees, so all I have to do is just do it every 10. Okay. Maybe I'll do it every 20, just because that's a little too much detail for this. Everything else is pretty clean and even, and I wouldn't want to just toss a bunch of uh, lines in there to screw that up. Okay, uh, and now I need this whole set of lines to have the same gradient as these, which is a little tough. To have it like all reference the same thing in Illustrator anyway, it'd be pretty easy in After Effects, but hmm. I'll find some way to get around that. Uh, I need these little dots that are going to happen here. We need happy ones and then we need dan danger ones. So I will do this same ball, however. It's going to have way less gradients on it. It will be... Uh, actually, wait. Let's have it do the dark dark. And then this will just be the dark teal. Cool. These are our happy ones. There's going to be one there. One here. Do they have them just like floating out? Or is it only along the lines? No, they have some of them that are just floating out there, but I think I might just want to have them along the lines. This one will be smaller. Uh, is it such a radar? It is a radar. Yes, this is true. We're going to have this one be larger. And then there's going to be a big one. All the way, actually wait, I want that to be where the, like, the enemy one is. So we'll just have this one sit here. Another small one can come over here. Oops, I meant to hold down Alt the whole time. There we go. Okay, and then we'll have one big red one over here. And it's going to be like this. Cool. It's going to look really great once we've got deep glow on it, I think. We're not even at an hour yet. We're halfway through. That's pretty good. Actually, more than halfway through. We've already got these. So it's just got to be two more. That's not bad at all. And then this one is essentially just adding more things onto the one that was previously there. We are making fantastic time today by comparison to last time. I don't think I started animating until two and a half, three hours in last time. I should have known that one was going to take forever. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Let's move on then. I really want these to be... Like, I want to be able to do trim paths on these, but at the same time, I... Well, actually, hold on. Let me see how long this section is. This is scene four. We really don't even have that much time on it, so I am I can probably get away with making these... Uh, making these into just normal paths, and then I can... Put a gradient on all of them that matches the gradient that is on the rings. Uh, we are going to object path, uh, outline stroke, send all those to the back. Uh, is it okay if I reproduce your project to learn? Of course not publishing it and not stealing it. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's no problem at all. Whoa. Weird. Okay, I need the same... Oh wait, I only did it on half of these. <laughs> That's fine. 
Um, we'll do from here to here and hope that that's right. Nope, it was the other way around. That works now? All right, cool, 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 cool. That works kind of awesome. I'm happy with how that looks. And then once this thing shows up, everything is going to turn red. So we'll need to do, we'll need to be able to do some sort of like big transition of color. Uh, Danny, do you ever get sick and tired of these tracks because you listen to them over and over so many times? That's why I am much more picky about which ones I use now. Um, some of them, I, I mean, for client projects, it's more likely to happen than me doing them personally because it's just whatever track the client liked uh, out of the ones we gave. Um, and oftentimes, some people will choose ones that are more like corporate focused and, oh, I got something in my eye. Um, however, for the stuff that I'm doing, I'm usually picking music that I would be fine to just listen to over and over and over again. Um, but I also, at this point, because I'm doing it on stream, keep it at a pretty low volume to where I can just listen to normal music the whole time uh, on Spotify. So I don't really notice it that much anymore, to be honest. <laughs> all right. And then we've got... All right. What do I want to do here to make these... I could have, like, one big line that sweeps across here. And maybe that one is like full white or something. Let's try that. Uh, let's have it just be that color. And then two point, of course. And then this guy will actually have the same fill as this. Mm -hmm. I just want the same background as this. Delete and delete. This can go up to the front now. And then this one is fully black. I'm just trying to match the gradient to the background. Actually, that looks kind of silly. I can just have it be the same flat gray. That's fine. Move this up here, and then I want it to be as tall as the screen. Bring it to the front, but then bring this thing to the front again. Cool. Uh, who is your favorite music artist or band? I enjoy listening to Steve Lacey. Steve Lacey sounds familiar. I feel like I've definitely got a song or two. From Steve Lacey saved. Yeah, I uh, oh, I've got I've got three Steve Steve Lacey songs saved. Dark Red, Sea Girl, and Some. Um, I like all those. I've been listening to a lot of. Well, I mean, right now my playlist is consistently great music uh, that I just keep going back to. So there's a couple different bands on there. There is a band called The War on Drugs. There is uh, there's Beck, Cage the Elephant, Spoon, uh, Peach Pit some Mac Miller, uh, Black Rabbit, MGMT, Mac DeMarco, a shit ton of Tame Impala, uh, Rex Orange County. What else? Some Day Glow on there. M83, Milky Chance, Houndmouth. We got a lot on here, really. It kind of goes all over the place. Um, but yeah, those are some staples. Ooh, and some Frank Sinatra to spice things up. That's typically where I'm at. Oh wait, this is gonna be too small once I move it over here, isn't it? Yeah, I need it to be long enough to get to all of these. But yes, that is primarily the bands I am listening to right now. Let's save that. What am I gonna do to make this be like spooky looking um, once this red thing shows up? I could have red show up down here and like the gradient changes. I just need to see how that looks because it's going to affect all of the other gradients on here. Uh, let's do this is the red now. And then, yeah, I'll just need to change every single gradient that's on here. 
um, to a different color, but it should work fine, I think. It's also probably just got to be more subtle than this. Like the black is still pretty far in here. And it's just like kind of sneaking in there. And then maybe there will be some like inner glow on this one. <laughs> Add skulls <laughs> for the spooky looks. That could be cool. Maybe there's some like giant X or something that's here. Or that like crosses out the rest of them. Um, that could be kind of cool. What would that look like? Let's find out. There's going to be so many lines and shapes in this scene. Oh, man. Goes like that. And then that comes to the center. All of the lines. Oh, it would be so cool to have these be trim paths because you could have each of the... Oh, wait. I could do like an offset paths thing so where they do like a stroke width. So it'll look like they're doing a stroke width animation, but they're actually not. I think that'll work fine. Because I was thinking it'd be so cool to have these line or these circles pull into the center to be able to make this radar happen. And then each of these lines appears as that's happening, like it draws to the center at the same time. That could be cool. Um, but I think the stroke width thing will work. But for now, let's uh, keep that as the same black that it was before. And then I'll just change it to all the correct gradients that it needs to be afterwards um and then maybe there's just like a blue trail that falls behind this like the gradient is the same white to blue to black that's kind of on these and that's what's like swirling around here that should work fine um i'll just need a reference to put on the back of this that's completely full uh let's do the same as that actually let's just do a straight up fill color. Cool. I think we should have everything we need there now. Now we can move on to this like planet and space uh, with this missile launch thing happening. Okay, so we need a planet <laughs> and then we need a keyframe shaped moon as well as this missile launching thing. All right, uh, what's the planet gonna look like? Ooh, and this should be so cool uh, to be able to have this thing in the center is what transforms into the planet and everything else kind of like fades away behind it. And it's just like the gradients changing in the background. That should work fine. Hmm, what's a planet going to look like? I don't want it to be super realistic. It's got to be in the same style as this. So maybe I've got... Uh, let me actually just look up some planets real quick. Planets. Show me, uh, like, ooh, do they have some in like the, I'm just gonna keep using like old cartoon references. What about uh, Jetsons planets? Those are probably too cartoony. But yeah, big time. <laughs> that doesn't work super well. Um, what, is there anything from this that works? Not really. Uh, let's do like, Chrome planet. That gets me kind of somewhere. No, not really. I can I can see what I what I want to make, but I just don't quite know how I want to do it. Um. So we'll say screw it and just try it. I guess. Um. We're gonna have our planet in the center. It's going to start with this color palette. Except it'll be a radial gradient. That's not the same way that it was supposed to look, but that's fine. Um, so this one, we've got the red coming from the top, so it'll be lit this way, which is interesting. Ooh, that looks, that looks kind of cool anyway. Uh, and then what I wanted to do was have like, these big swooshing shapes over the top of it. Um, ooh, whoops, these are happening all on the assets layer for some reason. Is that where all of these are? That's annoying. Well, whatever, <laughs> it's fine. They're just, everything is on the same layer except for the backgrounds. That's fine though. All right, let's try making some fun 
shapes here. It's going to be like that and then go here and then we're just going to trace along the planet. Until we get to a full shape there and then we're actually going to do a linear gradient, I think linear from ooh, this might start to look a little strange with the how the lighting is on those but that's fine we will do it going this way and we're going to change it to be whoops why are my why are my stops not showing did i accidentally hit some shortcut to make those not show yeah i guess i did okay uh we're gonna have just like a tiny tiny bit of white up at the top. Then we're gonna hit the red. Then to the teal. Maybe. Eh, I'm not quite liking how that looks at the moment. Uh, maybe it's this super bright one. No, I think it's gotta be teal whenever it's in the context of the reds. And then we'll have this kind of sit there or it's another white that's kind of cool Logan and then just like add a ring on it I'll have to adjust the gradient on the actual planet itself so that it doesn't look quite as strange uh, let's move like there the lighting on that just doesn't make sense. What if I delete the white? What if I do it just like in a completely different direction? Hmm. Ooh, that is way too far over. It's starting to look kind of like Pepsi a little bit, but I'm not entirely opposed to it. Hey, Anas, how you doing? Glad to see ya. Welcome, welcome. We are almost through storyboarding. Thank goodness. That doesn't look quite how I want it to, though. Uh, the white comes from the opposite side of the red, so that works fine. Is it just because these are tilted? I mean, I don't want to rotate it anyway. That is straight up just Pepsi, which is kind of funny. Um... But whatever. Uh, what if we do it from... Ooh, whoops. Not quite what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. I think it looks good like that. What if we do another accent element somewhere? Or we just, like, reduce the amount that this is on the bottom. No, that doesn't work. Adding a ring is a very easy option. Let's try that. Means I'm going to have to do some masking, but whatever. Uh, and then I'll just take the same gradient these have. Make sure it's two point. It is. And then I will just uh, add points here. Whoops. What did I just do? Add points here, here, and then just delete that one so that I have less to mask. And then I'll rotate it for now just for our reference. It gets kind of lost in the this thing down here. What if I have it up there instead? That doesn't look too bad. This could work. I agree. I think this will work. Except this isn't centered anymore. There we go. Which means now that's kind of off and whatever, but... That's fine. What... Uh, what else could I do to this? What if I have the light go that way instead? Ooh, that actually looks kind of cool. I like that a good bit. What if this isn't the white? 
what is what if this is just where the teal is? That looks kind of fun. Some interesting lighting happening. And then maybe another one of these over top, but the gradient is going to be... It's going to make it look like the light's sort of leaking over, I think. We'll do something like this. Where it's like this dark color. And then this will be the teal, but it's going to have zero opacity. If I can grab that. Uh, it doesn't quite work. <laughs> Is it because I just don't have the proper, like, distance on it, or...? Because now I'm not getting enough of the red, so maybe I'll do the red instead. But then I bet the problem is going to be that I don't get enough of the teal. Never mind. It looks kind of cool, actually. What if I reduce that just a little bit? That's kind of fun. I'm not opposed to that at all. Uh, do you always work with gradients or textures too sometimes? Uh, depends. Sometimes I I work with, with grain um, a good bit, but that's usually the extent to which I'm I'm working with texture. Um, I think it works well in some cases, just the sort of clientele that we get, and, and I mean working with like tech products and software. A lot of like, a, a lot of it is just gradients and, and shapes and things and, and glows and that sort of stuff. Texture works well sometimes, but can often make things feel a little dated in my mind. Um, if we were doing, lots of studios do sort of collage type work and I think it looks really cool. Um, and there's usually lots of really interesting texture in there, but I don't know, at least for right now, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us to be using it. Uh, at least super extensively. But a big part of it is also that I just don't have that much experience with it. Should this be the other way? Like, maybe it's kind of like this instead. Uh, let's do the darker one. Yeah, I was hoping that that would make it move over slightly. Doesn't seem to have quite done the job though. Ooh, that looks cool. Just the little bit that I can see from there. Oh, you can only do it so far. Interesting. What about there? Uh, it's already an hour. I should have turned the notification. <laughs> well, you can certainly do it now. You can put the notifications on if you feel so inclined. You got a cool looking planet here. Is there anything that I feel like it's missing? I really like this little light thing here. Let me see what I can do with this. Maybe it just sits behind it or something, but it feels so cool to just be like holding up. It feels like I'm holding the object up with light almost. Uh, what if we do like down from the top? No, that's a little too obvious. And then just put it right in the center, all the way up to the top. Is that over top? That looks kind of cool. Maybe it does need to be rotated though. Nah, it just doesn't look, it doesn't work quite as well as it does over here. Um, but that's fine. What if I tempted to try the teal? Whoops, uh, I need that to not be 100%. I need it to be zero, actually. That's just too much, though. What if I do, like, 25%? Maybe it's just that it's too tall. Like, it's halfway through here. That's kind of cool looking. 
today's title, Rishav says, what's today's title? Today's title is Wander. Wander, wander, wander. Arimani says, hey, Austin, that's looking great, like a Blade Runner 2049 piece. Kinda, I can see that. I can absolutely see that. Uh, and I'll just have to mask out these little nubs down at the end here, but otherwise we should be good on that. That looks kind of cool. What if I make it like half the size and then there's another one behind it that's the red? Ah, kind of cool. It just looks interesting. I mean, I could also just do, uh, let's see, background. What if I do the dark is here and then we've got the teal down here? That, that feels more spacey. I think, ooh, that looks cool. That looks really awesome. I'm gonna keep that. Uh, which means I gotta do the same thing for this one. Okay, now I need to make this like keyframe moon that's gonna be around there. Oh, this is looking awesome. Grain on this is gonna look so cool. Um, let's see. I won't be able to follow the whole stream. No worries. It will be up uh, afterwards. Don't even worry about it. Uh, Anas says, yeah, that's fair. I agree, but sometimes it's intentionally done to make things look dated, isn't it? Your gradients are super cool, though. Yeah, I agree. I, I think when it's, and when it is intentionally done, I think it looks great. There are tons of examples of really cool textures, like uh, another studio that's here in Raleigh. I'll pull them up, uh, called Dash which I'm sure I'm sure plenty of you have heard of by now. Um, let me just turn on the big monitor. Um, they've, they've got a really cool bit of like subtle textures to their brand. Let me see if it's probably just in their little like promo thing here. Yeah, like all of these little, these little like textures that are made for the shapes and stuff. I'm, I like that sort of thing. Um, Usually I just don't do it for these loops because it's uh, it's just that little bit of like extra time that, that would need to be spent on it um, where I'm trying to get these done pretty quickly. Um, but anyway, yeah, these little like just texture that kind of sits there and is masked in, I think looks really, really cool. Um, I like stuff like that quite a bit. Um, and we, we had a project that we were trying to work on recently where we tried to do some stuff with texture um but we are also just like so in illustrator and we've got the workflow down so well that it got Ooh, what is this like weird box that's up on top of this oh that's so weird it doesn't that was strange the like kind of hazy looking box that it was making out of this anyway uh we got a project where we would have had to use photoshop to be able to do some textures and stuff and we just don't have that workflow down super well and also the client didn't want the textures uh we gave them both options and they said no but uh, we have tried. It just, we don't have a lot of work surrounding it. Uh, Uzamil says, yeah, I was wondering how he's coming up with colors and gradients. Honestly, going on Behance and just looking at a bunch of different projects until I find things from different projects that I like and I just kind of bring those together. Um, as well as like different projects I've worked on in the past and that sort of thing. This thing looks so cool though. Add some grain on this and you could, I could sell that as a poster easily um i'm really liking that it's making this scene look kind of stupid right now but it'll be it'll look good once we've got our like post processing and stuff on it okay i need to lock down the backgrounds we've got all those there we have uh our little keyframe moon needs to be here it's going to be a diamond at first and i want it to be very similar to this style so we're gonna do uh, what do they normally look like in After Effects? Is it straight up just a, I think it's just a flat diamond. Is there even like dual shading on it? No, it's just a, it's just a square. We're going to add, uh, we're going to add dual shading on it anyway, because I think it'll just look more interesting for the purposes of what we're doing. Uh, we're going to have it be pretty small by comparison to the planet. Uh, let's do like divided by 10. I totally should have had that in front. 
Uh, I don't know why I'm doing it on that layer now. All right, uh, let's do divided by 10. It's gonna be over here. We're gonna rotate it, which I actually probably shouldn't have done because we're gonna have to redraw the gradient, but I'm gonna have to redraw the gradients anyway because I'm gonna split the shape. Uh, here we go. Let's divide those, ungroup, delete those bits. That actually looks pretty cool on its own. Uh, Mode says, hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Hope you're doing well on this lovely Saturday as well. Um, Muzumil says, have you watched the Futures course about colors? Uh, I haven't, actually. I, I If I watch the Future, usually it's the, the business-related uh, content more so than the design. Um, but could be could be worth checking out. Oh, that looks so cool like that. Uh, if I introduce a white in here now, though, it'll look a little strange with the lighting. What if I do reflect and horizontal? That looks kind of cool, except I'll have the gradient on this one. Oh, these are both radial. Interesting. That looks good. And then if I reflect this, this is going to look weird. Kinda. I just need to adjust these a little bit, I think. Whoops. Yeah, that looks great, honestly. I'd, I'm pretty happy with those. So I'm just gonna redraw the gradient since we rotated so much stuff. And it goes down to like there. Okay. Cool. And then same with this one. I'm gonna draw from here to, whoops, from here to here. Done. We got a gradient little keyframe guy. He exists now and we need to just show what it's going to look like when it is uh, an hourglass shape. So let's do that really quick. What needs to happen for that to happen? We need, I mean, we could just have it be, uh, whoops, let's do divide each of those, ungroup. Why is this thing still here? And then we could just have like this. But that's not nearly as exciting um, as having it split down the middle again. So maybe that's what we'll do is we'll just take these and say divide again. And then this one over here is going to be that. So is this one. And then these are both going to be like that which means I need to figure out how to do the positioning on these again, but that's fine. Uh, the red down to the darker red. Same thing for that one. Red down to the darker red. And then this one needs to be from the teal to the dark teal. Was it raining? No. It's just the air conditioning. <laughs> All right. And then the same thing there. That looks cool. Except this is actually, is that the wrong way? No, it just looks strange because it's a different shape. What if I do straight down? And then same thing with the, whoa, what happened here? Let me unite these. Why would it choose the smaller one? That makes no sense. That's fine though, whatever. Uh, we'll go here and draw it like this. <laughs> cool, now we've got our alternative version of there. Uh, Danny says you're a gradient beast, I appreciate that. VZOA says a la Madrid. Oh, 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 soccer. That's what you were talking about, or, or football. You're talking about football, I see. I gotcha. Understandable. It is a Saturday after all. All right, here we go. What needs to happen for this explosion? Let me show you the type of explosion I'm trying to make. Uh, instead of these last two where I've gone and I've just like united everything and then drew some paths over it to make little like fragments I could explode. Uh, I want to do something like this video that we did for Idea Market. Uh, except make it in this style. I don't quite know how I'm going to do it yet. 
let me pull up the uh, big monitor again. There we go. So this video that we made, and it's actually, this is, this is perfect because this is the scene I'm talking about. Uh, on the video, this ball uh, wants to make these other balls look like similar to it. So it's gonna go tap over to this force field and like turn them into these like blue happy ones. Uh, and so let me get over there. Could make people that sort of explosion. So I want this like circle to emanate f out from the linear gradient, and that's uh, or from the linear keyframe uh, that we've got here. So the this missile is going to go and tap into it, and then this thing is going to radiate out from the center. Uh, and then once that radi like radiating thing is gone, you'll see that this thing is left behind. Um, and it's now this, this easy east keyframe. That's the thought there. But I need to figure out how to do it in a way that fits with this style, because this is a little bit too glowy and, and not sharp enough. You're speeding it up this week. I see filled style frames. That's right. We are, we only need, um, that, that's right. We're about to be done with storyboarding once I get this frame and then all it is is just adding more of these guys floating around it in this next frame and we're done. Um, also, I'm realizing I think I was on After Effects the, or on Illustrator the whole time I was... No, on uh, <laughs> my browser the whole time I was talking about that. But uh, anyway, we are... Uh, we're very, very close to being done. All I will need to do is just fill out this other scene and we're good. Um, anyway, and then we can start importing After Effects. I'm going to speed through this. It's going to be so much faster than last time. I'm not doing another nine hour uh, motion marathon. That was just way too much, uh, but we'll get it done. So I need to figure out what I'll, I'll just make a circle here for now. That'll be attached to this. Uh, I'll make it pretty large, so that way I... After Effects treats scaling weird, or, or treats scaling strangely, where if you have an object and, like, say you want to make it look like the object is moving towards the camera, um, you're going to need that object to scale up very, very large uh, if you want it to move, like, past the camera. So I usually end up just doing, like, 3D position or something like that. However, uh, the only reason I have to do the 3D position is because... For whatever reason, After Effects, as the scaling increases and it gets past a certain point, say like going from zero to 400% usually works pretty well when you ease it. Like it doesn't look like the easing ends up being linear. But as you get uh, to larger and larger numbers, like if you're going from zero to 5,000 scale or something, the difference in 1% uh, change in the scale is so much less uh, by the time it gets up to those higher values that uh, it ends up just looking like it's linear no matter how much how you eased it uh, Because it's just really not changing by that much anymore Motion marathon that could be an app title says our money. I agree that last one was a, that, that last one was really difficult. I, I will not lie That was that was pretty hard Okay, so we've got our our very large circle that I'll add on to that uh, I'll attach our hourglass shaped one to it, just so it's already there. Jeez, this is such a cool looking style frame. I'm so excited to animate this video. Um, this is like, I mean, I always work with gradients, but this one feels like it's really kind of next level in, in quality than the other ones. Um, okay, I need to figure out where this missile is coming from and what it looks like. So I need a circle for it to attach to. Nine hours for this stuff is super impressive to me. I'm super slow, so even short loops like this could easily take several days for me. Uh, no, I mean, it's. I definitely am in a privileged position to be able to make them that quickly in context, but actually sitting there on my computer and streaming for nine hours is just really, really taxing and difficult for me. Um, but yes, I, I do realize that I am slightly faster at, at doing these, um, than, than average for sure. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to animate quickly enough, even if it does mean that I have to sit there for a while, um, if it's all in one go. But anyway, 
Uh, where's my reference image? There it is. Okay, I need to actually see what... Uh, I think SpaceX has SpaceX rocket path map. They usually have like a little orbit map thing on their streams. And I'm trying to find that a SpaceX orbit map. Is that what it's called? That'll actually show me like how something moves around uh, the earth like that. Um, do, 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 do. It like kind of spirals out, I think. Um, but I got to figure out how I can make that. Uh, Justin says, hello from the UK. Love reviews work. Inspired me to improve my own motion design. I appreciate that. Glad to hear from you and glad to see you on the stream. We're making cool planets and shit today. It's going to be great. Uh, let's grab another one of these. It's going to be in the center. Go around to be in the same path as that. Except I need there to be... Okay, so let's do let's do some strange shenanigans here real quick. I'm gonna grab that anchor point. I'm gonna add another one here, another one, oops, and another one there. I'm gonna delete that one to break this break the shape. And then I'm just gonna bring this down here. And that's how we're gonna start this thing. We're gonna need to ease into it. So I'm going to move that. It's going to be kind of down here like this. This is now way too strong. Planet frame is my fave in this one. I agree. Uh, Shanok? Shanok, is that how you say that? Or Xenok? Uh, it says, my first time here. Love your work. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see how that looks. Okay, but that gives me enough uh, now to be able to at least use the curvature tool or the curvature pen tool to be able to just do something like this. Where I can then move around the circle and it won't feel so sudden. <laughs> okay, how does that one look by comparison? It looks all right. It's still not great, but uh, Z knock it's pronounced got it uh, like the concentric circles and touch I agree it's kind of it's kind of similar I am liking it uh, which one is this okay I need no nope, I don't need to be on that one I want this and it's just going to kind of jut off of there and swing around until it gets there. And then we just need our little, our actual missile. Uh, I need to figure out what that's gonna look like. So let's do, what's it look like in these? These are just little uh, like crosses, but that's because it's in 8-bit. Uh, sand clock and flow. Sand clock and flow. I think I know what you're, oh, I guess it does kind of have that too. Huh. Manojit says, hello from India, 11.37 p.m. here. What is today's concept? Today's concept is wander because I originally had these few frames where it's just going to be like shapes tapping into each other and, and cool, uh, like just like ball bounces and that sort of stuff. And then all of a sudden I started thinking about like, oh, it can turn into a radio tower and that turns into a uh, like a radar and um now we're in space and so it was like all of these different ideas that kept popping into my head so i was like my mind is really just wandering right now and then that's that's the word i chose was wander and so now it's like some of the concept uh is just coming from this being so chaotic and like how did we get from this to this but i i think it's it's filling out now to where it makes sense like uh we've got this like original pretty small thing um then we get an even more close-up view then we zoom out and we've got this like now we've got this tower which is even larger and we've got this radar screen which covers up a lot more space and then we're all now we're actually in space and so we're like wandering between these different perspectives um and then like an even more pulled out view until we get back to this like really close-up view at the end um i think it's gonna be one of my favorite ones i've ever done um 
Arumani says you should make wallpapers or posters of these individual style frames. I totally could do that. I used to... Ah, let me pull these up. We're going way faster this time. We got time to, to do this. Uh, is this still on the... It's not. Oh, it is. Okay, it's on my big monitor. All right, so let me let me find uh, one of these things real quick. I used to do a series when I was in high school of just making a wallpaper every day. And basically all of them were space themed. Uh, and I think those would give some good insight into some design cues that I still use today. Um, let me find these wallpaper a day. Actually, wait, they're probably in my... One second, I know you're seeing After Effects, but I gotta try and find these. Uh, wallpaper a day old. Which one is the new ones? They might just be on my on my drive, actually. My external drive. Give me just a second to find those. Uh, it will be fun. Which year would they have been in? I don't even remember. It couldn't be 2019, could it? Maybe on like a portfolio or something? No. Hold on. We'll get there. I promise. <laughs> yes, After Effects window on stream, I know. I'm trying to find these files without giving too much. Uh, like, I don't want to accidentally show client stuff that is under NDA and all that stuff. Uh, so give me just a moment. I'll switch it back to Illustrator for now. Uh, While well, that's happening, so at least there's more stuff to look at. Why is Illustrator not even showing? Okay, there we go. One second. Finding it. Window police mode on. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Where are these? Wallpaper, wallpaper. I just have each of them in their own folder, that's annoying. All right, we're gonna look at my old portfolio then because I'm pretty sure they're all on here in an easy to access way. All right, here we go. Is that on here now? Yep, we'll do big monitor, my old portfolio, which is still active by the way. Um, anyway, it's still up on an Adobe portfolio. I would make these wallpapers every single day during class uh, when I was in like my audio video class or something and I'd finished what needed to be done for that day, whether it was like animating the calendar or something. Um, and I think I, I was making these over the summer when school wasn't even in session either. But anyway, uh, here's one that I, I would always start off making it in the, uh, the desktop version. And then I would just like pare it down to fit for this like poster size and then a uh, phone wallpaper size and then like a dual, a dual monitor setup. Um, anyway, here's another one. It's like this astronaut getting sucked into a black hole. That one was kind of fun. Lots of grain all over these. Uh, there's a little rocket ship flying around a planet. Uh, Danny says, wait, did you go to art school? Uh, these are from high school. Uh, I, did, I didn't go to uh, a, like art high school or anything. Um, however, uh, I did go to a, I did go to college for graphic design, uh, but I dropped out after two years because I'm just, I don't like the whole art school thing for me uh, it just doesn't really work um that well since i had already had some experience in the industry and things and so talking about design instead of actually doing it um just i, I just didn't have a good time uh in the actual curriculum at the college but uh yeah these are these are from high school um this one was one of my favorite ones that i ever did uh you can tell i have liked using yellow purple and pink slash red color palettes um, from a very, very early time in my design career. Uh, Manojit says, uh, what is your process for coming up with abstract concepts? Uh, in what context are you asking about for like these loops and things or just like generally for client projects and that sort of thing? Because it's, it's two separate processes for me. Um, in some ways, but yes, uh, Bruce Emil says, damn high school. Yeah, no, I was making these in, in high school. Uh, I started doing design work, uh, when I was in sixth, late sixth grade, early seventh grade. Uh, cause I had an old, 
uh, an old Minecraft YouTube channel that I, I wanted to be able to make my own graphics for. Cause I mean, obviously at that age, I didn't have a credit card or anything to be able to pay somebody, let alone money to pay someone to make my own stuff either. Um, anyway, but yeah, I would make one of these every day. That's what, that's actually a really nice color palette. I should use that for something. Um, this one's one of my favorites just cause you got this little teeny tiny rocket on here. Uh, that's got a good amount of detail on it. Um, compared to the rest of the stuff. I like those quite a bit. Um, this one was a fun one. Less focused on planets, but I could totally see this being used as like an album cover or something. You've got this little like canoe down here and the sun over the water. Um, and I, I really liked doing these sorts of stars too. These that, that looked like they were getting a little blown out in the camera. Um, here's one of a, a space shuttle that's like scanning over a planet. I was very, very planet focused in this series. Um, and then here's one where I just made something that I would normally make and then just used the smudge tool and just brushed everything over um, in Photoshop. Actually, I think all of these are made in Photoshop despite most of them being pretty vector based stuff um, from a style standpoint. But anyway, yeah, uh, this was part of high school for me. Uh, nothing for a class or anything. I was just making them for fun and then I would post them on Twitter. Um, I, I think I use the same Twitter account now. It's just under a different handle uh, as I did back then. So these might be like way, way back in my tweets. Um, but anyway, I was trying to post these to be able to like get more following on social media and stuff on top of just making it um, for me for fun. This was like my equivalent of doing the animated loops now, but obviously the animated loops are much more engaging um, and do a lot better. Uh, than these but anyway we can look through some of this other stuff if you guys want we are really really ahead of schedule uh there's like old motion design projects on here and and all sorts of stuff uh i think i stopped editing this website in like late 2019 ish so like almost three years ago now um <laughs> um, I know it says share for loops and also client projects too like i sh saw your drop shipping project autopilot it is cool i can give some insight on on a uh, process for those for sure so let's see which one to start with for the loops okay so the process for making one of these loops every week is i i am putting the pressure on myself and the requirement that i have to have a new animation every single week and so that's what i do uh i pick a time now that i stream it i pick a time that i'm gonna stream and then a day before i will sit down with my little notebook and write out well okay i'm jumping ahead hold on I'll use Artlist first to find audio or something that I want to use. Then I will cut that down into a 10 to 12 second clip or something. Um, and then from there, I'll put it in my After Effects timeline and I'll say, okay, there's like this many beats, so I can probably do this many scenes. And then what I'll do is write down a couple different like things that I've been going through or ways I've been feeling that week, something like that. And then the process from there is essentially just listening the listening to the audio over and over and over again until I can apply one of those things that uh, I wrote down from like a conceptual standpoint that I've been going through or thinking about or whatever to like, oh, I can see, uh, I'll, I'll actually sit there and I'll listen to the song with my eyes closed. And I'm like, I can see this thing moving in this way. Um, and I'm like, oh, if I add this thing, then it relates to one of the concepts I wrote down. Um, and so it's, it's just kind of an additive process of like, okay, I've got the sound, I've got this like abstract idea of just like things I've been experiencing, which I don't really have to think about that much because it's just what's been going on really. Um, and then it's really just like, once I've got one scene idea down, I write it or I'll, or I'll draw a little sketch. And then I don't know if you can see this, you might be able to, uh, I'll draw for this one. I drew out the first scene, uh, in a very, very rudimentary way. And then I was like, okay, what's going to happen next? So I did another little drawing for that one because I had a pretty clear idea of what it was going to look like. And then uh, at a certain point, I just start writing out like how you can see it on the storyboards, um, how you see it above the storyboards, those little descriptions. I'm just writing out a motion script for each one. Um, and that's really it. it. It gets to be once, once I've got the motion script already down, it's just like right now, I mean, I'm sitting in. Well, I mean, we're not doing it right now because we're looking at some older stuff of mine, but going in Illustrator and actually visualizing each of those and making them real ideas um, instead of them just being written out on paper. Um, so that's usually how it goes for the loops. Client projects is kind of similar. 
we'll usually have a script that we write or we've got like a couple points that the client wants to get across uh, like in text on the video or something. And so we'll write those out. I can actually show you the platform that we use. Uh, actually, can I hold it? Because it shows like some other different, hold on, let me, let me find one that's already done. Uh, I know you can't see anything right now, but I can't show some of these projects. So I gotta make sure I grab the right one. Uh, definitely not that one. Here we go. Okay. All right. So we use this program, this service called boards, B O O R D S. And we'll take the script that we've got and we type it out into each one of these little boxes. Um, that just are essentially placeholders to show where each uh, line of the script is going to be. And then that motion script I was talking about that I that I write in here, we do the same thing for, for projects where we'll sit there and we'll listen to the voiceover over and over and over again. And then Noah and I each are either typing or writing down our own ideas that we can see happening for each of those scenes. Um, and then those like formalize over time and we, we make style frames for them and all that. But we'll just write out those motion scripts um, underneath each of these. And then once we've got the motion script down and we've got each of these lines from the script blocked out for different scenes, then we uh, we make a style frame for it and everything kind of solidifies that way. And we send this off to the client to get approval before we start animating. Um, but yes, this is very, very helpful. It's, this is just more of like, a it's a more formal system uh, of doing this than how I have it set up in Illustrator for these streams. Um, this is how we're usually doing it. But anyway, uh, hopefully that answers your question. Um, a lot of it being more abstract is just because of the sort of skill sets that Noah and I have uh, and the types of clients we're working with. Um, I'm not really great at pen and paper drawing by any means, so I'm working with, with shapes and geometry and that sort of stuff very often. So that leads to concepts looking a little bit more abstract than they usually would naturally. However, uh, we're also typically working with lots of tech and software companies that have really complicated topics that they need to explain. So being able to take like shapes and simple things like that, that people understand and know already, and then apply those to these more complicated topics makes it easier to like distill down that information to a more digestible, easy to understand thing. Um, but hopefully that answers your question. Um, if not, let me know. Happy to explain more. Uh, Danny says, so cool. Arumani says, those look lovely. Austin Bowen's Origins. Uh, VZOA says, let's see more old stuff. Would love to see old motion design projects to see where you were when you first started, relative to now at least. And then Robert Stark says, hi. Hello, Robert Stark. How are you doing? Hope you're having a lovely Saturday. All right. We can look at some old motion projects. I'll cap this at like a 10 minute thing. We'll do this for, for 10 minutes or less and then get back to storyboarding so we don't spend too much time doing this. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to start animating and getting stuff in After Effects at the like two hour mark-ish, um, which will be way faster than last time. So I'm happy about that. Uh, Muzamil says, how do you stay focused though? I mean, with all the socials and all the distractions. Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, it's, huh, let's see focused on focused on what i mean there's a a bunch of different things that i'm doing day to day uh social is one of the things that i focus on i mean i'm making a lot of these loops so like a lot of them are kind of formulated so that they will do well on social media either for a client for a client project we want it to be able to get more eyes on it or for our stuff because i want people to be able to see the stuff that we're making because we think it's cool um but I, I don't know. It just takes, it takes a level of discipline. Like I'm, I'm really in this, like this is motion design and design is what I do and it's what I'm going to continue to do. Um, I, that's where I get most of my enjoyment and most of my fun is, is working on Revi and, and building up the brand and, and working with cool clients and all of the wins and downsides and things that come with that. Um, so I think it's, it's that discipline just comes from a place of passion to where it's, it's difficult to get distracted when this is the thing that I'm, I'm really excited about. Um, Danny says, since all of your loops just go on Instagram, have you ever considered using music that means more to you? Like actual music that you listen to day to day? I've thought about it. And I actually, I almost started a series a year ago called, uh, weekly animated album covers where I did one for Pink Floyd's dark side of the moon. Cause that's just such an iconic album cover. The video is still up on my Instagram. 
I, I like it a lot. Um, <clears throat> but Instagram does have a level of like copyright and content moderation. So your post can just get taken down. Um, if someone doesn't want you using their song or something, it's super easy to file one of those reports and get stuff taken down. Um, and especially with the size of my account now, now that I'm like over 10,000 followers. And so I have like some extra features and stuff. Um, I would be more of a target for someone to, to copyright claim those things and get my posts taken down. So it's just safer for me to be using art list and things like that. But I mean, I used to, I use like a Tame Impala song for my personal reel in 2020. Um, as well as uh, for a couple old projects and things. And um, it was just because they add meaning to me. So I, I, I used to, I just don't as much anymore because it just seems like a little, it just seems a little too risky. Um, and then Danny said, I want, I wanted to start making some loops too and feel like it would be easier if I use tracks that I actually listen to. Fair use is a tricky thing. Uh, you can get by if it's for an educational purpose usually, or if it really is just for personal projects where you're not going to gain any money from it or anything, but I'm selling these project files on Gumroad now. I can't just sell one of these songs to someone for like included in the $5 project file and that sort of stuff. Um, and, and so it, it gets a little murky. Um, if they, if any sort of person like brought a legal case, they could pretty easily discern that like a lot of Ravi's leads and projects are coming from my Instagram now and the loops that we're posting. So I, if I post music that's copyright claimable on there, then that could easily be discerned that like, oh, well, you probably made at least some of this money because of the music that you used and that sort of thing. Um, so that's why we just use the stock stuff. Um, Manoj says, thanks, man. It was insightful. I am not good at drawing two yet, so I like to use geometric shapes or free vector art online and customize it and animate. I feel that. I probably would have been an engineer if I didn't uh, fall into design. Uh, Justin said, please convince me to buy Overlord plugin. I'm skeptical that it's worth transforming my entire vector workflow. Absolutely worth it. Can you move gradient? I Easy question. Can you move gradients over to... After Effects right now easily from Illustrator because I remember just dragging Illustrator files and they're just straight up gray. Uh, they don't show up as gradients or anything. Um, that that was the biggest thing for me. It was actually being able to have my gradients transfer over without having to do anything in After Effects really. Um, and then other than that, here's something that should convince you. Here's our Illustrator right now. Uh, if you were going to put all of these things into After Effects and you wanted it to be nicely labeled and, and things, you'd probably have to break it up into a bunch of different layers in your Illustrator with names and things like that to be able to get that to push over correctly. However, if I just want all these shapes to be their own layer in After Effects, all I gotta do is just hit the split shapes to layers button and then say push selection to AE. And then every single shape shows up in exactly the right spot relative to where it was in the composition as well. Um, don't mind that these orbs do not have the right gradients on them right now because they do. It just has their start and end points are like way off over here somewhere. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so there, there are some quirks, but I, I promise it is so worth it. Uh, 1080 by 1920. What am I doing out here having a non-vertical comp? Silly me. Uh, and it's it's really not that expensive. I mean, realistically, you could sell like one project or something and you would have like way, way more value that you're getting from this. Uh, you would have made your money back like way more than 10x or whatever. Depend I mean, depending on what you're charging, but uh, it's definitely worth it. Um, when it says I can relate to what you mean when your work is your passion it does not feel like work anymore 100 percent. i i don't really have a lot of other things that i'm doing uh outside of review because that's just where i'm putting my effort um danny says it is absolutely worth and it's not that expensive at all for how much you'll realistically be using it yeah that's that's for sure and then when she says uh, you know what i am an engineer and currently working as a cybersecurity professional but switching to motion design now because i love it that's that's pretty cool. I mean, it's a very, very fun industry to be in. I, I can't really understand some days that I really get to make a living and get paid just for making cool looking animations for companies. Um, and it's just a lot of it is purely just based off of what excites me with the animation. So, 
Uh, Trevor said, watching your workflow got me to finally buy Overlord. I actually just got it the other day. And what would you say? What's your lovely review? Or have you not used it enough yet? Uh, also, Battleaxe, the people that make Overlord, absolutely should sponsor me. Same with Artlist. I am repping those people all day. And it's not even because I like want them to get more money or like uh, because it's some paid thing and I'm like some spokesperson i just they're such good services for my workflow it's incredible um danny says that's awesome same here i majored in math and was supposed to go into teaching and then got into video production so now i merge the two and make e-learning videos with motion design that's great that's really great i think that's also a reason i like making explainer videos because i mean clearly i mean i'm doing the live stream i like doing educational content um and, and so getting to merge that love for teaching people things with uh, just making cool animations is a, is a pretty interesting thing. But okay, let's look, at some, let's look at some projects and stuff. You guys wanted to see old stuff. Here you go. Um, here is my old motion reel. I don't know how loud this is gonna show up on stream, but uh, here's, the, here's the OG, the OG reel. My first one I ever made. So many old projects in here. Ooh, some 3D, some 3D in there. Yeah, see, like, I don't think I'd be able to post a reel with this Tame Impala track on it now uh, on my Instagram with the sort of following I've got. Ooh, that's flashy. Oh, yeah, good old Blueprint Studios days. That was my, like, third attempt at making a design studio. Uh, anyway, I still love that reel. I mean, some of the work in there isn't my best. I mean, it's old stuff, but the pacing and the cut of the reel is still one of my one of my favorites. Um, let's see. Robert says, "Do you use Artlist?" Yes, I use Artlist. Uh, Trevor says, "Haven't used Overlord enough yet. Had some errors. Unfortunately, I had to uninstall and reinstall AE and Illustrator. That happens sometimes." Um, but it feels like magic just testing it now that it works hundred percent. Robert says are other services. Are there other services for music too? There's a couple others. There's epidemic sound. Uh, I don't really like that one as much because there doesn't seem to be very much diversity in the music tracks. Uh, they're also used a lot by a, like YouTube creators. So lots of people have heard them already and recognize them as stock tracks. Uh, let's see the, another one's music bed, but, and they have a lot of good music on there. Like it's very, very high quality, but they don't make it as easy as Artlist does where you can't just like buy a subscription and then have easy access, like not having to worry about where you're posting it and whatever. Um, you like have to buy specific songs or specific rights to certain songs. Like you can only use it up until this many views or something. And then you have to pay more. It's, it's just kind of a mess. Um, but the quality on there is good. I just wish it wasn't so difficult. Danny says you're a natural at streaming and teaching for sure. Appreciate that. Arumani says, what's the song? Uh, that <laughs> I'm also seeing that was lit. That's fire. I love your work. That's some fine ass work. I appreciate that. Uh, the song for that one is elephant by Tame Impala. Uh, love that track. It's got a lot of meaning to me because it's like one of the first videos that I made that took off. Well, I used that track for, it was like when I was first going to college and I made some like class of 2023, uh, hype video thing uh, based on the other College of Design majors. Uh, basically just made the College of Design at the school I went to a promo video for free and people really liked it. Um, and I used that track for it. So I used it for the reel later too. But anyway, uh, Rasab says, how does your gradient not get messed up when you export shapes from AI to AE? Any specific setting in Overlord? So I ended up finding out what happens is if you rotate a shape at all, Overlord is no longer able to access the the gradient data, or like the location of it anyway. It knows what gradient is there, but it doesn't know where it's supposed to be placed on the artboard. So if you rotate a shape, uh, it's just best practice now, it seems like, to just go and redraw the gradient, and then it'll act like it was never rotated, so it should port over correctly to After Effects. 
Danny said, any recommendation for people trying to make a realer portfolio who don't really have diversity in projects? My stuff for work all feels the same and doesn't feel very real worthy. Make stuff on your own that you think would be real worthy. I mean, I'm going to put a bunch of the weekly loops in our in our end of your reel for review. Um, put the stuff that you like and you care about because that's if you're showing people work in your reel that is stuff that you're not really all that proud of and you, you don't really like working on that much then people are only going to come to you based on what they can see that you've done so if you're showing them stuff that you actually enjoyed making like loops or, or whatever um, people are probably going to come to you asking for more things in those styles and with that sort of pacing and things like that uh, so what i would say is definitely make some things for yourself uh, which can be very difficult i know uh, because we all have a little bit of perfectionism in us as designers i'm sure um, but all I can say about that is just try not to put too much pressure on yourself, uh, and just try and crank out some stuff, like set yourself a time limit. That stuff is super helpful. Uh, what else was in there? If you, and if you don't have the ability to make a lot of stuff, uh, to be able to put in there, like you have to make it real quickly. It's super helpful to just try and do cool overlaying, like overlying motion on the, on the reel itself uh i'll use the review reel as an example um it's it's really important for me when i'm making one to still make it feel like it has the same sort of match cuts that a normal video from us would so like this is a completely different video this is from a video i did two years ago uh, but we've got this ball in the center and we have another video that we did for a completely different client that has a ball in the center. So I'm going to match up those two clips and it feels like it's all part of the same video. It's not as much like a slideshow where I'm just showing you little glimpses of projects. It's being more intentional and trying to make cuts that feel like they're flowing together. Um, and if you don't have ones that line up super, super well, like a ball from one video and a ball on another video, some of what we did uh, towards the end here is just take these videos that we had and just slide them in a direction. Uh, and then the other video slides in from that same direction. And it's not even like they have the same content in them, but because they're moving in the same way, people's brains and eyes go, ooh, that was cool. Um, so I, I would say that helps a lot too, because a lot of the stuff in here is kind of similar. I mean, we have a lot more diversity in our stuff now uh, than we did before but especially for the older stuff that I had in my reel that was a lot of it was just like making sure that things kind of swayed and moved like it normally would in a video I'd make uh, Robert says I actually meant if you use other services but why are you using Artlist and would have would have been my next question oh I see uh, we have tried uh, Epidemic Sound before uh, and just didn't really enjoy that the like lack of diversity in their tracks like i said before uh art list i really like because we pay a flat fee like 250 dollars every year and then we can download as many songs as we want and use them however we want to uh there's no limit on like where they're being used or how many views they get or anything like that it's just you pay the fee and you get to use the track and that's what i want i don't want to have to deal with a bunch of licensing bs i just want to i don't have time for that <laughs> i gotta be able to just download the song and use it uh Manoj says i like premium beats and they have 15 second 30 second 60 second versions of the track that's cool uh animal says can you please turn on screencast keys i'll look into that for next stream i've been thinking that i i need to turn that on to be able to use shortcuts and stuff um justin says your first motion reel was already 100 times better than my current reel and now i feel inadequate don't feel inadequate it's totally fine i mean i really like that reel but uh, let me t let me show you why it looks good uh i'll go to my old vimeo profile uh here we go i've got a collection on here of just really really good motion reels that i like uh which i did put my own on here from then but that was more so just so i could easily find it um there's the link to it that list has some of the like i mean top reels from the industry like i mean you've got people studios like odd fellows that do stuff that's way different than Ravi and uh and the stuff that we're doing in like an ordinary folk uh, they've got a lot more illustrative stuff but the reel and the feel of it is just so good like every time i watch this thing i end up just feeling like wow that was really cool um and i'll i'll play it i'll play another one that i like too from a studio called gunner um but what i would do for for 
like over a year would just be looking up motion reel 2019 and motion reel 2020 on vimeo uh and finding all of these different reels to look through until i found really good ones that i liked and then i after watching so many of those you pick up a few things on like what makes a reel feel good um but let's watch through this one it's kind of long i like a shorter reel like 30 to 45 seconds but still this one is just top tier um and it just says all right man uh good luck on your channel gotta go to sleep now almost 12 30 a.m hope you have a lovely night thank you for stopping by uh robert stark says why are designers often using vimeo uh for video especially it well i guess that's what you do that's what is on vimeo they don't just have like pictures or anything it maintains really high video quality like if you are on youtube and you upload a video there especially if you've got like lots of noise and grain or like little particles moving around youtube doesn't know how to handle that super super well and it'll also it'll make it look a little lower quality but vimeo just has really really high quality uh video compression uh, but anyway let's watch this one i just think it's a really good reel and then we'll watch we'll watch another one after this um but this is like one of the top reels of all time and it blows my mind every time to remember that this is from 2016 like this studio hasn't even released a reel since then and i understand why because this one's just so good um but let's just watch it so good <laughs> there aren't like as many match cuts in there though there are some really really good ones but man that one is so good uh i it's a lot of the sound design and the the pacing is just so so strong um and then i wanted to show you guys the one from gunner theirs is just such a feel good one it just ah but the the soundtracks and things that they use just have such a good vibe to it uh and it it tells more of a story um it's really cool i like those i i really really like that reel and then gunners i think is my one of my favorites as well and gunners is from 2018 i mean that reel we just saw could easily be like top motion design now and it's from six years ago that blows my mind and then this one is four years ago and still feels the same way it's absolutely crazy um I'll, I'll answer questions in chat in just a second, but let's watch this other one. Uh, it just feels really, really great. It's a little bit slower paced than the other one, for sure. But you gotta add some anticipation so that once it gets to the meat of the stuff, it feels really powerful. <laughs>
just so much personality and don't even get me started on that logo animation that logo animation is unfair it's so good oh there's so many good ones so many good ones i highly encourage you to look at that list every single reel on there is worth at least like 10 watches through it's so good um i mean i have that song that they used for that gunner reel on my playlist that i listen to most of the time now just because it's got like it's got more meaning to it for me now because it was one of the things that inspired me to to really get into motion and i mean it's not even the same sort of animation that i do lots of the stuff they do is like illustrated and cell animation and that's way beyond me but it's just it just feels good and i'm like yeah this is something i should be doing um meaning motion design anyway uh but yeah uh Minoshit says, Gunner Oddfell is ordinary folk buck or my fave. I totally agree. There, I mean, there's some other people that should totally be on that list for me. Uh, Hobbs is really, really great. Uh, they do lots of flat stuff. And I, they're also, they and Gunner are related. Um, so Gunner does lots of the illustrated, uh, like more traditional animation type work. And then Hobbs is working with people like Google and also with companies that are doing uh 3d modeling and animation for drone shows and that sort of stuff lots of really tech focused things on there and it's very cool to see um uh, danny says this track is absolutely bonkers i agree the sound design on those is crazy uh yeah eye candy sound design was good too i totally agree uh islam says any advanced courses you recommend uh i've heard ben marriott's courses are really great uh, and then School of Motion, I, I've heard good things about too. I personally haven't taken any courses, so I don't really have great insight into those. Um, but hopefully those help. And then Arimani says, what's that song? The song that was played uh, in the Gunner one is No Blue Thing by Ray Lynch. So good. It's from, the, it's, uh, it's from 1989. I'd never heard of the song before. I don't even know how they found it. Uh, maybe one of the people at Gunner, at Gunner is like related to Ray Lynch or something, but I mean, that's a, that's a deep find for sure. Um, cool. Share the playlist link. I can do that. Just songs that I generally enjoy. Here you go. And it's on there. Um, but anyway, uh, we can look through a couple of these older ones and then... Uh, jump back into finishing up those last two style frames, shall we? Uh, but I, I would love to do a whole stream of just looking through old stuff and showing you guys cool references that I like and all of that. Cause I, I mean, I don't think people get exposed to enough of the industry. Um, there's just so much great work out there. Um, anyway, this video was what first started the loops thing for me. I made this as a, uh, as a project it, when I was in college, we had one project that was actually motion oriented, uh, where it was supposed to be a typography animation. And I kind of took that and just ran with it way further than I had to. Um, we had to take a word, which actually that's funny because they all, I do ones with words now. Um, but this one was called time and it was the first video I ever posted on Instagram that actually got featured by one of those like motion, uh, you know, those motion curation accounts like motion mate and motion aid and all of those different people. Um, and it was the first one that kind of blew up. Like I got over a thousand views on it and I, I, it absolutely blew my mind that that many people were interested in taking a look at something that I made for class. Um, but anyway, let's give it a watch. Uh, I like this one quite a bit. doesn't loop because I didn't put the like <laughs> the uh, extra loop in there in the actual export but I'll do it manually and it just like comes back out into the ball um, anyway it did that one for class and uh, I thought it was super super cool that one is now almost two years old actually is is more than two years old as well um, which is pretty crazy but yeah uh, Muzamil says wondering what's the budget for animation like uh, like those different studios. Uh, I, I wish I had a better grasp on it. Honestly. I, I mean, it's at least five figure prices at, at minimum. I would say it's probably like $50,000, um, for, for a video from any of those sorts of studios. And that's, that's probably on the very low end. I would think it would be, uh, very, 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 uh, expensive compared to those. 
1989, these people aren't normal. <laughs> this is BZOA. Danny says, yeah, I would love to some just chatting streams. Um, maybe I should just integrate that into the into these streams. Like once I get through style framing, there's like an hour break in between style framing and starting to animate. Um, that could be interesting. We could we could try that out. Um, and then Muzumil says, that's a good idea. Actually, maybe someday we'll be a reviewer inspo stream. I really want to do a review stream as well. I think that would be super helpful. Uh, Arcane says, hey, Austin, sickening that that was when you were in college. <laughs> I mean, I was. I, it's not been that long since I've been in school. Noah and I only dropped out uh, the summer of last year. I, I would still be, this would be the summer before my senior year in college right now. So it really wasn't that long ago. Um, but anyway, uh, then Danny says, so weird seeing one of these in 1920, 1080 for a change. I totally agree. Uh, it's, it's been really, really weird uh, seeing these now because I'm so used to working in vertical just because everyone's looking at stuff on their phones. But I was so hesitant to make that switch for a very long time. I was just very against making any vertical content. Um, but anyway, BZOA says, please show a live. I can do that. Um, and I bet I know why you're saying that because it is the same track as uh, that one, which is another reason why I chose the track for this one, because uh, this track is, uh, it's called 06 Honda by Nobody Important on, uh, on Artlist. And since this was one of the ones that blew up uh, for the first time for me on social media, when I had the thought to make this one, I knew that the concept was super good and I wanted to use similar colors. So I was like, all right, screw it. I'm going to use one of the original tracks I used. Uh, and yeah, so clearly the animation has stepped up a little bit, but uh, still that, that time, some of the scenes from that time one, I will still use in every reel uh, for a long time. It's just really satisfying. Uh, how much do you charge an hour? I, I don't do hourly rates anymore. Um, we did for a long time and or no no i did for a long time but i just i was never making enough by doing that because i kept getting so much faster at animating that i would have had to make my hourly rate so ridiculously high that it would have been pretty difficult to get hired and just from like someone seeing that number out the gate um it would have been pretty difficult and i was having i would have had to keep raising my rate so frequently that it would have been very annoying for any client that was working with me because they never would have known what they needed to pay um which would have been frustrating. So now we just do flat rate pricing across every project. We'll figure out like, okay, the video will probably be like 60 seconds long or something. And that could be anywhere from like 15 to $25,000, maybe something like that. Um, let's see. Arcane says, all right, you had experience in AE for a while prior, right? Uh, before, well, that was part of one of the things that made college feel more difficult for me is because I had those skill sets already and i i really just needed some more like practical experience with it uh whether it be on like fake client briefs or or something like that um i already came into college with uh maybe like a year in after effects but i had, I had already had like five or six years of design experience at that point so it, it felt like a step back for me um going through a lot of the lessons that they had because there's i mean it's being taught alongside people who are just starting in graphic design and don't even know if it's something they necessarily want to do and so um they have to make lessons that are geared towards everybody even if they're just starting out which just wasn't the fit that i needed um and then arcane says in my class there was maybe one person who was like at half the talent of this you're killer <laughs> i appreciate that um yeah all right, let's watch. Uh, is there some like old stuff on here? There's probably not that much like super old stuff because uh, by this point I had removed some things. Um, here's a stream alert that I did a while ago. Uh, there was another designer who sent me most of the assets for these and just wanted me to animate it. There's some weird like masking and things going on there. Uh, also no sound or anything on it. And then uh, there's some of these, there's one shot in this video. I think this is the second video I ever made. Uh, yeah. Second video I ever made for a client, uh, was this one. Went really hard with the trap beats on these. <laughs> right there. Love that shot. And then there's one more that's really good too. 
Yeah, I really like that shot a lot. Um, yeah, there were some there's some cool ones in that one for sure. But yeah, this is like three and a half years ago at this point. This company isn't even around anymore. I mean, that's the case with the, with a lot of these. Uh, they were just like small software startups that uh, kids were making in high school and that sort of thing to make some extra income. Um, Vicky says, bro, please do a live for 2D animation next time if possible, like 360 view kind. Uh, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. What do you, what do you mean? Or could you phrase that in a different way? Excuse me. Uh, Arcane says, I think you may have answered this last stream. I can't recall, but can you point us towards resources you use to learn design? Uh, sure. Let's find some. So there's 30 logos by Creative Grenade. Uh, where are these at? Ah, they must not. I don't know where it is anymore, but uh, there was this team on uh, Twitter at the time when I was working in like esports design and that sort of stuff that uh, made the, this 30 logos challenge where you would get emailed a fake client brief every single day uh, to make a logo. Uh, that was super, super helpful because it was just straight up experience uh, that I was getting without having to like go and sell a client or something. Uh, what else? I, I always like uh, this book, uh, big orange book of logos, Amazon. That's not it. Uh, you guys know which one I'm talking about. I think it's called logo modernism, uh, logo modernism, Amazon. I got this book as a Christmas gift one year. I really, really liked that. It shows all sorts of logos, new and old. Um, and it's just like hundreds of them in there. So that was useful. What else? Uh, tutorials here and there. I was pretty into the uh, esports, which wasn't really esports at the time. It was more just like Call of Duty teams of just like friends hanging out. Esports wasn't really a thing yet. Uh, but lots of like smaller designers on Twitter. I was part of that uh, that group for for quite a while in that community. Um, and so just seeing all of the different like headers and banners and things that people were making was was pretty influential as well. Uh, but also just throughout childhood, I mean, I grew up in Houston, which has, I mean, you're going down the freeway there. You've got like a billboard on the side of the road, like every 30 feet or something. It's insane. You're getting advertised to so much there, um, that I had just seen design everywhere from a super young age. And I, I could pick up on things that I liked and didn't like and that sort of stuff. Uh, Danny says, what's that new tab extension you have with the to-do list? Oh, uh, what is it called? Let's see there's oh yeah there's a twitter account called visualize value um where they just they just make a bunch of little things like this uh as little inspirational reminder things and somebody made a chrome extension um for it which i actually use the brave browser but uh it uses the chrome web store so you can get it on here too um so yeah i i really like that quite a bit uh what a good chrome theme um Monica says, have you done any of the School of Motion courses? I haven't done any uh, courses, actually, so I don't have any like personal experience with School of Motion, but I have heard good things, and they seem to have a good mission. Um, so I, I think they seem like a good option, for sure. Um, let's see. Where were we at? There we go. There's a couple other projects on here. Um, but I've also got like that whole 30... Well, not the whole thing. I've got a good amount of the logos from that 30 logos challenge on here. Like here's the brief for one of them. Uh, stoked that you're creating the Austin run logo. We're a large running event that happens once a year in Austin, Texas. We had over 5,000 participants, blah, blah, blah. They're a charitable event for autism research. Um, they, I mean, they basically just come up with an email that you would get from a client. Like it sounds very much like something that you'd actually get. Um, and then you just get a little bit of a brief in there and, go crazy making a bunch of different logo options and so this was the one i ended up going up uh choosing uh the like running streak because it's a marathon but it goes towards where austin texas is and then there's the puzzle piece that's the the icon for uh, most autism foundations and research and that sort of thing 
Um, but this was day seven. I would put it, I would use the same mock-ups every single time. I'd have this hat and then this like glass wall thing um, anytime it was a company. So there's another one that was like some chat messaging service. So it was called Ping. Uh, the little, just like sneaking little things in there. I, I, whenever I was designing logos early on, I would usually just take the tactic of, okay, write the word out, choose a good font, and then add in some little visual puns or something. That's usually what I would do. So we would have, uh, there's a little like chat icon where the normal, uh, like hole in the P would be. I don't know what's going on with this G here, like why it's kind of smooshed that way, but it's not whenever I zoom in, which is weird. Uh, anyway. And then the little like exclamation point for the eye to be able to show like notifications and that sort of thing. Um, there's there's a bunch of different ones, but there's all sorts of challenges like this uh, online at this point. This was just the one that I happened to come across at the time. Um, and some of these, I, I mean, I still really, really like like sh that sharp for a knife company. That's pretty cool looking. Uh, the A is made up of like three different blades. Uh, Hampton Cove Animal Hospital. It's it's located in the mountains. Uh, so you've got like these mountains and then where there would usually be the sun is this paw print. Um, avocado, very easy because it was just find this kind of like bubbly circular font and then the D is an actual slice of avocado instead. Lots of just visual pun focused stuff. And then I did some stuff for some Twitch streamers and things like that. Uh, this was a, a YouTuber I worked with uh, a while ago who used to do Minecraft content and now does Skate 3 content. He still uses all of this, I'm pretty sure. Um, I still like that logo quite a bit. Uh, and then a couple other different ones. This is for a pizza company. This is like a wildlife refuge center uh, coffee place. I think this was a video. It says it's a video game news website, but... Uh, to me, that looks more like a running logo or something. Uh, this was for some like app where you could uh, like take a picture of something and then take the colors from it to be able to use as like paint samples around your house or something. Uh, this was my high school news network that I rebranded before they didn't have any brand or logo or anything. And then some like really, really old stuff down there. Uh, all sorts of different goodies on there. Uh, Arcane says, so apart from logos, what other, what about other aspects of design, like your compositions and styling? Uh, a good amount of those are probably from social media work. I did, aside from logo work, I would do lots of just like profile picture banners. Uh, what else? Twitch rebrand stuff, which is really funny considering how little I have as visuals on my actual like stream overlay and that sort of stuff. But I used to make like the crazy decked out gamer uh, Twitch overlays with all of their alerts and stuff like that. Their little like, uh, what are they called? The little info cards in the description on Twitch where you've got like your tips uh, header and your uh, like social media header and all that stuff. Um, I think that's where a lot of that training came from was working in these kind of long formats um and all of the different like weird aspect ratios uh for files for twitch streams and stuff this one's kind of cool uh the glows are a little rough but uh the concept is interesting um lots of cool little accents and things some esports stuff other streamers I mean, I've got, I've got an external drive attached to this computer that has all of my work from 2016 until when I stopped doing freelance work, which would be like early 2020. Um, so th there's a lot more stuff uh, than what's just shown on here, but uh, that's probably where a lot of that came from. Um, yeah, <laughs> these look really good. I, I'm glad that they hold up. And then I had some larger like branding projects and that sort of thing that I put on here. But usually that was really just to show like, hey, colleges, I promise I know what I'm doing. And I explained like why I made some of the decisions I made and stuff like that. Um, anyway, my frame by frame uh, intro for the show. Uh, that one was kind of cool. And then the entire rebrand for that YouTuber here was his old uh, his old brand and then he, he made that himself in like 2010 or something and i upgraded it in like 2017 or 2018 something like that anyway and then a couple other like things that i use for a print portfolio uh, but of course i didn't end up doing print work because that's kind of a dying industry at this point uh there's a couple other stuff like i would make posters for myself for fun uh when call of duty world war ii is coming out i made this one it was really just like grabbing 
some screenshots from the game, cutting them out, uh, applying some texture and stuff to them. And then down here, I just grabbed like a top down view of the ocean and cut that out uh, with all of their different branding assets and stuff. Then uh, an ad for the original Pixel uh, for the Samsung Galaxy S8. That's forever ago now. Um, I tried doing some merch stuff every once in a while, uh, some like sports related things, and then some just like spec work for like mock advertisements. I looked up on Google one day, just like random diners in Florida and managed to find this, this diner called Nick's Diner, uh, and made this ridiculously cramped ad for them, uh, that I like sent them over Facebook for free. Um, it was a whole thing, but anyway, that's where a good amount of that comes from is just a lot of the social media work. And then, you know, slowly worked my way into motion. And it was really about just like taking in a lot of design content constantly because I was in that Twitter uh, design space where I mean, following like hundreds of different designers that are putting out stuff all the time. You just start to pick up some things. Um, so yeah, that's where a lot of that comes from. But anyway, shall we get back to finishing up some of these style frames? I think we shall. Let me turn the big monitor off and move back over here. And turn my music back on, it's been off forever. Cool. But anyway, hopefully that provides some insight on stuff. I really wanna do some streams that are just that the entire time, just going through references and, and looking through old videos and doing uh, video reviews and project reviews and stuff like that. I think it'd be really fun. But anyway, now I got to speed through and see if I can manage to animate this whole thing in the next uh, two and a half hours ish after finishing or figuring out what this little missile thing is going to look like, which I think I'm just going to do a little like pointed triangle sort of. Let's do like a uh, missile around earth i'm just gonna look that up on google and see what comes up Ta -da. oh it's just they just use triangles basically Ta -da 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 -da. what about this one that looks kind of cool Ooh, interesting some of these just use circles some of them use triangles uh da -da. those are kind of cool let me take like because I don't want it to actually have to bend across the path, really. Uh, so let me, yeah, let me just do like a really, really small glowing orb, I think. It'll just be the same color as this. Let's do like just barely more than that size. Ooh, what? Why is this over top of this still? Move this down here, add that over top, and then there we go. We got our little missile that's going to be super bright and glowy that comes across uh arcane says awesome insight i guess i need to take the leap and join twitter even though i promised myself i wouldn't any tips on how to find people on there to follow uh i i mean honestly that's what i did back in the day was twitter because i was just in the esports and gaming space and so that's where i was able to find people easily but instagram is a perfect place to be now too i mean there's all sorts of people that are posting stuff constantly on there all all the studios have instagram um that that's where i i think that's where most design work is happening now is on instagram uh so i would i would highly recommend that over twitter twitter is kind of a a dying form of of design it's where a lot of people like talk about design but there's a lot less work being posted on there now than there used to be and especially compared to how much is being posted on instagram all right that one stays there and now i just need all of this again over here and then just delete that delete that one this is gone no more missile Oh wait, I need the, I need that to stay, delete the missile. All of this is just going to be like this much smaller now. And then <laughs> we're going to have a bunch of these floating around out here that are all going to have like sad faces on them or like shocked faces of like, oh snap, that dude just got blown up <laughs> by that missile. Um, let me figure out what I want that face to look like. It might just be like tiny dot, tiny dot, and then much larger dot. 
and then the eyes are like closer together or something. That's not really all that legible though. Because uh, it's just so tiny. Let's move this one over here. Can't figure out how to get visualized value to work on Opera GX. <laughs> oh, Noah uses Opera GX as well. Ooh, I have lots of uh, notifications. Just a second, I gotta respond to some people. One second. All right, there we go, that's all good. All right, we're good. I want them to look shocked <laughs> and very concerned. Maybe they need to be the dark color instead. That might work better. Opera GX is trash. <laughs> I'm waiting for, there's a, a new thing that's supposed to be coming out. It's called, uh, on Twitter, I think they're at the browser company or something. I'm very excited for that. I think it'll be cool, um, but they are being very secretive, so not really able to get a whole lot from that. Uh, that's kind of legible. Do the eyes just have to be a different color? That looks kind of spooky. <laughs> These will be just like slightly larger than they were before. And then smaller over here. <laughs> this is gonna look so goofy. Oh man. We zoom out and that thing just got blown up and all these other linear keyframes are just like, whoa, what is happening here? Let's group each of these. Another like smaller one over here. This is, this is real funny looking. All right, and then we'll make smaller ones up here. They're all just hanging out. Like, what is going on here? We'll drag this one over here. This one is kind of smaller. They're not very organized right now. Compositionally, I'm gonna have to do some tweaking on this for sure. Maybe this one is just way larger so you can actually see the expression that's being made and then the rest of them are all kind of small. We need some variation in the size here as well as some of these are gonna need to be rotated, I think. And there may be just not as many down here. This is gonna look so dumb. Uh, I really hope it, hope it comes across uh, how I want it to. I, I think it'll be a pretty nice moment of humor in there. In the midst of all this like super dramatic looking stuff. But I fear that it's gonna just look like they're just kind of staring there. Um, but we'll, we'll figure it out once we get into animating, which actually now we've got everything that we need to animate. So we should be, we should be all good. Um, all of these are just gradients. All right, here we go. Let's start moving these over, shall we? We need a background to be over to After Effects. I don't want these to be getting moved. That is not how the gradient was. I need to edit those already, that's unfortunate. Where is the... Oh, oh wow, that is way far over. Mm -mm. mm -mm -mm. Alright. Tiny exclamation points on top to emphasize they're in shock. I could do that. Sure, why not? Let's give it a try. Um, or maybe it's just like 
next to some of them. Uh, let's add it on this one. We'll do rectangle that is going to be the same as that. And then these will be like slightly in. With a circle underneath that will be the same as that one. Make the gradient go. Which way does that go? It's white over the top here. Ooh, but that's if it's going the other way. So we actually need it to be like, oh, like how it was before, down here. Okay. Which means that should probably be different too, right? I don't know. Um, let's just keep these here for now. And then another one. It's going to be like even larger up there. <laughs> I think it might be too much, honestly. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's just release some of these. I think there might be too many of them. Oh, but some of the small ones looked really good. I don't know. <laughs> this looks so silly, y'all. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, Justin says, do you ever get clients whose feedback just makes the video worse? Uh, example, we want the background bright red or can we add our hideous logo here? Uh, how do you deal with that? Um, yeah, it's, I mean, for some projects, all right, there's, there's been different phases I've gone through on this. So I used to be a lot more of a stick in the mud about like, uh, like I, I know how to make this look good. And so let's not do that feedback because, uh, I know what's going to make it look best and whatever. And that, that just doesn't, that's not a very lasting, uh, way to handle those situations for sure is what we realized. So I, I haven't been like that in a while. At least I hope I haven't been. Um, but anyway, now it's much more of a, I I've got my level of tolerance. So it's if I really think that something is going to make the video worse uh, or, or not get their message across well um, or, or affect it in, in that way where it's like a more it's a more utility based thing than like a this isn't going to look like the best thing ever for me to put on my portfolio anymore. It's more so if it's going to muddy the communications that are happening um, for the actual video, because I want to make sure that their message is getting across more than anything else. So I'll I'll prompt I'll, I'll ask some some questions about like why they might want it that way to get a better understanding of like what they're trying to make happen by that change like maybe them wanting to make it bright red is because they feel like there's uh not enough contrast or they uh feel like it needs to be a more exciting or something but they don't necessarily have the vocabulary to be able to say that to a designer, you know, like they might not be able to communicate that it is contrast that they're looking for or, um, or, or more like design principles like that. So instead now I, I prompt and I ask to figure that out, what they're what the underlying thing is that they're trying to do by that change. And then if I can find a way that'll still visually look nice, but accomplish that as well, I'll try that first. And then, uh, if they still don't like it and they really just want to do what they said, then I mean, that's, I've already, I've told them why I think that like this thing will work. I might at that point tell them why I'm hesitant to do that. But if they really are pushing for it, I'll just do it. I mean, it's their video at the end of the, at the end of the day, they're paying for me to make it. So, uh, I'll give my two cents as a designer and my expertise. Uh, but if they are very insistent on just having something their way, then I mean, that's kind of on them at that point. Um, I've done my best to figure out what the problem was and try and change it so that it'll still look how I want it to look or something. Um, but it's, I mean, it's their video at the end of the day or their, or their project. Um, 
sometimes they just they just have personal preferences like that so it's a level of just being willing to be okay with those situations happening i think uh but yes we definitely do get some projects like that um where that's happened and at this point i am much more in the headspace of just we'll just move on it'll be fine we'll figure it out later uh and if need be a lot of the like worrying about how it's going to look on our portfolio thing um that drives a lot of that like fear-based response for me or of like oh they're ruining it and they're not making it look good whatever is alleviated by me realizing i can just make a director's cut to post on the portfolio if i want to sure it's a little bit of extra effort to have to go back and do that but still uh danny says yeah there's a lot going on <laughs> i agree there's quite a bit of uh things around here i need to figure out how to put them more in a ring i think but i feel like they've got to be smaller to do that but it's also got to be something that someone can recognize on their phone which is making this a little more difficult This one will be like there. Maybe just make it a little bit more organized. What is this thing? It's just a little dot from a brush there. Runeth, or is it Rumeth? Uh, Rumeth says, yes, I made it. Glad to see you here. Glad you could make it out. Oh, it was the mouth from that other one. That's what that was. Probably don't even need that one there, honestly. Can have it be a little bit more spaced out. And then there's like another one that's over there. This one sits here. And then we've got some other ones that are like outside of the orbit a bit more. I think that feels better than it did before though. Storyboards are looking great. I appreciate that. Glad to hear it. I think it's gonna be a really good one. We are about to be three hours in though, so. Uh, yep, Anvik has it exactly right. Uh, when a client has drawing feedback, it's them trying to solve a different problem that they can't quite identify. Like they don't, uh, oftentimes people don't have the same vocabulary to be able to communicate to you the design principle that they're not necessarily finding or, or agreeing with or like why it doesn't feel right. Um, identifying the problem is my job. That is exactly right. At the end of the day, it's their project. They're paying to own it. I feel like I owe it to them to do what they say. True. Uh, to, I mean, to a certain extent anyway, uh, there is an element of like, if they really just don't know and like you can tell that the general public is not going to like the decision that they're making or like their target audience is not going to do what they want them to do by the change that they're making, then I mean, that's that's a point to be able to stick up and say like, hey, I understand, like, I, I think this might be what you're looking for, but I don't think this is quite the this is quite the best way to do this. What if we did this instead? Like, does that fix that problem for you? Um, those sorts of conversations are super important to have, I think. Um, and then maybe we'll just have some other like little stars back here or something. Whoa, that one got so small it just disappeared. That might be what it is. Like there just needs to be some extra little dots in here. Is that smaller than the other ones are? I can't tell. Ugh. It's just something, I think it might be, maybe an opacity thing will help this out. Uh, Justin says, thanks for answering. I think for me, what bugs me is when a client asks for something I suggested in the first place, but they turned it down. <laughs> yeah that that happens my favorite is when uh we get feedback from a client but there are two or three other people that need to have their say on the project as well that work there and then they start competing with each other in their feedback like one person will ask for something and somebody will ask for the exact opposite and it's like how who am i supposed to actually be listening to um so that's why on a lot of projects now we just try and uh we try and find who the like one decision maker is that we need to be in touch with. Our one point of contact. Oh yeah, I think that this opacity thing is gonna help out quite a lot. I think that's why it was looking kind of strange. Let's do like 10% on these. That might be a 
too little, actually. Uh, what if this is like 75% and then these larger ones are like 40? And then we can have these slightly larger ones as 25%. And then these other ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, are all 10%. Yeah, that helps a lot. Now I'm taking feedback from a 12 year old who was passing by. <laughs> My best friend or nephew saw me looking over this and they said, that's funny. Uh, Arumani says, got to finish some work, so signing off now. So excited to see this animated. We'll check it out tomorrow. Have fun animating, and thanks for showing us your origins. Of course. Glad you could make it out to the stream. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Let me check this on my other monitor to see how the opacity is looking. Yeah, that works fine. All right. I'm good with that. What if I... I, I am curious to see if I can do some different like color combo stuff with these. Definitely not. That doesn't look better. Maybe I'll have to do like just some lighting on the eyes or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Anyway, we should have everything that we need now. So let's just start porting it over. Uh, we've got the one background layer already in there. Background, which means I'm going to need to animate that according to how the originals look, which is going to be a little annoying to do. All right, uh, let's grab our color palettes and bring them into After Effects. I'm not even probably gonna end up using the yellows and things that are on this, but I'll have them there anyway. Uh, this will be CPAL. And we've got our background. Cool. And now we need just the different shapes for each scene. So we'll grab this like ray thing the switching back and forth on this is really going to be something. Uh, that's not where the... Oh, yeah, that is where it's supposed to be. Okay, we've got tier, top, glow. That'll end here. Back to Illustrator. Move this behind. Grab our orb. Nice. I don't even have to reset the gradient on that. We've got our ball. Uh... Zemiel says, peace out. It's already 1 a.m. Def going to watch the rest of the morning. <laughs> Hopefully we're not going by the time you wake up. I know that happened last time for some people. Definitely don't want to have that happen. But thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. Let's move back to Illustrator and grab these three tiers. Cool. And I will just call these tiers. And they will sit down here. Boom. Oh, and we still have to figure out how to do this perspective shift thing. This is going to be interesting. All right. Uh, so we've got the ball is going to be there actually throughout the next three scenes. So I need to extend that. We've got hero ball goes up until there. It, which, which part is this happening at? Actually, it's the next. Yeah, it goes all the way to. Five, okay. All right, what is up with this thing? <laughs> the gradient on this is messed up. Yikes, way up here. Oh, and I don't want it to be tilted, so, okay, there we go. And then is that the right? No, it's like edge to edge. Okay, cool. That's all good. Uh, designed by committee. Justin says, designed by committee is a tough issue to deal with regarding clients, but you can at least let them fight it out amongst themselves, then come to you with the final design decision. That's true. Sometimes, though, they all want to sit on the email thread <laughs> and duke it out. Uh, Room says, I'm alert for a bit more than head to sleep. Have a great stream, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate your support. Let's grab this thing. If I can hear, actually, I need to label these. My bad, Ben Marriott. Don't get mad at me, please. Mr. Always label our layers. All right, we got. Uh, actually, wait, how am I gonna. 
How am I gonna do these? Because I need this. Let me separate these out, actually. Uh, let's grab just the top tier. And then these bottom two. Cool. So now we've got top tier. Whoops, top tier. Uh, this is top of cylinder. Top tier slash bottom cylinder. And then we'll actually take this same shape here and use that as our top tier to start with. Why did it put it in a completely different spot? The <laughs> Overlord is really not liking that shape. Do you have links enabled? No, because I'm using Overlord. Uh, or can you do links with Overlord as well? I don't think you can. No, uh, I'm using a plugin that lets me bring the shapes over. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. All right, and then we need it to be at that size. So this is top tier slash bottom cylinder. And I'm just gonna have to do some shenanigans with the gradient. Uh, animate it in order to make sure that it's the right colors that it needs to be on each one. There we go. Make sure that it's lined up. Uh, I meant links for your stream chat. Oh, I see. Uh, I think I might. I don't know. I didn't see settings in there when I was. Uh, I don't see any settings other than like message delay for the chat. So I'm not sure how to change that. Uh, but I, I don't know, maybe. It seems like people's are getting deleted or something. Send a gif of what those shocked faces remind me of. <laughs> well, you can certainly try um, and see if YouTube lets you. All right, it needs to be at that size right there. So we'll say, uh, I'll duplicate this and say size ref reference just for that one scene. And then we've got what else? All right, so this needs to be behind the uh, bottom tiers. All right. And then we'll go here. The bottom tiers will be gone by that point. Top tier, bottom tier. How many of these do I have? <laughs> okay, that's not the right one. Okay, I just need this one. And then I want that one for a size reference. Let's do like 49.5 as the size. And bring it to the center and up to the top. Cool. Oh, these are gonna look so good. All right, moving on from there. That guy doesn't need to be showing yet. Uh, but we've got that one. Oh, wait, because I have the keyframes there. I see. OK. And then we've got the top of the cylinder there. That works fine. What am I looking for now? I can't remember. Color palette needs to be at the top. And I'll actually go ahead and change all of these labels. Lock those down for now. This one. OK, now I don't need that one. That's what I was getting confused about. All right, and then top cylinder only shows up there. Cool. Setting this one up is going to be a pain, but it should be worth it. Uh, what do we get after this? So scene three is the tower. Wow, that is going to be a really fast scene. That's like 12 frames or something. Yikes. I don't, need, I don't even know if we're going to be able to do that. We'll find out. Um, might just have to cut it and go straight to the radar thing. But we'll find out. Eventually. Size reference. 
have two random cylinder. So we need to go to that should still be here by that point, I think. Right? No, it's going to turn into a ring. Okay, so that one's gone. Actually, both of these are gone at this point. And we just have this ball remaining. Madroom says, hey, Austin, how are you? Another awesome loop. Thank you again for every week to do these masterpieces with us. Of course. Glad to see you. Uh, uh. I'll probably have to take a break in five, ten minutes to grab some food. But then should be good. Alright. Let's see. Uh, Cyrus reference is there still. Now I just need the other bits for this radar tower. Not radar tower. The signal tower. That's there. Then this one needs to be ported over. What am I getting? Okay. And then let's grab this little line. Okay, this one is tower base. This one is uh, this one is floor slash ground. I'll just call it ground. This one is connecting line. None of these are going to show up until here. And actually, they'll all be gone by this point. <laughs> so that's fun. And we will grab each of these rings. Have each of them show up here. Good. All of those showed up correctly. Call this one rings. All right. Cool. That one's all good, and now we need to figure out how I'm going to port these over. This big uh, thing of lines. Let's see. We can grab the background one first. They will end by that point. This one is background uh, surface, which is purely going to be used for uh, like red inner glow once this other thing shows up, um, as well as the like rotating. We'll do uh, angle gradient spiral. Okay. And then actually I should see if this one, if this works, layer style, gradient overlay, change it to angle. Oh yeah, that should work totally fine because we will do a couple different stops and then this one will be at zero. And so then all I'll have to do is just change the, oh wait, I can just do offset, right? No, not offset. I'll just change the angle over and over again, it'll look like it's doing the, the like sweeping thing that an actual radar would do. So I want it to start at the white, then go to the teal, then to the dark red. All right, that should work fine. Uh, that's fine with me. Then we'll come back into Illustrator and grab these lovely lines here. Hopefully it works. It did. Very nice. Move that down here. Ooh, did I put it underneath the... I think I put it underneath there on accident. Why can't I see any of these still? We'll call them... Uh, oh, wait, I know why. It's because this thing needs to have the fill set to... Zero. There we go. Now we got it. Perfect. And so now we can rotate the gradient and it'll look like it's doing that. Oh, that looks perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Um, I might do like this comes a little bit closer. And this one does too. And then we'll bring the opacity stop closer. Just so it's not so long. 
but wow, that looks dope. I'm happy with that. Cool, and then what do I need to do now? I need to grab these other lines. First, I'll label this one though. We'll call this, what's the other one? So this will be lines from center, and then the next one we'll call like rings two or something. Rings two, the sequel. All right, grab each of these rings. Bring them over. Oh, I forgot about the, the outside one. My bad. That one, this one, this one, this one, and that one. Now we bring all those over. And we will call it rings two. Those all stop there. And then could have I could have the line be up above there, this like pulsing line thing, but would it be below it? I need to look at a reference image for that. Uh, it is below them in some way. Is it below both of them? I think it might be. Interesting. Okay. And then actually now I should be able to just parent this to Something. Actually, I can just have that one rotate over and over. That's fine. Cool. All right, I'm going to put a pizza in the oven really, really quickly, and that'll take like five, just like two minutes, and then I'll be right back over here uh, waiting for it to cook. We'll keep animating stuff. One second.
All right. So I did happen to forget that when I, well, I opened the fridge and I happened to forget that I made myself pasta last night. So now we're having pasta. However, to answer your question, Justin, about design your perfect pizza. I mean, it's pretty simple, but I can totally get by with just cheese and mushrooms with some like nice garlic crust, like garlic butter crust. It's kind of unbeatable. I mean, I can put some other stuff on that, but um, that's like as far as like normal pizzas go. But usually what I'll do, uh, sorry, microphone. Noah eats a lot of different interesting foods. Uh, and so we'll go crazy with putting toppings on our pizza and stuff. And uh, anyway, so what I'll usually get is just like some some cheese pizza. It's got some like onion and, and spinach and other stuff on it. Uh, and then from there, we'll add on like a little drizzle of honey with some like uh, crunchy like fried shallots, like fried onions and that sort of stuff on it. A um, little bit of drizzle of sriracha as well, a little bit of mayo, just like drizzled over top, a uh, tiny little bit. And uh, yeah, that is that is really, really good. That's a good pizza. Add some mushrooms on top of that. Woo. It's pretty great. Garlic crust is your weakness? I agree. Garlic crust is kind of unbeatable. Uh, Islam says 16 gigabytes of RAM, GTX 10, 1660, i5, 9th gen, good for your, your animation or something similar. Uh, I would think so. I have a GTX 1660 Super, for, so from a graphics standpoint, I know that works well. I do have 32 gigs of RAM, though, and I think that helps quite a bit, uh, more than 16. You should be able to get by okay with 16, though. And then I, I don't know about that CPU, so I'm not, I don't have a lot of insight on that, but I have a Ryzen 5 3600, if that uh, gives any context. I'll move the microphone a little bit away so I'm not doing some like ASMR eating situation. Um, but anyway, we're gonna have some pasta, it's gonna be good. Which I'm really glad I made this because I was getting really hungry. It would have been really annoying to have to wait 20 minutes for this pizza to cook. <laughs> but now I can have the pizza later. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Shall we? I'll take another another bite or two in a minute, but I want to make sure that I've got everything ported over to After Effects timely since we're already at hour three. Uh, Islam says, thank you, no problem. No worries. All right, now I need these orbs over here. Uh, let's do, let's do each of these in one group. Uh, actually, wait, no, I should probably have them each as their own separate shape. So let's just turn that on for that. And then I just want to make sure that I've got the correct gradient on each of these and then I'm not going to have to redraw it or not have to move it around in Illustrator. Sorry, <laughs> in After Effects. I just keep saying what I'm doing instead of what I'm actually thinking. And one more here. And then I'll do the red one. And then hopefully Overlord will be nice now that I have redrawn all of those. Let's port those over. That sounds crazy. Honey sriracha and fried onions and shallots. It's it's really good. I promise. I know that it's it might sound a little weird, especially when you add the like you do a little drizzle of mayo on top. That sounds a little strange, but I, I promise it is so good. Um, it's absolutely delicious. Also, those all imported nicely. Very cool. Thank you, Overlord. Really sounds like I'm talking to someone when I say that. 
I bet they named the plugin that just so that <laughs> there would be moments like that. Um, all of those need to be under, ooh, see that's where it, this gets a little difficult. I'm gonna have, would they be over top of the spiral or underneath? Because if they're over top, I might as well just not have a gradient on them at all and just use the flat colors. Although I guess I can do some testing to see how they would look with the glow over top. So I'll just do deep glow. Oh no, it can be over top. I think that's fine. All right, so this one is red dot and this is blue dot one, blue dot two, blue dot three, blue dot four, and blue dot five. Cool. Uh, the red one will be up here and we'll only get pinged like here, I think. Let's find out. Oh my God, I completely forgot what the audio was on this for a second. That was a real vibe switch. It The, the music doesn't really match the vibe of the, uh, of the visuals that well, like the style, but I think that might work to my advantage and, and create some interesting contrast, honestly. Mm-hmm. I'm sure this part's gonna be especially exciting for people watching this back. Uh just watching me eat for ten minutes, but oh well. Mm, that is good pasta. Mm. I made like a creamy tomato sauce with some some white wine in there. Mm, so good. And then the usual Italian seasonings of some rosemary and basil and oregano and that sort of stuff with tomatoes and fresh parsley and garlic and onions and all that stuff. So good. All right, uh, let me listen to this here. The red can appear here, why not? Everybody gets alerted at the very end. That sounds fine. Mm -mm. It's really interesting to see, because I've got the whole like YouTube live dashboard over here, how much the viewership spikes when I start like looking at the camera and, and talking about something uh, that's like not necessarily related to this animation in particular, but to other things. And then the viewership just goes like, just jumps up like crazy. Um, anytime that happens, like when we were sitting there watching my old stuff, viewership goes like way up through the roof. Uh, and then as soon as I got back into just doing like normal animation and After Effects stuff, people are like, Ooh, excuse me, people are like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just watch this later. I just find it interesting. Uh, BZOI says you can make a cooking channel. I I would be pretty limited in what I could do. I mean, I can make some good stuff now, but most of what I've make now is just what I've learned from Noah. Uh, he makes a lot of really, really good dishes and we live together. So I've just picked up a good amount of that stuff. Uh, but he has so many recipes and things that he, he makes. Um, let's go back to Illustrator. Now that that part's done, we, oh, okay. Now we got to figure out how to import this planet. Uh, what am I going to do about this ring? Okay. These are, whoa, what's going on there? All right, all of these are gonna be in the same group. That's just our planet right there. Looking good, looking good, Mr. Planet guy. Got that one there. This red dot one can go away. The planet will stay there. Once the moon gets hit, it only goes away once we're in scene seven. All right, and now we need to find what we're gonna do with our ring. I'm surprised that the gradient stayed on well for that one, but I am grateful. We'll call this one planet. This one is planet ring. All right. And then what are we gonna do next? We're going to go back to Illustrator and grab, we're gonna put that in the background. 
call that one, uh, we'll call that explosion base. Uh, it'll appear here once the moon gets hit and be gone by that point. Uh, each of these moons, so we'll have our linear keyframe moon, linear moon, that'll be underneath the explosion. And it will disappear once we're at that point. All right, and now we get to have our easy eased one come in. And that one's going to be right here. And we'll disappear by that point. We'll call this one easy eased moon. And it will be attached to linear moon. So that way I don't have to worry about them getting into different positions or anything. All right, I am realizing rotating stuff is going to be relatively difficult in this style because the lighting looks so good uh, that I'm going to have to figure out how I can I can do that. I'm going to have to do lots of gradient animation, I'd imagine, to go along with the rotations. Mostly on on these little things. Uh, these little stars and stuff, I want to be able to have them rotate. All right, back in here. We've got all of those in there. What am I missing? I'm missing, okay, I'm missing the missile and the trail that the missile needs to follow. Oh, which is going to be way easier if I do, all right, we'll do missile path, and then we'll do another one that is missile itself and that's just going to be the same path except four pixels is that too little let's do like eight pixels and it's going to be uh no gradient stroke just a, a normal flat stroke of the white color again at eight and then change the cap to round cap with a trim path. We're gonna bring that to 1% full. Ooh, that might even be too much. 0.5% full, 0.1. Cool, now we've just got a little dot that we can push around on that path without having to do anything extra to it. Nice. Da, 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 da. Uh, I'm gonna bring these to the front. Onio says tra. Is that hello in a in some language that I do not know? We can find out. Translate it to language tra. Mm, tra hello. Huh. Don't know. I couldn't find anything. Uh, not showing Illustrator. Whoops. My bad. Uh, there it is. So basically all I did was just come in here and I took the path of the missile, this little like gradient line that we already had. I duplicated it, uh, called it just missile instead of missile path, gave it a flat stroke instead of a gradient stroke and added trim paths, made the stroke slightly larger, changed the cap to a round cap. And now with the offset, of the trim path, I can have it look like there's a little circle following the line, even though it's really just the line itself only showing up at a couple different points. Uh, good night to you as well, Abelfazel. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Oof, sorry, microphone. More pasta time. microphone's getting beat up today all right that scene is good now um now i just need to add all of the extra guys that need to show up 
in this next scene. And in fact, as long as they're all grouped, I think I might just put them all on one layer. I just might do that. Uh, trim path with circle or with end at 0.1% literally is just a dot or circle. Yeah, pretty much. As long as you change it to round cap instead of butt cap. Uh, Justin says, are you listening to Spoon? I sure am. I am listening to Spoon. I was lucky enough before 2020 to get to go to a concert that had Cage the Elephant, Beck, and Spoon um, all in the same concert. And that was, that was a pretty cool experience. Did that make it so that... I'm just going to delete this one, honestly. I mean, it does kind of anchor it, but why are these all messed up? Group and then to 25%. Okay, I'm not trying to delete an anchor point. There we go. All right. Uh, I'm going to bring all these in as one layer except for this this big one and we're just going to hope that that works sounds like inside out by spoon it was and i'm sure the youtube description will say it was later as well <laughs> all right cool we got all those uh this is moon being hit and then we have Behind all of those is our other keyframes, and we're gonna like zoom out, which causes them to come in. Um, it's gonna be pretty cool. Scale, we're gonna bring those way up. That might be too much. Yeah, I don't know that that'll work, actually. We'll we'll figure that out later, I guess. Um, but it's fine for now. All right, uh, I was just showing my After Effects that whole time again, wasn't I? Good, I didn't really do anything, <laughs> to, to be honest. Uh, I just imported them. All right, now we're in After Effects. We've got those. We have our... Cool. We've got our main linear. And then we've got other keyframes. All right. All of those are there. And then now we need to just come back into this one. Uh... Blob says, do you normally play with layer styles in After Effects after importing the assets from Illustrator? If need be, yeah. Um, after Effects is where I'm going to add all the different glows and those sorts of things. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, some of these, like these circles, I may very well add like an inner glow to. So they've got some Fresnel effect on them. I could do that. It all depends, really on uh, what I need once I actually start animating it. But so far, I haven't done anything with them. All right, uh, back to Illustrator, gonna import this thing. Whoops, I meant to do the opposite. We're gonna call this uh, hero, and then it'll end there. And Go back to this, bring our shape in, and now we've got our little base that it's gonna bounce on. Base, and go to our gradient fill. There we go. All right, now we've got everything in there except for the text. And then I'm going to animate like the wind. What? It's three and a half hours. We'll see if I can animate this whole thing in two hours or so. I'm trying to beat six hours today. 
I don't think I'm gonna hit five like I was originally hoping, but we can certainly shoot for uh, shoot for six, which will be infinitely better than the nine that happened last time. All right, text comes in now, and there they are, voila. And I'll actually add a gradient overlay onto the text here, because uh, I'm gonna want it to be a similar gradient to what's on one of these uh, little blocks. So I'll put it at zero, and then we will do edit gradient. Boom, boom, boom. It's gonna need a fifth one, I believe. Yep, so we'll do white to the blue, maybe? To the red to the dark red to the white again I actually don't know how well that's gonna work but we'll find out maybe it was more like this whoops and it's gonna be on a dark background so there's really no worry about uh, the legibility on that um, I just haven't gone in to change all of the backgrounds yet let me grab a, uh, I was going to say grab a screenshot, but that's not going to work super well. All right, uh, it'll be a second before I can read chat because I need to have this pulled up on my other monitor, so give me just a second. Uh, we're going to change this to colors. All right, so it's going to start like this, start and end pointer there, colors are like that. And then on the next one, we need it to be where... Uh, oh, whoops, I need to be able to see this. We need the light, light blue. Oh, whoops. Okay, so we need the dark blue down here and the light, light blue up at the top. Is that right? Oh, no, but it actually needs to be changed. Okay, so we'll have this come down here, this come up here. Hopefully that doesn't mess with stuff too much. I kind of feel like it will, but... We'll find out. Da, da, da. All right. Cool. That looks good so far. Uh, actually, we'll probably need to do like one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. Da, da, da. To do some transitions on this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just as long as this doesn't look super goofy. Let's do a 63% on either side, and then how's that look? That's not too bad. I mean, you can tell that it gets pulled across, and it's got that weird, like, kind of darker part in the center, but... All right, I'm going to turn down the audio on this. Let's do, like, negative 15. I just need to remember to change it afterwards. I always forget to change it before I export it, and then we all watch it on the stream and it's at a way lower audio than it's supposed to be. And I'm gonna have to do that on every single one of these colors. It's gonna be a real pain, but it'll be worth it. Uh, and then we're back to the same colors over here. So one, two, three, four. Whoops, over here I mean. One, two, three, four is going to be each of these. And then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four is going to be these. And I need to do the same easing. So 63 roughly. And 63. Okay. This is gonna be cool. I think it should be, a, it'll be a more interesting thing, I think, or at least it'll be different than the normal just like cuts I do on the color. Mm -hmm. 
All right, and then on this one, it needs to be the same colors, and then we'll do one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Except now it's going to be up here is going to be our light black, which is not right. So it'll be the dark, dark black at the bottom, and then our light black at the top. Those are inverted. It's supposed to be the opposite way, so I'll actually have to change the direction again. That's fine. I'll just reverse the colors. And then this part is up here, and this part is down here. Cool. Grab those again. Oh, it's already got the same easing. Very nice. All right, and then what happens here? Ooh, now we get much more interesting. One, two, three, four. With one, two, three, four. And one, two, three. Actually, wait, I should change this. I was going to do like a red glow down at the bottom here at one point. I just don't know which point it's going to happen. We said that, okay, so that pings here. So we'll have the same thing and then go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, up until there. We will have it be where the colors change the bottom to this red. Cool. And then those will be the same. We'll do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we will have the colors change to there being something in the center. The dark red, the red will be at the top now. And the bottom will be the teal. Is it that right of a teal? No, it's the darker one. There we go. Okay. This is one of my favorite style frames I think I've ever made. That's a really cool looking planet. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, Persian Rex is here. Glad to see you. Danny says my AE audio levels are always capped at plus or minus uh, 12 decibels. Is that something you can change in the settings? Uh, maybe. I, I think mine is always capped at, well, ooh, at the negative too. That's weird. I know I can go down pretty far, uh, but I think it might be plus 12 as the maximum. What if I try like 15? No, if for some reason it's, I, I can change it to whatever. Um, it, it must be in the settings or something. Says says, uh, that's, that sounds kind of funny. Uh, for how long have you been into motion design or design in general? I've been doing design generally for uh, nine years now, almost, almost 10 years, I believe. And motion design I've been doing for three and a half, four years. Uh, and then Persian says, I wish I could donate, but unfortunately international payment does not support my country. No worries. There's, there's no need to, to donate at all, but I appreciate the support. Uh, Blob says that per, that preview speed so good. <laughs> it does also help that we're realistically only working with like six different shapes at any given time. Um, once I add glows and grains and stuff, then the preview speed is, preview speed is kind of garbage, but for now anyway, it works fine. That keep the same easing? No. Uh, let's keep those there. Okay. I need the speed on the colors to be the same. So we'll do 63 and 63. Uh, and then I should probably do it on these as well. 63 and 63. And then I don't think there's any color change in here, so I shouldn't have to worry about it there. Ooh, that's gonna look cool. It definitely needs some like time for it to settle. What if I do these are at a uh, hundred percent. And then it's like, uh, these go like that. And they don't end until here. That's way too long.
Ooh, what's the weird flicker that's going on there? What is happening there? The colors shouldn't even be there by that point. Oh, it's because they're not. I think it's because they're not used along with these. What about now? No, it still does it. That's so weird. Whatever, I'll just have it change there. Hmm. What if I do a... Whoops, so sorry everybody. I really need to not be hitting my microphone so much. Move that over and then it's like that. Maybe that'll work. Cool. Uh, says says, what would you recommend to someone who's trying to improve at motion designing but doesn't really know what or where to learn? Uh, well, uh, finding out what and where to learn would be pretty helpful, I would think. Um, looking at sites like Behance, uh, and, as well as looking up motion design content on sites like Vimeo, I find to be super, super helpful. Uh, in addition to that, I've, I've always thought it's been super, super important to take some time to go into After Effects and go through every single one of these effects in the effects panel. Um, just one by one, just trying each of them out on a solid or a simple shape or something, just to see what each of them do. Um, because then you can start to make those connections to be like, oh, maybe I should be using this effect and this effect together to make something like this. Um, same thing goes for shape layers and like twirling down each of the properties and uh, text animators and all that sort of stuff. Um, all of that I think is very, very helpful. I feel like I've been plateauing for almost a year now and since it's only my second year of designing, it's not really supposed to happen since I still have a lot to learn. Well, I also wouldn't put that much pressure on yourself to feel like you have to be hitting some sort of, uh, like, I mean, I don't know what your reference point is for if you're plateauing or not, but um, it, it just takes a while. I mean, I, I've been doing it for a hot minute at this point, and I think I've really only started to get good at it the past year or two-ish, um, motion design anyway. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things that, that just takes a minute um to get through but really just like practice 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 over and over again you'll start to develop new things that you weren't doing before and wanting to try new things i think uh but taking in content as much as possible i think is a really good way to get there and start to figure out what else might be out there so instagram behance and vimeo are definitely places i would recommend for sure Alrighty, I think that that works fine for now. It'll probably not be nearly as noticeable that like sudden change once we uh, once we have the other animations happening. But oh well, uh, say says thank you so much. Of course, happy to help. All right, I hope it helps anyway. Um, that moon gets hit there, and. And it's not until scene seven that we change again. So let's do that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then let's do uh, the top is the blue. The bottom actually, I think, is already the right color. Cool. Uh, and then let's do the correct easing. We'll do 63, or just about there. On the influence, cool. And then now we should have everything. Oh, wait, I need to do the last little bit at the end. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That was kind of cool right there. Uh, colors, I need my color palette back. We have the 
bright at the top and the dark at the bottom. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 63 again on either side. Mm -mm -mm. All right, now we should have this done. Uh, Blob says, aside from technicality, I feel like looking into projects you find beautiful really helps you to kind of narrow down what you wish to learn for the time being. I agree. Um, ooh, excuse me. Each of those sites, like YouTube or Vimeo, I'm pretty sure you can use the greater than and less than symbols on the keyboard to go frame by frame uh, on videos as well, which I found to be super, super helpful to realize like, oh, they didn't actually make a perfect morph between this and this. They just had a shape that was vaguely similar uh, and were able to just cut there and those sorts of things. Name of this song, it's on the tip of my tongue. This song is The Less I Know The Better by Tame Impala. Uh, now our background should be good though, let me check that. <laughs> Danny says, I've been downloading everything and importing into After Effects for frame by frame. Well, hopefully that helps that situation. <laughs> That's rough. Hmm. No, no, no need to do that. You can, you can do, uh, it's either like shift and then greater than or less than, or it's just greater than and less than depending on what site you're on. Uh, some of them will do like every two frames though, which can be kind of annoying, but it, it depends on the site. I don't remember exactly which one is used for each. Um, but anyway. This part just doesn't feel good. This <laughs> like this section just doesn't feel right uh, at all. It's because it like fully stops. I think. But it's with the... I'd, I'll mess with that later once we get the other animation actually going, because I think that's probably where most of that problem is coming from. Da, 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 da. Mm, 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 All right, I'm gonna grab, grab some water really, really quick, and then we will start animating this. I'm gonna move this down though. I didn't realize it was slightly up above. All right, cool. One second, everybody. Let's do it, y'all. Animation blitz. It's about to happen. Two hours. Can we animate the entire thing and manage to finish? Uh, 
within the six hour mark. Let's find out. I almost want to put like a little speed run clock up uh, to see how long it actually is, but I've got my little how long it's been live for counter, um, which is helpful. So anyway, let's do this thing. I'm gonna to need to turn the music off for a little bit just so that I can get my bearings on what needs to happen where. Uh, let me go ahead and grab this top tier thing so I can do the colors. Uh, I'll grab the gradient fill. Ooh, this is gonna be interesting, okay. You can do it, trust, I believe as well. We got it, we're gonna make it happen. One, two, three, four, five, six, let's do six. And then we'll have it start there. All right. So now we need to do, where's my color palette? Let's do the white is over here instead. Then we've got the teal and the dark red with the red. And also like slightly over to the side. All right, and now should be able to do 63% or 65, that works too. Save, and then we'll see how that looks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is gonna be cool. It's kind of, it's more like fadey than I normally would animate. Uh, usually it's just like cuts and cuts and cuts, but I think it'll be kind of cool to do something a little different. Although it might look it might look better to do just straight up cuts now that I'm thinking about it. But it's so smooth. I think I gotta just I just gotta keep going with this and we'll see what it looks like at the end and then I can change it if I decide to. But okay, we got Brum. Bum. Bum. So fast. Duh. 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 All right, we'll do one every three frames or something. So we'll get the, uh, the ball's not even gonna show up until one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, until here. Where is ball? Here is ball, okay. We got that. Ball's not even gonna show up until there, which means the top tier will not show up until three frames before that and the top tier glow won't show up until that either. And the bottom tiers, we will have the top one. So we got tier two and tier three. Actually, wait, it should be the opposite. This is tier one. All right. So we'll do this one shows up at the very beginning and then we've got one, two, three. Tier two will not show up until here. How's that look? I mean, obviously we have to animate it, but. Cool. This is gonna be dope. I'm excited. Here we go. We're in it now. We're gonna do some anchor point stuff so that I don't have to worry about. Uh, so that I can essentially just copy paste the same keyframes is what I'm getting at. All right, we're gonna do an exponential decay here and copy those keyframes. Actually, I should, I should just copy them instead of copying and using. And then do the same thing here. Cool, so now we're gonna have, oh, except tier two should actually be behind tier one. And I'll add some like micro animations and stuff, I guess. Uh, all right, let's do tier, top tier, bottom cylinder. We're gonna do the same thing on this. Anchor point, it's gonna be like that. And then we just need the same thing on, actually, let me do, let me just do a position thing on this one, I think, so that I can do this uh, top tier glow attached to it. 
So we'll do, uh, it's 10 that it needs to be. So we'll go like this, move it way down. Uh, can you explain why you chose to animate the anchor point there instead of position? Uh, sure, let me explain that in just a second. Blob says, ever thought of displaying the keys you press on screen? I think that would help the general audience. I agree. Uh, I'm going to do that for the next one. I'll, I'll put a note down to make sure that I do that. I, I think it'll be really helpful for people. Because um, I, I was watching back one of the streams a few days ago, and I was hearing all the like keyboard clacking, and my mouse is moving around everywhere, and I, I didn't even realize that I was doing some of, the things, some of these things as fast as I was. Um, so I'll definitely do that. Does anybody have any good programs to recommend for that? Like, is there a standard that most of these people who make tutorials are using? Um, cause I, I don't know, uh, off the top of my head, want to make sure I'm downloading a good one. Uh, and then Danny said, can you explain why you chose to animate the anchor point there instead of position? Yes, because I knew that the anchor point on each of those shapes, like the, the starting value was going to be zero, zero. So however, the actual position value would have been something different for each one. So instead of having to uh, animate the position for every single one of them uh, individually, because they all start at different points, since they all start at zero, zero, I can animate one of those, then copy those exact keyframes and paste them onto the other ones. And it'll do the same amount of movement, but from where it was actually starting. Um, essentially, it was just a lazier, easier way for me to be able to do that. Um, without having to do it multiple times. However, that does raise problems if I'm doing things like a scale at the same time because it'll scale or rotate based on where the anchor point is. So I, because I'm not doing either of those, that's why I felt fine doing it there. Uh, Clover says, hello, thanks for your stream. Of course, glad to see you, Clover. Welcome, welcome. Um, but for this one, I'm doing position because uh, I need to be able to have this other uh, object parented to it um, from like a layer overview. The glow thing, I mean. Oh, this is gonna look so cool. Uh, I figured it was more of a workflow thing. Yep, just to make things fast. That's really it. Okay, this ball is going to get absolutely sent into the air. Uh, it'll be all the way up there by that point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it should actually start falling down by that point. One, two, three. So it's going to be all the way up there at that point, and then it'll start down here and then come back down to that same point. by the time that it reaches there. So we'll do that. And then it's gonna reach that bottom point there. I might have to do the bounce later because I need to do these other smaller animations first. Cool. Here we go. I'm gonna need a big null over all of these to be able to do this like scaling up and down thing that I want to do. So I'm going to grab each of these, make sure that it's attached to this scale. And then I'm going to have it start. Uh, how do I want to do this? Because if I have a larger scale here, let's do, let's just see what this looks like. All right, so we're going to start there. It's going to be like this, which pushes it way off screen, which is a bit of a problem. Oops, all right. And then I need it to get to this size reference here. So I will try to figure that out. Uh, we will do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there we go. So it should be eight frames on that side as well. Whoops, I didn't want this thing on there. There we go. Okay, so it goes up to like that size. Got it. And so now we'll do a, we'll do an 80%, uh, we'll do 70, 71% on either side for the influence. 
of the speed. And then I'll have to do some position stuff uh, to ensure, whoops, not at the very end, to position the stuff to ensure that everything's on the screen the whole time. Uh, so we'll start there. Actually, wait, what was it? Ooh, because that'll put it way too far ahead. Whoops, why is it not copying my, why is ease copy not working right now? I don't know why. All right. We'll have it start like down here. Cool. Uh, most common ones are, is that CMAAC or is it RN that's there? I think it's, I think it says KMAC. KMAC and screen key. Okay. I'll save that. I'll screenshot that chat message and keep that on my desktop. Uh, we'll just say uh, key capturing software. Okay, cool. I'll just have to make sure I don't type any passwords or anything on screen. That on screen, that would be awkward. Okay. So far looking pretty cool. I don't need this thing to be attached to that either. That was silly of me. Uh, this top cylinder doesn't need to be on there at all. Ooh, and then the position is gonna have to go back up as this is happening too. All right. This got a little bit more complicated than I was expecting. Uh, do you have a standard spacing between keyframes? I know a lot of people use multiples of 10 just so they can use the shortcut. Yeah, typically, typically I'll do tens or, uh, yeah, usually units of 10 and then maybe a couple keyframes off of there every once in a while or a couple frames off of there. Uh, okay. This needs to now come up to where that size reference is. So I'm going to tone down the opacity on it so that we can see where it starts. It needs to come all the way back up to here. And we are going to copy the easing and that should work. That doesn't look great. <laughs> Easing on that is not ideal. And I bet I know why. I bet it's because I should have done a 100% curve, but let's see how this looks. Let me remove the size reference now, we don't need it. And then same thing with this top cylinder, we don't need it either right now. What is that weird glowing thing? Oh, it's just the background. <laughs> I'm gonna have to change that. Ba -ba -da. All right, this ball needs to be there then, so it can keep bouncing. We'll do one, two, three, four, five up, up to like there, and then one, two, three to get back down to the ground. One, two, three, four, five. But we'll do like tiny, tiny bit. And then one, two, three, four, five. Just a little bit off the ground. There we go. All right, so now this needs to go this way. That goes like that. We're adding bounces right now. Whoops. These peaks are getting real tiny. All right, that should work, right? And then it'll be like sliding around as that happens. That works fine. I 
doesn't quite work. Like you can very easily see the merge there, which makes it feel a little weird. Doesn't help. This like little ball thing in the background doesn't help either. Uh, let's fix that. What if we have these appear one frame further? Okay, that seems like it might work. That seems to work fine. I'm not loving the timing on some of these, to be honest. One, two, three. I want this to kind of flicker in, I think. So I'm gonna add that. And also, how loud is that showing up on stream? I hope not very. That's very, it seems like it's very, very quiet by comparison. So that should be fine. All right. Mm, the flash is a little too fast. Let's have two keyframes of space in between most of those. That feels better. The delay on these seems to be a little bit too long. Like, it should be maybe like two frames after this that this appears. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. Like that, that last one shows up way too late now. So I'm gonna have each of these appear that much faster. Except now that kind of messes with <laughs> that, but that's okay. I need the ball to do that. Whoops, okay, I'm gonna have to move all these over. What about this? That seems like it's more in time with the music anyway. I feel a little bit better about that. Audio is fine, says Danny, glad to hear it. I'll turn on my Spotify for now. I've got a good idea. Okay, then I want this to kind of like swirl around. Maybe these need to like pull down as that's happening. So it doesn't feel like it's all just one movement. What if we do that? Like it all pulls down to here or something. Maybe it's because I also like the color fading is just kind of reversing itself, so it looks a little strange. It needs some extra like oomph to happen once this hits it. So let's do, let's add on this top cylinder or top tier bottom cylinder. We'll do a little bounce that happens here. So it'll like shoot down and then back up when it gets hit by the ball. That might give it more impact. That might be a little too far down or it's just that it's too slow to get down there. Let's do like that. That feels better. A little more dynamic, you know? 
and maybe it like expands outward slightly in that time. So we'll do like a, like it looks like it gets squished slightly. And then back out here. That could be cool. That kind of works. I almost like how it looked before, I think. <clears throat> All right, cool. Let's move that. Da -da -da. I thought I could do like a flash or something there, maybe, but. That's right. All right, we're gonna have to start doing this, uh, like tilting over the top of the of the cylinder. That should be interesting. I'm kind of terrified for this transition, to be honest. I think it's gonna be pretty difficult, but we can figure it out. Without a doubt, we can do it. Da -da 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 -da. All right, what happens next? We're going to have it kind of like sway like this. Um, so I'm going to, well, this scale thing can stop once the scale is done. So we'll do another null on top of this. We'll call it uh, rotating. And we'll have it start here and in there. And it'll be scale is attached to it. And so is, what else? Is there anything down here that's not attached? That might get kind of weird if I attach the top. I probably should still though. Uh, so we'll do that. You ever considered getting motion three or flow plugins for After Effects? Uh, Noah has motion three, I think. I don't know that he has flow. Um, it doesn't, it just doesn't seem super necessary to me. Like I know what curves I want to use at this point. So it's pretty easy for me to just go in there and use ease copy, um, on a couple of them. Um, I'm not entirely sold on there being enough functionality for me, uh, to really speed things up by that much, if that makes sense. Uh, okay. Let's do, okay. This thing stays off of there and it's going to do like a, which way would make sense for it to, I feel like to the left first. Let's try that. So we're going to go left and then we'll go back to the right at like negative five and then back here again at two and then we'll settle at zero. And I'm going to start with that and then go so far, Overlord and Ease Copy are godsend plugins for me. Yeah, that's pretty much the only ones I use other than FX Console, uh, which is just what I'm doing to do control space. And then uh, it brings up a little search bar that I can use for effects. That's been super, super helpful rather than having to open up the effects panel every time I want to add something. All right, let's see what that looks like. It's got some interesting perspective on it, that's for sure. Oh, and then I can have the, oh, that's going to be so cool. I can have the gradient change as it's rotating. There's going to be so much like little uh, extra bits of, of animation goodness on here. It's going to be awesome. All right, so not colors, but start and end point. It's going to be from there to now. It should be straight still. It should always be flat. So now that's going to be like that. And then that one will be like this. And then back to the original. Whoops, can't even do the original anymore. Weird. Oh, is it just because both of those? Got it. Okay. That's fine by me. Then I'm just going to grab this same easing 
Uh, whoops, I need the start point that's here. And ease all that. And now it should be pretty adaptive. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It like actually matches the thing a little bit. Have you used Swiss knife script? I, I've never heard of that actually. What does it do? I assume it just does a bunch of things, um, but I haven't actually heard of it uh, specifically. Thank you. Our new, our new motion design intern just sent over a signed contract. I'm very excited. It does it a little bit too much right there. Oh, because it's just wrong. That's why. It's supposed to be flat every time. That's not flat either. It's just supposed to stay flat. Whoops. Da, 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 da. All right, it's accurate there, and then there. Okay, now we're good. Oh, that looks cool. We're getting somewhere now. It's just layering all these things on top of each other that makes it feel better. Cool. All right, and now I need to start doing this transition. So what we're gonna do is the ball is gonna stay in the center, but I need this thing to, okay, this top cylinder needs to, uh, where, which one, where does this one stop? All right, this needs to sit exactly on the edge of this thing. All right, there we go. It needs to sit exactly on the edge of there. And then I need this to happen we're gonna do okay, this does this sit on top of this yes okay and it's just going to be wherever that thing is it won't sit okay where does the scale on the on this thing end that's where we'll start this all right so we're gonna start there and then within 20 frames it'll be there we'll do it starts at zero Completely at zero. Now I'll do that. And we will do what influence? Let's do 65%. Uh, enable snapping. Oh, that would be helpful. You're so right. Uh, okay, here we go. All right, this is gonna work. It's gonna work, it's gonna be great. I'm very excited. All right, and then the ball now needs to be up above these, which is difficult. <laughs> okay, uh, let's have the ball be new up here. All right, and it'll need to rest where the center of this thing is gonna be. All right, which means the bottom cylinder, we need to do a path animation. It starts here, comes up like this. Where's the path? All right, here we go. Goes like this. I need to do it where there's actually not any rotation is what I have decided. All right, and then I just need to make sure that these match up. So we're gonna do this comes into here. This comes to there. Then this just moves up until they match. And that should be close enough, I think, and it'll just be gone after that point. Da -da 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 -da. I need to add like a little stroke to this thing so that you can tell that it's the, the top of it. Um, let's do stroke and just make it the white color and we'll have it be like one pixel wide.
And then I'll just need to change the lighting on the back of this as that's happening. All right, and then I need to figure out how to move the ball to be able to have it look like it's... Oh, it would just be a scale thing instead of a... Okay, so it's gonna have to move down to... It goes up there, and then it's down to... Where's the center? Uh, ooh, that's not even the middle of the screen. That's fine, I can fix that. It would need to be there, so 402. That's pretty cool looking. And then once it gets there, I can do some like scale things. So it'll be 10, or let's just do like 110. And then it comes down one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. It'll be back up to 105. And back down to 100. And then hopefully this makes it look like it's transitioning from bouncing up and down uh, from us looking straight at it to actually it bouncing from the top down. All right, let's see if that works. Did that do it? Kinda. There we go. It, I think it starts to bounce a little bit too low here for that to make sense. So I'm gonna have it go back up again. Get rid of the bottom right red part of the gradient. On the, oh yes, on the ball, that makes a lot of sense. I was trying to figure out what I would need to do to do that, or what I would need to do to the ball. Um, we'll figure that out. So let's do, where does it start? Path animation starts here. So we need our ball to have some color changes start happening there as well. So it's gonna start there, and then there will not be any more, won't be any more of this. And this will actually be a lot closer to the edge. It should just overall look brighter, I guess. And then put the easing on that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's super cool. Is that stroke enough? I think it might need to be two, two wide instead of one pixel to make it look like a change in perspective. Yeah, I'm with you. Right, there we go. And I think I need to actually change the overall, the, the background gradient as well, which is gonna be a little annoying considering how much I've already done with that, but that's fine. Uh, we're gonna go from there to, where does it stop? It's 20 frames after, so we'll do ba boom And then what'll happen here is the question. Also, I'm gonna have to mess with the gradient on the, I'm gonna have to mess with the gradient on all of those objects, I think, including this top cylinder, uh, but we'll figure it out. Uh, for now though, what would make sense? So right now we're seeing it and we've got the dark down here. So if we're now from the top down, we should just be seeing the dark, I think. I think that makes sense. We're looking at it down instead, right? Does that make sense? Or maybe it's just like way less than it is right now. Um, adding shadow under the ball when it transitions to the top would make it spicier. I think it definitely would. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. All right, uh, I think it's just gonna be the start and end point on this, honestly, uh, which means I need to grab the actual gradient so that I don't accidentally change every single thing. Uh, okay, so instead it's just gonna be like, it's just gonna be a little bit more neutral, I think.
a little darker. Nothing too crazy though. And then what was the rate at which this was changing? Is it like 65? Yes, okay, 65, I got it. We can make that happen. We'll do 65 and 65, and then I just have to change this thing over here. Colors need to be the same as they are here. So do these. Cool. All of that is still the same. We're good. Oh yeah, that works. That works great. And then I'm just going to need to change the direction. Because that gradient's not going to be exactly the same. So instead I will do uh, on this top cylinder, we're going to do a change to the gradient fill. Gradient fill, my favorite, my favorite guy. Here we go. Uh, we are going to have the, whoops. Why can I not see the, oh, the points are way over here. This is now going to be up there and this is going to be down here. Maybe it's actually even a little like less exaggerated over here. Where's the dot? Wow, that is the exact same color as the background. That's a little difficult to read. All right, uh, let's try that now. Ease those. Ooh, that does not, that does not work. Where would it have been before? Is it just like straight across? That's the problem. It's moving all the way from down here. So I will just have them stay there. One, two. And there we go. Does that work? That kind of makes sense. I It might still need the... It should still have the dark or the really bright part down here, I think. It's just like slightly angled instead. Cool. I think that looks awesome. And then we'll add that shadow as was suggested. Here we go. Uh, add a drop shadow. One, two. It'll only be once it's actually over top of this though. So like here is where that'll start. We'll have the opacity V0 here and ends once we're at the top. So that'll be like 25% opacity, maybe. Color is going to be the dark teal. Actually it might need to be the really dark teal. Cool. And then we will do a distance and size thing as well. So distance and size and angle should already be right. So that's nice. Move that down here and then like this. Okay, that should work, right? And it should just be a completely exponential decay, right? Oh, it, yeah, that should work perfectly. All right, here we go. Oh yeah. Cylinder should shrink with the bounces. Maybe. It, it gets tricky messing with that many things at once because it's hard to tell where the physics starts and stops. Um, oh yeah, and then I'll need that to be gone by the time it gets here. So I'll have opacity there and opacity there. That looks so cool. I should totally do perspective shift stuff more often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That looks great. 
I kind of want the... Oh yeah, that's what I need to do next. It was the actual gradient on this thing, uh, on the bottom cylinder itself. So, however, it's busy doing all of this stuff down here. So that gets a little difficult. Maybe it just like stops being influenced by the rotation there. And now it's actually just focused on messing with uh, the rotation that's needed as it's like changing the perspective. So it goes from there to there. What would be happening to it? This would be like, ooh, I'm realizing this is really, really far down there. So instead it would be like, this is up here and this is still down here, right? I think that's right. Use that and see what it looks like. That does not seem like the right easing at all. Oh, it's because I'm doing it way too fast. Ooh, maybe they need to get more spread out. Could that be it? I think that might have been part of it, because now it should be getting Darker, right? And it like kind of fades off now. That's all good. And then now I need to fix this position thing because it's like really far down here. Uh, so I'm going to do position on this just since I already have this null here. Actually, now nah, I'll, I'll make another null so it doesn't get confusing. Position. Uh, bring that there. This rotating one will get added to that. And now I need it to be in the center. Okay, so we'll start here. It's two down from this and where's the center here cool actually that's not even that's not even right there we go like that and then now we can do paste there now it should like slightly move up and then it's going to need to go back down <laughs> before popping up into this thing <coughs> so one two three four five maybe we'll like come down here before going one two three four five we'll bring that up to like there it'll have to shrink at the same time which is going to be a little complicated but oh well we'll make it work we'll do like 61 percent on either side i think i might have had that perfectly at the beginning oh well all right so it goes like this it like pulls it down. We'll have the the cylinder um, do some sort of like scale thing as that happens. So it gets like much, much larger. And then we'll come down to being like really small. Uh, we'll do a copy and paste on that. And that should work. Oh, I should have remembered that doing scale looks weird once you're mixing it with position. Whoops. So I'll just have it do this like turn down sort of thing uh, once it's over here. So we'll just do 100 here and that transition will still happen. It just starts there. And then maybe this like wrote or moves down slightly after so that there's some sort of delay. It like moves down here maybe and then follows it back up. Let's use those. Now there's just a little tiny bit of delay on it. 
Ooh, and then the ball's gonna have to do the same thing. Ball is gonna go two later on each of these. It's gonna slide down to the bottom of this. And it'll scale down as that happens too, I think. Uh, I just want these first two. Ease that. There's something else that needs to happen there. I just don't know what it is yet. Gosh, that part is so fast. Whew. All right, this needs to get much smaller. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make it like 50%. Nah, it's gotta be even smaller than that, right? I think it's down to like 25. And we'll do 61 or 62, that's fine. On the influence. Whoa, what happened there? Oh, it's because it's actually attached to it. I see. Well, we're done with that one. We're done with that null. Uh, no more of that. We're gonna have this be 25 as we had it before. It's like all the way down there, we're gonna have it up, up here. It'll be like slightly higher up. Uh, and we'll actually have it be above, uh, well, I'll have the tower base be above it, connecting lines below the tower base. And I want the connecting line up at the top. So we'll do, okay, this needs to be attached there. I'm gonna need to change the lighting on it again, which is fine, it's no big deal. Doesn't this end here? I don't even think I should need this after this point. Yeah, that ball will be gone. All right, and then we'll have the connecting line attached to the ball. I might just do like one big scale and push back in thing here. Ooh, maybe the lighting should change as it's moving down. That might help. Cool. Oh, the lighting on this scene just looks so good. Having those two separate light sources makes all the difference. All right, and we will have this tower base loosely attached to this as well. Ah, maybe, actually, I don't even, I don't think we're going to, because it'll just be up there, but it'll just like barely move by comparison to this thing. Oh yeah. Uh, is the anchor point of the top cylinder at the top, is that how you're doing that? Uh, anchor point of the top cylinder at the top. Uh, could you rephrase that? I'm not quite sure what you're, what you mean. Or like which, what's the that that you're asking about how I'm doing it? Ooh, and I should make this thing pop up from the bottom as well. Maybe this just like moves a lot less. 
Yeah, that's got more texture to it now. And then we'll have the rings attached to the ball as well. The ball is centered with the base of the cylinder, then it becomes offset when the transition is happening. Yes, that's true. This is not centered anymore. These rings gotta, gotta move. All right, which ones do we have here? We have uh, three and two and one. And I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna say that the opacity is 100 there and then it's toggled off there. And then we go to do, do I want like a bouncing ripple sort of thing? Cause that could be fun. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do starts at 100, goes up to like 150, and then comes all the way back down. Ooh, don't like that. We're not doing the bounce. We're just gonna have it get larger. I think, yeah, that's that's just too much. So we'll have it go from there to, and we'll start at like 50% of the size, I think. All right, we're through, we're about to be through three scenes within the first 30 minutes of animating-ish. That's a pretty good speed. We might even be able to make uh, five and a half hours or something if we, keep up this pace. This radar scene is going to be a bit of a pain though. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, uh, I need the scale and opacity, and then we'll have each of these show up one later, or two frames later. And so now it should go, oh yeah. All right, now I need one big, um, one big null over all of these. That is position two. And everything's gonna be attached to this, including these actually, I think. Uh, let me grab each thing that's not attached to a null and move it on up there. Cool. Oh. I guess this should also be attached to that. All right. And so we are going to have that move up there and then it's going to all move down as that happens. I need one of these rings to, or actually I need these rings to make up the rings that are on this. Uh, and then each of these lines from center can show up like two frames later, I think. But for now, I just need these rings. And then maybe the gradient spiral shows up later. And the dots definitely aren't there yet, but we'll figure that out. Uh, essentially, I'm just trying to decide if I want these to be attached to this or not. I don't think I do. Let's, let's have them be a separate thing. They get their own positional. Cool. All right, so now we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is going to pull this thing back down till the ball is what's in the center or about to be in the center. Which means we should probably not have it be seven frames. Oh, no, that works pretty well. Cool. And so now we can have this little center dot. Do I have this? Oh, it's just all on the ring thing. Okay, so we've got center. And then every other one is... Oh, nope, see, that's why I needed to check. So this will be four, three, two, and one. Bring those on over. Whoops, did not mean to put that inside of there. All right. And then we're gonna have our center do a little bounce thing. It's gonna be 
like that. And then uh, it could be larger and then come back down, but I feel like it's going to be the opposite where it gets smaller and then comes back up. But we will certainly find out when I try this, won't we? This definitely should be smaller. So we'll do like 50% that it comes back out of. And then that means we need the rings from this previous one to also come back in. So like one, two, three which is gonna be a little difficult, but that's fine. One, two. Ooh, it's actually only two, yikes. Uh, but we'll bring the scale back down. It's just gonna fly back in. So that actually is why, that's almost as wide as it should be actually, so that should work fine. And then we'll just have another one that just kind of shows up there. Um, that's fine. What about this one? This one should get smaller. Why did it move me all the way over there? See, now we're getting the song on the playlist from the Gunner uh, reel. All right, I would like for these to be at 100, please. Why did that not? Fine, I'll just do it for each of them, I guess. Whoops, I think I accidentally just, yeah. Gosh, I wish that they made it easier to be able to go in here and grab these. Uh, when you're doing multiple at a time. Alright, there we go. And so now it all comes back in. But you can't even really see it happening. Okay, now you can kind of see it. So we go... I'm really going to have to add some more stuff to this part. It's feeling pretty blank. Da, 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 da. All right, we will bring this down. Actually, that's probably gonna be way too much. Let's do 20. It's gonna end there. It'll be slightly raised as it comes in. What is that weird flicker that's happening here? It's not really that noticeable. I'll have to tour that later too. All right, and then each of these is going to show up. Uh, let's see, sure, this one can be first. It's gonna have offset paths and it's going to be going from negative 10 all the way to zero. That's probably way too much, actually. Da, da. What if we do like negative five? Does that still show up? Andrew says, wow, just popped in. Nice style frame, appreciate that. I'm glad to see you, Andrew. The next one is way cooler. This planet is looking dope. I love it. Very excited about it. We're gonna make some cool sonar things happen. It's gonna be great. What if we do like negative one? But too little? And then it like slowly comes in. I need this to not be showing up right now. Okay, it like slowly fades in, that works fine. Cool. 
and then we will just add this onto each one. So we're gonna do like every two frames or so. Actually, wait, that's probably way too, because there's so many of these. There's like 36 of them, I think. We will do one every other frame. Actually, no, just one every frame. And then 10 and 11, 12. 15, 16, 17, oh, there's 18, okay. Oh, because I did it one every, okay, I see. Why are these showing up early though? Some of these are visible at that size and some aren't for some reason. I'm not quite sure why that's happening. Oh, it's gonna look cool though. I'm gonna do it in a different way. I'm gonna do like a little bit of a bounce thing with these. What exactly is offset paths doing? So normally I would be doing trim paths on each of these to make them like draw out from the center, but I needed them to be fills so I could have one gradient going across the whole thing in Illustrator. So offset paths is, I, I like to imagine it like they're adding a stroke uh, to the inside or the outside of the shape and that stroke is acting like a mask. So if you have offset paths with a positive number on it, it will increase the overall like scale of the path. Uh, so it'll look like you have like a wider stroke essentially. Or uh, alternatively, if you have a negative one, it will bring the mask on the overall object slightly inward. So that way, uh, like for what it's doing right now, I'm essentially trying to make it act like the stroke width animator would. Um, but because they're not paths, I don't have the stroke width, obviously. Uh, so instead, what I'm going to do is it's going to start at a negative five or something just to make sure it's not visible. Then it's go, going to go up to like 10. That's pretty, that's actually too wide. We'll do like five maybe. So you can see positive number, it's making that actual shape larger. It's just expanding the path evenly. And then we'll go back down to zero. Cool. Drag that over. And now it should do like a little bounce thing. Yeah, that's more interesting. All right, and now we're gonna do, sure, these like first three can all show up at the same time. Then the next two, then the next one, or then the next two after that. Then one, 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 one. And then this one will be like two later, two later. That's actually probably way too long. What's that look like? Oh, that looks cool. That looks awesome. Which one's this? Oh, 15. And then another one at 16, 17, and 18. Cool. All right, let's watch it through. Woo, this one's gonna be good. <laughs> Yep, you already know. Alright, and we'll do a little animation with the rings here. So we'll have... Let's actually attach this and the rings to the background surface. And then we can do scale. We'll go like that. Uh, we'll go down to like... 90 and then all the way back up. Whoops. <laughs> Danny says, sheesh. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. I kind of want to spin the whole thing, but at the same time, I'm also like, ah, I don't really know. 
Whatever. Let's spin it. Why not? We'll do... Oh, it's because the lighting. It's because the lighting that I didn't want to spin it. But we're in a place where there's no, like, reference point for the lighting right now, so why not? Charlie says, so is the pillar rotating to face forward just a path animation? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, there is a... Okay, so there's... There's two paths. There's the original that's down here, which is just a rectangle with the bottom being rounded. And then I'm just bringing that rounded bit up towards the top um, as this ellipse on the top is expanding upward uh, or expanding vertically. So eventually at some point, this bottom curve will match this bottom curve and it just kind of falls into it. Oh, that looks good. Wow. Cool. And then let's see what this looks like if it rotates. Oh, it's got to rotate. That looks so cool. Woo. Nice. I love it. I was, I knew I was going to use this style for something. It just looks too good to not, I, it's so dramatic and, oh, so shiny looking. That is cool, says Charlie. I agree. It's pretty vibey. I'm enjoying it so far. All right, let's start making these pulses go around. So we'll do like a full rotation. Which way would it, does it go clockwise? Because in that case, I need to go in here and flip the gradient. Okay, that looks better or, or more natural anyway. Uh, let's have it do a full rotation in, I mean, that's only 10 frames, but they're supposed to be pretty quick, so. And then it'll like fade off the last few frames. So it'll go one, two, three, and down to zero. And what does that look like? It didn't even rotate. What? Oh, because it's on the gradient overlay. Duh. I need it to be... The opacity can stay there, but I need the actual rotation to be on this. Whoa. That is like... It's going so fast, it starts to look like it goes backwards. Which is strange. So it goes from there. Or is it rotating the opposite way? Oh, it's going the wrong way. Okay. I guess that makes sense. I did reverse the gradient. The rotation does make it more difficult to figure it out though. Uh, what if I change this to negative 180? So it only has to move half of the circle. then it is very obvious that it is only moving half the circle. Okay, what if I keep adding these though? So like now we'll just do it again here and do it again here and again here. Even though at that point it's already gone, but whatever. Uh, then the opacity is one, two, three and Oh wait, that means I need to do, okay, I see. One, two, three, four, 100, and then, okay, I gotta know. There we go, and one, two, three, there again. All right, let's see what that looks like. and then I'll just have it do the full thing instead. So we'll do, this is just straight up zero. This one as well. It's too much. MGMT electric feel a classic, that's right. It's too fast in that amount of time. It just doesn't work. Uh, we'll need to do, Okay, 
I need to rework the spins on this. So we'll do like negative 90 is what it starts at. So it's only moving 270. And we'll go to there, then to there, then to there. Actually, wait, I only need it to do it twice. What am I doing? Da, 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 da. What's this one need to be at now? So negative 90 again. All right, what's the halfway point between these? Two, three, four. So 40, 38, so uh, would be 19. So we got one, two, and then back one. We're good. Nice, which means now we can have it end here instead of there, which hopefully should alleviate some of that. It takes a really long time to fade off, though. It gets all the way over here. It's got to be like fading off almost the whole time, right? Yeah. All right. So it's got to be like one frame before it starts or one frame after it starts. Cool. And then that'll like extra, this red one will come on and flicker extra wherever that one is as that's happening. So I need red dot to actually be over here and show up here. So it's going to be, which isn't really that much time. Maybe I'll give it an extra two frames of lead, of lead time. Cool. And then we'll add deep glow to that. Uh, have it be like 0.5 or no, I'll just, I'll just up the saturation. That's what I need to do. Brush uh, hold, where are you at? Maybe I just make them non-shaded dots. Because it looks a little weird with the shading on it. Uh, let's just try doing a normal fill of that color. We'll put that over top of the gradient fill. That looks like more of what I would expect uh, on something like that. It's really orange. It's a very orange red. I did not notice that before. I'm just realizing I still have pasta over here. How convenient. Mm -mm -mm. There we go. That's much more of the true red, I think. Um, and we will do... Let's see how this works. So we'll do exposure there. And then like it gets down to 0.25, then back up to one. And then down to zero. Actually, wait, it should just keep flickering, right? Let's try that. What's that look like? And it'll be like, uh, let's see, starts there or gets down to there, originally happens here. <laughs> 
I shared the uh, I shared the playlist I'm listening to in the stream chat earlier. Happy to do that again though, if people want. have this get even larger once it gets to there. And then at here it'll be like five exposure or something ridiculous. Don't think my music taste would be suitable for this stream. <laughs> Andrew says, good stuff. Thanks for streaming these. I've got to run, but looking forward to watching later. Appreciate it. Glad you could come out for a sec. Maybe it's the opposite. Like maybe it starts at like 200% scale and comes down. Oh yeah, that looks much more like an alert of some kind. And I think that one will just be the one that's not shaded. The rest of them I can probably get by with having them be there. All right, now I just need to figure out where each of these shows up. So, which which one of these is which? We've got... Okay, so this one is one, then two. That actually should be accurate, I think. And then third... Nope. Okay, so this one is five. This one is three and that one's four that should work each time i think so now we've got blue dot one is there blue dot two actually why don't i just figure out what i'm gonna do with each of these once it appears uh so we'll get blue dot one it's gonna be one two three four five it's gonna scale down from 150, nope, 200% size. Tunji says, hi Austin, hi everyone. Hey Tunji, how you doing? Glad to see ya. Welcome to a wonderful Saturday stream that is going remarkably faster compared to what we had last time uh, on that lovely nine hour long stream. Okay, uh, let's do, it's 100% opacity there and zero there. And then we will have deep glow on top. Uh, we'll do like two. That sounds about right. Uh, and let's do exposure there is two and goes down to like 0.5 over time until eventually it's just fading off. We'll get uh, boom, one, two, three. Cool. And so now it should work. Maybe we have the exposure go from like that to zero, back up to two and then down. So it flickers a little bit. Maybe the opacity happens a little too slowly. Or it's just because it's just fading off instead of being uh, like kind of flickered off. So what if we try that? We'll do under to zero, back up to 25, and then to zero again. What's that look like? That's much better. Okay, so now we've got all these. The scale and opacity we can take and just copy paste. Where will it start again? Oh, it doesn't even start in the same spot. That's annoying. That's fine though. Uh, Cause it'll start like right here. Yep, there we go. And it only does it twice. So it should be good. And we'll see how that works. Oh yeah, this is gonna be, this is gonna be so cool.
Oh yeah, and I have that big line in the... Oh, but I don't have it in here. I have a big line in Illustrator that I meant to have like trace around the entire screen. I need to grab that. Um, let me do that really quickly. And there we go. All right, here's our giant line. It did not put it even close to the right spot, but that's fine. Not being picky this late into the stream. Uh, okay, here we go. Bring this on down here. Underneath everything else. Oh, wait, no, I want it to be above background surface. Cool. Um, oh, it has the anchor point in the right spot, though. Nope, it's because I have the wrong thing selected, that's why. Now it's got the anchor point in the right spot. Alright, so we've got uh, this thing rotates. It's going to start... Oh, this one is big line. Oh, it's also not even attached to the... Position three. There we go. I need to attach to the mill. Alright, this one's going to start... Here. At that spot. And then it's going to go here. Which is just uh, 270 more than it was before. Which is fine. Because I can do that. Uh, and then... Is that where it ended up? Or is it just because I don't have the easing right? What? That's not even where it went. I'm so confused. It's not even in the right spot though. <laughs> I might just not use it. It seems like just a little accent element that's not going to do much. Uh, can you explain how you made that gradient spiral again? I remember I made a sonar radar like this a while ago and used a repeater with like 5,000 copies. I got so many blue screens it was not lit. <laughs> uh, are you talking about the like uh, rotating gradient thing that happens each time? Or is there something else that you want me to touch on? Oh wait, yeah, I need to grab these. Okay, so scale. All right, this one's gonna happen there. Oh, we don't even get to those until the next one. I don't even need to have them start until here. And same with this one. Uh, you said yes, that one. Okay. Uh, so all that's happening there is I made us. I made a shape. It's just a circle with a, with some sort of fill on it. Uh, then I went and added the layer style gradient overlay. I changed the style of the gradient to angle, uh, which just already gives it that line. Like it gives you that sort of shape on the gradient. Uh, I went into the gradient and I added a 0% opacity stop at the top um, so that only these first few colors are shown as it like rotates around. And then all you gotta do from there is just uh, drag this angle back and forth and it makes it look like it's actually rotating and moving. Uh, so hopefully that helps. Charlie says, you know, it would be cool doing a stream where we all get given the color song an idea or a pitch for one of these and we have a time frame to make it in and we all submit what we made. I totally agree, Charlie, and so does Noah, uh, because we actually, well, earlier in the stream I was saying that, super exciting Revy news, we just got, we signed two contractors uh, to Revy. So now instead of just being me and Noah, there are four people on the core Revy team. Uh, one of them is starting next, or on Wednesday, and then the other one is starting on the Monday of the following week, uh, or no, two weeks from them. June 13th is when the other one is starting. And one of the roles is going to be working with us on lots of community oriented things, uh, figuring out how we can set up design challenges and all sorts of things like that. Um, 
and that could very well be something that we do for sure so um I'll, I'll take that into account we really really want to do some challenges and things i think it'll be pretty fun especially with uh some of the people on our freelancer list too i think it'd be fun um but we have we have all sorts of different ideas for how to get people involved so i think it'll it'll be pretty fun uh and it was something like hold on i'm responding to somebody really quick Uh, cool. Blob says, yo, that's going to be cool. I agree. I, I'm really, really excited for it. Uh, cool. <laughs> Let's keep on moving on then. I just got to add more to the... Oh, wait. The deep glow is not on this. Da, da. I'm going to be excited for that, says Lorenzo. I hope so. It'll be really fun. Everybody should definitely get involved. Da, 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 da. Turn you back into a stranger. And then there... And then same with these. Okay, this should work now. I'm excited. Oh, that's so cool. Wow, that looks awesome. Gosh, that scene goes by so fast, that little signal tower. It's gone so quick. And then what I'm going to do here is have, I want the little dot in the center to become the planet. So that's going to need to scale up, but everything else is going to need to scale back, which might be a little difficult, uh, but we'll figure, we'll figure that out. Uh, let's do, Oh wait, what if I add, cause that would be way easier. Mm, that gets tricky though. Uh, let me make a separate thing for this center dot. I'm going to delete everything else. Background gradient is transitioning so well too. It really blends well with the whole composition. Good, I'm glad. I was not super stoked about it at the beginning. Um, I wasn't really sure how well it was going to work. But good to... Glad to hear that. All right. Add that, and then now I should be able to do just one uh, scale everything but center. And then I can, okay, so this is gonna need to be on position. And everything else other than this center thing needs to now be attached to this. Uh, so it can go, one, let's just start from there and it will scale down to be way smaller. Is this, is that thing still attached to this for some reason? It is, why is that attached to this? Center dot is attached to, oh, I see, <clears throat> I see. Uh, okay, I'll just have it attached to position three, I think. Which means the gradients, nope, the gradient still works too. So then this should work fine now. Nice, we're good. I just had, it ex I had an extra little thing on there that I didn't notice. We'll bring that down to like 50. Actually, wait, how big is this planet? 
Yeah, that should work. Break it down to be like that small and the other one just has to meet that same that same level, that should work. So now we'll have center dot will scale up to match that same size and hopefully not get all weird. Uh, oh yeah, I must. Here we go. How does that work? I'm gonna need to add some anticipation for sure, but it should work. Oh yeah. Okay, so now we can have it be where uh, that's like that. It gets even smaller. It'll be down to like 25%. And then this guy will get even bigger before coming down. So it'll be like 125. Maybe not that much. That's a lot. Okay. And so now on this, I can do 65%-ish, 62%. Come on, there we go. Just that little extra like millimeter of my mouse movement. And then maybe move this over a tiny bit. So there's like some delay on some of this. Let's see what that looks like. My computer's gonna get upset for a second, but it'll be good. <laughs> so now it should have some, yeah, it's got some anticipation to it. Sweet. Cool. And then now I can delete that. Yo, pyong. Oh, except the red shows up a little too early now. It needs to happen here. So I need to go in this background thing. And then that needs to happen there instead. Oh, wait, no, it's. Moving from here to there, I see. Which means I need to have the gradient change on some of this stuff if it's gonna be backlit like that. So that gets kind of confusing, but that's fine. Uh, top, okay. So just for this last little bit of time down here, where does it start? It's there that it happens. Okay, so that means I need this background surface. I'm gonna do a, oh, I could just do a, mm, I could just do an overall, like pre-comp this whole thing and then do like a gradient overlay on that. That might be easier. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Here we go. We're going to say this is scene four. We've got that. Okay. And so now once that part happens, we can add our gradient overlay that will be radial. This part will be 0% opacity. We're gonna have, oh wait, no, it should be the other way around. Shouldn't it? It should be this part is 0% opacity and this part is 100%. There we go. And then it'll just be the red. I could I could just do an inner shadow. That would probably be easier. Let's remove that a little bit. What if we put it like 45, is that the lowest? Oh yeah, we're gonna have to do something different with that. Okay, how about this? And then up like that, how's that look? Uh, a little bit too much, I think. What if I have this as like the teal? And this part's like, uh, that doesn't really work either. It's just a little too much, I think. 
So we'll do like that. And then maybe it's the dark red instead, or just whatever the actual background color is. Let's do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's where it'll be. Opacity will be 100%. There, and one, two, three. Cool. Just to have it fade a little bit more into the back. All right. Ooh, maybe I'll have it rotate again as it's coming back down. Let me do that. Uh, where's the rotate? Is it this one? Oh, 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 I see. So that one goes from negative 134. Let's do rotate back to like negative 45. Noah Wild has entered the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Very cool. It might have to be a little bit more. Oh, there's elephant. How convenient. I'd have to do a little bit more than that. So like it whips a little harder that way. Oh, and that'll let me fill in that. Ooh, that's going to look really cool. It'll let me fill in this gradient down here uh, as well as like pop this orbit around here. Maybe. I don't know. We need the easy ease moon. Where's the, that's not the one I'm looking for. Where is the linear moon? There we go. All right. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm not answering that question though. <laughs> Actually, this is uh, this is Microsoft Paint that we're using right now. I thought I'd go back to my roots. We are getting there, everybody. I think I need this to be even brighter when it shows up. This red dot doesn't really do as much as I wish it would. It starts at one. Why don't we have it be like five instead? That's real bright. Not even bright. It's just very intense. Cool. Nice. Let's figure out what to do about this now, shall we? Let's figure out how to bring this in. So we've got our planet. The planet ring needs to get masked. I need to figure out what I'm going to do about that. Uh, it should just be whatever this bottom part is. So why don't I do planet mask. And then I'll delete everything except for the bottom thing here. I'll give it a normal fill. And this is going to be our actually ring mask. And I'm going to add a add a mask. Someone has subscribed just now. I'm waiting for it to show up. I need the mask. 
ask to be further down here. There we go. And now I should be able to do this attached to the planet, and then the ring will be alpha inverted mat on that. Did that work? Yes. Aha! Okay, now it's gone. Uh, Justin says, I know a question's for both you and Austin. Ooh. Regarding expanding Ruby's team, what are the most what are you most looking forward to about it? Anything you're nervous about? Whew. Uh there's a bunch of different things. Uh looking forward to is definitely having more time to spend on things that uh we'd like to be spending time on. Like, um and that's not even necessarily just saying like I'm excited that I won't have to do things anymore, uh, in some senses, but it's also like I'm excited for people to be able to do the things that Noah and I haven't been able to take the time to do, uh, like setting up more data-driven systems and, and that sort of thing, uh, all sorts of like financial and data modeling and that sort of stuff. Uh, that's exciting. Being able to take on projects that we might not have otherwise because we'll have extra hands that we know are there that can do it. I mean, we have a list of freelancers and we, we love working with our freelancers, but our freelancers work with a bunch of different people so it can be hard to know their schedule and and if a project comes up very last minute it can be hard to schedule it with a freelancer so we oftentimes just end up not taking it because we don't have the availability but having more people available that can do animation that aren't just me or noah uh is super helpful as well uh nervous is uh i mean there's there's a couple different we brought people on for two different roles. One is much more production focused, like producer type role, and the other one is going to be essentially built out to be another motion designer. And there's there's gonna be a good amount of buildup and onboarding for both of those roles and figuring out how we want to approach teaching those sorts of things. Uh, and I mean, we, Ravi's only been around for two years. Uh, Noah and I have only been in the design game for what feels like a blink of an eye so sometimes it feels like how do we know that we're going to be able to uh teach people correctly or or get our ideas across in the right way and that's i mean some of that's just imposter syndrome but um generally uh there's much more excitement than than any sort of nerves i i'm more excited to tackle those sorts of challenges than necessarily be uh fearful of them so I'm excited more than anything. I think it's going to be really, really great. And I think it's going to be one of those things that the second we start uh, having more people involved in Ruby, things are going to expand pretty pretty quickly. We never want to have a super huge team by any means. I I can't see us ever really having a team larger than 10 for a core Ruby team. Um, beyond that, it feels like people's roles just get too specialized to where I'm like, how do you even have enough to do to be able to fill up an entire workday when you're doing like one very specific niche thing. Um, so we're trying to have a couple people who can be more Swiss Army Knife types and, and handle um, a variety of things in the same way that Noah and I can, um, rather than only being able to do this one specific type of animation. And then if we don't have work for them, then we're just stuck paying uh, for them to sit there. We, we never want to waste anybody's time. So. I'm very excited for it. I think it's going to be great. That's a good point too, working with people that have more talent than we do, that's for sure. There's going to be a lot of things that we just can't do super well that the two people that we're bringing on can. So that's an exciting thing too, for sure. All right, uh, that mask works out well. I'll have the ring also attached to this planet. So when you rotate this thing, everything will stay aligned with it. And we will need to have, okay, everything's rotating that way. Let's have that follow through then. Let's have it start here, which I guess I should actually have everything be attached to this planet then at that point. Um, I'll have the explosion base, the easy ease moon, linear moon. Oh wait, I don't need that one. It's already parented to something. All of those can be attached to the planet and then it'll start like there and rotate out. And 
and follow through. I mean, it works. I'm definitely gonna have to update the lighting and stuff, I think, but. Actually, I should probably take like the whole time for it to finish that. Uh, see, now that's too short. I want just like a little bit more on that. I need some more follow through. <laughs> That's all right. Justin says great answers. Thank you. Of course. Favorite AE keyboard shortcuts that people might not know. Uh, I forever spent time just sitting there tapping page down one by one on my keyboard to move over a frame um but you can do shift page down or page up and move forward or backwards by 10 frames which is much more helpful um so that's been good what else uh i don't know see at this point i've been doing it for so long i don't really realize when i'm using them <laughs> Um, so there might be some stuff that wouldn't be super well known that I just am taking for granted all the time. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it as I'm working and see if any come up. Fresh Arts says, looking good, Austin. Thank you, Fresh Arts. Much appreciated. Glad, glad to see you back here again. Page down. Wow. Indeed. Page down moves you one frame forward. And if you hold down shift, moves you 10 frames forward. Page up does the opposite. It just moves backwards. Uh, let's do something with this ring, I guess. Like this direction. So it does a little bit of overshoot. And then the actual planet itself, I want to have do a little bit of a bounce. Ooh, which means that this is going to get messed up. This ring mask is going to get screwed. <laughs> huh. That's a tricky one. Wait a second. Why is... I see the problem now. Okay, so if I change the rotation on this... It's going to accidentally get cut off by that mask that I have. So I have a very limited window in which I can rotate this thing. I can do it only that way. Basically, I can only do it uh, counterclockwise. I do notice that you split layers to adjust the length rather than with the traditional Alt Plus. Definitely a lot faster your way since you always have to adjust the end length with the traditional method. Pressing tab to go around compositions is also good. Oh yeah, the flowchart. I don't find myself using that very often, honestly. Um, but it's, I mean, it's gotta be useful for sure. What does, oh, alt plus bracket. That is, see, I didn't even know that one existed. Uh, alt and then either bracket will just cut it off where it is. Or wait, is that true? I feel like... Or no, usually what I'll do is just bring it to the, like I'll bring the layer head to uh, wherever I need it to go and then I'll just chop off the rest. Um, which I guess doesn't look as pretty, but definitely is faster, I think, to just be able to cut it off and delete it. Um, let's see what this looks like. Ooh, that's some interesting easing on that. That looks kind of cool. Uh, let's see. So that goes negative 51. Let's do like negative 25 instead. So it doesn't do it. It's still like kind of slower. Like that does feel a little more interesting now, but anyway. 
I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do this like scaling up thing now. Oh wait, why don't I just have everything scale backwards? Uh, except the other part that's like moving up is making it difficult to make that transition work. What if I do like the ring itself gets slightly larger, like that scales up to match that one? Oh, but now because I have it actually cut off, it messes it up. Ooh, yikes. Uh, thanks, Noah. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, Let's see, Justin says alt, alt bracket is still good at the beginning if you need to trim 50 plus layers to begin at the same point. Absolutely. That kind of works. And then I'll just do like a stroke width thing on this as well. Stroke width, whoops, I misspelled that, that's fine. Let's go up here and say it gets to be like eight stroke at the highest. That should work. Oh yeah, now it's got a bit of both. Now I just need to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do with this like trail thing. Does it just like appear there and then the other trail, the actual missile is like following along there? I don't know, let me add some deep glow to this guy. Ooh, that's gonna look cool and I can have it do like a like sort of flicker on the, on the deep glow. I think that'll look good. All right, missile path. You're gonna have a stroke width thing on you as well. And it's just going to go like over time, that one will just appear. So everything's gonna come in, and then that guy just kinda shows up. Actually, I'll do like a little, I'll do like a little targeting thing. So we'll get uh, a little circle that shows up around this thing maybe, and then, so it'll just like flash over top of it. That might look cool. So that it shows like, oh, we found it. We found the thing that was on the radar. Uh, let me make that really, really quick in Illustrator. Give me just a second. And it'll be the same as that. And we'll bring it back to After Effects. And we're already back. Look at that, so speedy. And we'll call this Finder, and it'll be attached to Millennial Moon 2. I think it makes sense for it to be like, doo -doo, like right there is where it'll be. So we'll do uh, opacity down to like 25, then back up to 100, then to zero. And it'll be like one, two, three, four, starting at 75% and increasing. Honestly, that's not even that noticeable. What if I just don't add the scale on it? Nope, I think instead I just won't have the flicker, actually. Da, 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 da. Mm. 
Mm, it's not really doing what I want it to. Uh, yo, is Deep Glow a default effect is what someone said. No, <laughs> definitely not. Um, it is a plugin that costs, I think, $40, maybe something like that. Uh, but in my opinion, is absolutely worth it. Worth every penny. It needs to get hit by here, so I'll have it go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 is where we'll have the actual missile show up. Missile path can be there. Except let's have it show up like here. What does threshold do for the deep glow effect settings? It will change how tolerant, like if I had deep glow set with a 0% threshold, it'll apply deep glow to every single pixel that's there, even the darkest ones. So if I up the threshold, say to like uh, 10 per, or 90%, it's only going to show the pixels that are brighter. Uh, they're in the like top 10% brightness of the, uh, of the overall thing that's being deep glowed. I don't know. Um, so it'll only apply it to like the brightest whites on that for reference. Not surprised, but damn, that's definitely a good plugin. Oh, absolutely. I use it all the time. Would highly recommend. I'll do some flashes here. It'll start there. Go down to zero, up to 50, down to zero, and back up to 100. Cool. And then like here, it'll actually start moving. And then we're gonna have to figure out how to do this explosion. Oh boy. This is gonna be a doozy. Why is that in front of the moon like the actual path is oh no it was just because i was moving that across there i see okay my bad all right here we go that is way too fast uh we're gonna have that show up here alongside the other stuff because <laughs> that's just ridiculous. I think I want it to show up even earlier than that, like here. And then just have the actual path show up later. And I think I'll just do the same stroke width animation that I did to this one on the binder as well. I'm not really liking the scale animation all that much. Whoops. Stroke width. Content. Deep glow flicker is a lovely touch. It's, it's a good one. For sure. Actually, I'm gonna have it keep flickering throughout. I think it'll be like to, but it'll be very, very small. It, it won't really be all that noticeable. And then down to like 90, back up to 100, and then we'll just copy paste those. Just so it doesn't feel so uniform. Actually, that's that might be too little. But if I go down to like 80 here or something. That's 100 to, let's do like 75. Can't wait for the shocked heat frames. I'm very excited. I keep forgetting that they're there. It's gonna be super fun. We'll go down to like 65 here.
And then I'll have the trail like start to move away here. So I'll do a trim path and then have the start point go from here to like halfway. That's cool. I think that'll be fun. They go feel, they go feel, they go town. That might be too much. Like just too much too fast. What if I do, uh, it only goes like 30% of the way. But it like starts all the way back there. And then there'll be a big flash here once this happens. So I'll go ahead and add that over top. Uh, what am I looking for? I need a solid. Uh, we'll have it be this color to start with, but I'll just add a colorama, not colorama, color overlay to it. We'll do color overlay. It's going to start as that color. And then I'll make that a hold keyframe. It's going to turn into the red. And then the teal, actually not, not that bright of the teal though, like that one. And then we'll be at 0% opacity after this on that. Oh, I just meant on like the overall thing, <laughs> we'll be at zero opacity, not just the effect. There we go. And so now when the moon gets hit, we've got a cool like color filled flash thing which just means that I need the actual explosions and things to be happening after that point. And this finder can be gone by that point too. What song is this? Huh, I haven't heard it in forever. All right, here we go. Oh, jeez. All right, now I need to do some animation on the gradients on the actual planet to add some little bits of oomph to it. And I'll do a little bit of rotation on the moon as it comes around. That like barely even moved. That's so fun. Should it be the other way though? It should be like positive two. Cool. This is fun. Is your mind? Uh, we can do a little bit of animation to this like shadow thing over the top here, but I don't think it's really all that necessary. All right, so it'll be like starting up here and there just won't be any shadow on it or something. Yeah, and then it'll eventually become shadowed. Cool. And then I will do like a slight, it's like sliding away uh, for this gradient here. Here we go. So it'll actually be like here and then we'll push over and we'll see how that looks. Ooh, maybe the other way around like it should be the dark part here and the red 
It's so slow though. I need it to be like here, I think. How far away is that thing? Maybe it just doesn't need to be that far. <laughs> there we go. And then I'll do the I'll do something with the actual main gradient as well. Start point endpoint. And then what should it look like at the very beginning? There's hardly any teal in the actual thing at the beginning. So how about that is how it looks here as well. Ooh, and I want the gradient to move around the ring too. All right, planet ring. We're gonna do something with this. Is it just called like offset? What would I use for this? Gradient stroke. Ah, oh, cause it's just the start and end point again. I, it's not exactly what I was thinking. That's fine though. Uh, let's have it end where it is now, but it will start, it'll just be like flipped. There we go. Not exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> uh, maybe it's just like stretched across the whole thing. Wow, it looks so weird. And it's not, the easing isn't messed up either. It just looks really strange. Maybe it's because they have these crossing at some point. I don't know. Okay. Seems like it should work now. Oh, did I accidentally move all of it? I did. Whoops. All right. How about now? Oh, that looks cool. That last little bit that like comes over the edge. Ooh. A good song. Okay, and then once it gets hit, I need everything to be uh, like pulling over <laughs> to this. This looks ridiculous. These little dudes with faces on them, they look so ridiculous. <laughs> uh, the shine on the planet looks so good. I'm glad to hear that. I don't know how we're going to make these little dudes with faces look good, but... You can bet I'm going to try. Alright. What's your PC specs? Uh, GTX 1660 Super for my graphics card, 32 gigs of RAM, and a, a Ryzen 5 3600 for my CPU. All right. Uh, I need to mess with the opacity of these. Whoops. What are all of these? Okay, then all of these will be at 25%. And these will be at 40%. And this one will be at 65. Yeah, that'll do. No way, this is live. This is live. Very true. 
We are out here. Making some lovely gradients. We are about to hit the six hour mark, which is really frustrating because I was hoping to be able to get this one done faster than that, but we did take like a 30 minute to an hour break to look through some old stuff and find some references and things. So I'm okay with that. We'll still make it within good time. Why is your AE fast compared to mine? I use the same specs except for the GPU. Uh, well, depending on what your GPU is, I don't know. Is your What's your GPU? Because that might have more to do with it than you're thinking. Uh, but otherwise, I'm really only using shapes. Uh, it's There's not really a whole lot that's happening here um, from like a, a computation standpoint. Um, and I'm using gradient fills rather than gradient overlays for most things because like layer styles typically take up more processing power and stuff. Um, Italo says, uh, you're a legend for doing this, by the way. I appreciate the content you're producing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Justin says, never even occurred to me to use multi-point gradients to imitate light shining on an object. It's uh, it's a really good way to do it. It, it looks really cool. And because then you can actually, you can animate the gradient to do it and... Remember to take breaks. Don't want you to get burnt out from doing these live streams. Hee <laughs> hee. I shan't get burnt out. Don't worry. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Uh, I need all of these to zoom out. So I'm going to do a zoom out. And we're going to have it start like, sure, back here. That's fine. Uh, and everything that's not attached to something is going to get attached <laughs> to this. Uh, old GPU RX 580, four gigabyte. Uh, let's find out what how much VRAM mine has, because that could be part of it. Uh, QWERTY says, damn, I missed most of the stream. I didn't get notified, unfortunately. No worries, they will be up uh, after the stream is over on the YouTube channel. Uh, let's see. What? That can't be right. Uh, my VRAM is, is six gigs, so that might be part of the reason why, but I don't know. Um, not sure. All right, and then it'll be down to like here with all of these keyframes being actually like, hold on, I need to do something with these. So we'll say, background, linears, each of these gets attached to this. This gets attached to zoom out, which is now way up here. And once we get past this scene and the pre and like any little things I need to do on the previous scene, it, it's smooth sailing. Like, I mean, this last scene seven is, is not gonna take any time at all. The sizing on that is is good, I think. I'm happy with that. Whoops, I meant to just move that over. There we go. All right, now I just need this to come in like 71% and 71% there. What's that look like? Let's bring that over. These guys need to be coming in as the other ones are moving down. I'll do like to here. And other than that, it'll start at like 600 something. That does not work nearly as much as I wanted to. Uh, Danny says, I have 24 gigs of VRAM on my GPU, but I feel like my A is still dog water. Honestly, don't feel like GPU makes much of a difference for that program. I, I mean, it depends on what you're doing for sure. There are some more GPU intensive uh, activities and things you could be doing, but um, yeah. Not, not entirely sure.
What if I just already have this be like way smaller here instead of like it's just going to be an exponential decay instead. I think that might help things. I'll have the planet rotate after this. Uh, we'll do, well, let's not attach that to the planet anymore. Uh, which one are these on? 10 linear moon. Oh yeah, emptying your cache is super important too. Um, that's for sure. Planet. Can rotate a good amount, like oh, I shouldn't have had that rotate yet. Um, let's do all right, fine. This will be attached to that. I don't think it should rotate, actually. Let me just remove that. I'm not liking the zoom on this at all. Always forget I clear it when it gets full. That might be part of it. Also the footage I work with. Oh yeah, I'm not working with any sort of footage or anything really either. Um, also I'm doing usually 1080p. I mean, this is only 1080 by 1920. I'm not working in 4K or anything like that. Uh, let's not have that zoom out. I'll just call this zoom. It'll be gone by that point. There we go. And then this thing, I won't have uh, anything on for now either. All right, we're gonna have it move up. So it's gonna go like this. And then it's gonna go back down. To like 50. And we will see if that helps at all. We'll do like 60. Is that like 70%? That's fine. Maybe I just don't have everything attached to this giant null at the front. That might be helpful. Um, like this thing is its own zoom that's happening. So we'll have this slowly zoom out. We'll go from here to here. It'll go down to like 50%. But we'll only have all the other stuff come in once that uh, motion has reached its peak. So now I'll add one here drag this over and that's where all of these will show up. So it'll be like this. That feels a little better. Ooh, except this stops very suddenly. Why does this stop so suddenly? It's attached to the, everything's attached to this. It should be way more at ease than that. What? <laughs> what is going on with this? And then we need 
need our easy eased moon to have some deep glow on it so that it sticks out. I'm gonna add some hue and saturation, bring that up. And I'll add some rotation on it. Where do I want it to go? Yeah, okay. We'll do like that amount, maybe. Oh, this is also rotating with that. I see. So I should only do this on there. Contents. And then do that on here instead. All right. And then I need everything to slide down. So that one goes there, then we've got background linears. Everything will get attached to this thing. Actually, wait, those are all scale. I can just have them be separate. So I'll do position here and position here. It'll have to move all the way down to there. But these background guys don't have to move nearly as much. So we can get some lovely parallax. This looks so ridiculous. All right, let's make this explosion thing happen. Uh, how do I want to do this? It's going to be a lot of layer styles, I bet. So let's do a stroke around it. It'll be the white color, I guess. And then we'll do no fill opacity. And is there a way to do a? No, I can't do a gradient stroke on that. That's annoying. Um, I will add an inner glow, which will be, I can do a gradient. I don't think it's going to look great though. Is it just whatever this thing is? Yeah. Okay. So let's do the white to the blue to the red, which I can't see right now. White to the blue to the red. And then to the dark red. That doesn't look great. <laughs> Uh, how did I do it in the other project? I really don't remember. But also, that's probably not what I should be asking anyway. I should be figuring out what would work well with the style. Huh. Let me let me look at a reference really quick. Vimeo. I'm watching my own video for reference. <laughs> And you we'll were see. right. Ooh, that's loud. All right, so it's okay. So it's just like a circle that already looks like that. I see. Okay, I don't need to do anything with layer styles then. Um, in fact, I will delete both of those, and we will bring the fill back to one hundred percent. 
I'm going to add a gradient fill, put it in the first group, delete the other fill that was there. We're going to do a radial gradient. Uh, it's going to stretch to the outside of the whole thing. We're going to have the center be the dark part. How often do you clear your cache? Once I start realizing things get slow. Uh, so, I mean, depends. Like right now my cache is probably full, but everything's working fine. So I just haven't changed it. Uh, let's have this be there. And then this will start at the white. Then jump into the, which actually that seems like it might be too little. Let's do the teal. I want like just a little bit of that glow though. And then what I'm going to do is add deep glow to the whole thing, which actually means I might, I might not even want to do the white that's on here. What if I do the red or the teal? I don't know. just too it's too stark i really had it right in the other one that i did like even that's too bright and that's just too orange <laughs> okay now we're getting somewhere dead in the water that looks pretty cool and then just scale that down. It'll start like there. 800 gigabytes of uncleared cache? Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll do it. Yikes. That's so much. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's so much cache. That's crazy. Yeah, After Effects is probably <laughs> gasping for air after sitting into that for so long. It should probably already be kind of large by the time it gets there. And then I'll need to do like a flicker off. Go down to zero there, to 25, to zero, to 100. Auto clear after a certain amount. <laughs> 800 gigabytes is nuts. I don't even know how you were working in it if it was that huge. That's just too much. I need to hue shift this slightly so it's closer to our our reds that we're actually using. Ooh, and then I can do a gradient overlay over the whole thing. That looks cool. Uh, that can actually encompass all of the different colors I wanted to use. So I'll do the white and then the blue, the dark red, then the red. That looks so cool. Maybe I'll do the teal instead of that. Ooh, that looks kind of fun. And then what if I just set it to hue instead? Whoa, Deep Glow doesn't like that. <laughs> All right, and now we will do, uh, what am I looking for? We're gonna add a turbulent displace, which is gonna make this real wonky looking. No more deep glow, no more human saturation. Okay, we need to do vertical displacement at like pretty small size. So it's got like, it's kind of wavy a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to keyframe that as well as the amount and the size 
and then every two or so, we will edit those. So let's now do like horizontal and then cross displacement. And then uh, we could just do normal turbulent there and then back to horizontal. And then here we'll have it change to where like the size is, uh, the size could probably stay the same, but like the amount is more. And then the amount is a lot less when it gets to the cross one because that's just a little too much, I think. But once we put all this together, it should look like it's all explodey. What do I need to do to this to make it look right? Move the gradients? Sure. That's what I'm thinking would work well. Angle is there. We can start it like here instead. And then maybe there's another one that like sits on top of this that doesn't have any of this stuff on it. No turbulent displace, no nothing. Uh, just has a single gradient stroke, or just a single stroke actually, that is this color. That's just the straight up white. Except why is it not, hmm. Why is it not showing? Because the layer style is on it, that's why. I see. I think. Why? Why is it not showing? I don't understand. It's right here. Does it need to be larger? No? It's just not showing it for some reason. The stroke underneath the path, that's why. Okay. And so now we've got like the little wavy bits that come off of it, but we've got the part that makes sense with the missile that was there. All right, here we go. Arimani's back. Welcome back. It's going well. We are so close to being done. I'm trying to finish within the seven hour mark. I still have to add other stuff to that scene. Oh man. Sheesh. That looks so cool. I'm glad to hear it. Because <laughs> some of these parts have been a real pain. goofy looking things back here oh man these look so nuts all right we're gonna have them rotate slightly as they come in oh man it'll end there and have moved like the tiniest bit how does the 3D transition of the platform happen? I will show you that in just a second, uh, but to keep it short, path animation uh, is key there. Yeah. 
If the white line thickness of the outer line matches that of the planet in opacity and thickness, then it will match, I guess. White line thickness of the outer line matches that of the planet in opacity and thickness, then it will match, I guess. I think I understand what you're saying. See, now I can tell my cache is full because my frames aren't loading. Yep, 46 gigs. There we go. Bubble burst happens when the planet's moon, moon hits the keyframe bubble. The keyframe bubble. Oh, I see what you're saying. Instead of it hitting there, that makes sense. Uh, let me Let me change that. Offset is to here here instead all right there we go to the thickness of the outer line matches that of the planet in opacity the opacity thing's difficult because it doesn't like this ring isn't glowing uh which maybe that's the problem maybe this needs to glow Except it'll only glow within the bounds of that thing, which is a little difficult. Um, yeah, no more glow on that one. It's just going to be on these parts. <laughs> yeah, Marcus, my man is still going. Big respect to you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I don't want it to be another super long one, but I want it to look good also, so... If it happens, it happens, I guess. I did take time to look through old videos and stuff, so it's kind of my fault, but... Try moving the pyramid on the top right to the center so it can be match cut for the next scene with the cube. Pyramid on the top right to the center so it can be match cut. Oh, 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 uh, the match cut will work fine because this this cube is actually going to start off as a ball. Howdy, Ben. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. We are almost seven hours into this thing, <laughs> so glad you could make it. Making cool stuff. That's the plan. And trying to figure out what else to do on that? Honestly, I don't even think it's going to need anything else. But I do want to do some animation with these guys and they're like shock. They, I need them to look shocked like this other linear keyframe that was here just got blasted by this other thing. And they're like, uh, OK, what's going to happen with this? Um, maybe I'll do the rest of the like overarching motion and then come back and do these things. But we'll see. <laughs> Hope you're having a lovely, is it? It's Sunday for you, right, Ben? I think, I think it's already Sunday. Time traveler. Very impressive. <laughs> Justin says, who is Ben? He has a box around his name. Uh, ben Marriott is a uh, lovely After Effects uh, tutorial creator on YouTube, uh, who also has a couple courses that he runs, uh, makes all sorts of really, really helpful educational content to help people better understand After Effects and motion design in general. Um, but yeah, definitely check him out if you haven't already. I'd be very surprised if you hadn't heard of his tutorials and things yet, but um, anyway. Let's get this thing rolling. 9 a.m. Sunday. <laughs> Started this at 1 p.m. on a Saturday, and we're already into Sunday for some people. Very cool. This is shorter than the last one, though, and that's with like an hour of looking through three-year-old projects when I started motion design. So very sunny here. You have <laughs> you have it to look forward to in the past. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. All right, let's add some round corners to this thing, so it acts like it's a circle, even though it's not. There we go. Look at that. Incredible. 
and then it'll turn into a square on its next bounce down. So we're gonna have it go one, two, and fall down onto this. And then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and bounce up into the air. We're gonna have it come down again, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, back up into the air again, except this time it's going to turn into a square. Uh, we'll have it come back down, one, two, three. We're just gonna keep doing this bouncing sequence until we reach the end. Uh, okay, and that actually should be, let me make this one just slightly faster and we should be able to get to the center of the screen. There we go. We're gonna have that be like that and then we're just gonna have a bunch of exponential growth and decays. Uh, thanks for that very kind bio. Of course, of course, of course. You are helping lots of people. I, uh, I really appreciate it. Cool. All right, so now we got that ending needs to be a full exponential growth curve. Cool, and that's good for the general bounce anyway, and I just need it to turn into the square on this next one, so it goes bounce one, bounce two, and now we'll turn into a square here. So I'm gonna go into the round corners that I added and bring that up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it'll be at zero around here. I'll have to mess with the gradient too, so that it fits a, uh, fits a square. But we should have ball, ball, square. Okay, cool. I think it might be too short. I'm gonna need higher bounces, I think. Um, so this jumps in from here. Let's have it do like all the way up to here instead. And then it comes down. And then we get to the center. Kinda. Come back down, back up and then come back down to the middle. It's the pacing that gets thrown off at that last one, I think. So why don't we move all of these over one frame and then give that a little bit more time to breathe. What did I have over here? And the original bounce. Was I doing fives in between or was it more? No, that was fives as well. It's just because it actually gets shorter that it looks a little strange here. I'll have to do some like overarching nulls and zooms and things to cover that up a little bit, but it should be fine. All right, uh, I need to change the gradient. Mm -mm -mm. We'll do. Ooh, can't change that, so we'll have to do start and end points going there. And then we'll have that go, whoops. Have it start or end up here like that. And then I'll actually add some like little flips and rotations and stuff uh, on these bounces once it becomes a square. So we've got that there comes back down. Actually, I gotta have it start one here so I can do a rotation keyframe. It will spin 90 degrees. I'll, I'll make sure the gradient follows the lighting still though. I have to be, be careful about that. Uh, Justin says, oh, that's cool. I've been Sunday here too in the UK, which means I should go to bed soon. <laughs> oh yeah, wow, it's probably pretty late, pretty late for people at this point. How is it already 7.30 p.m.? Started at 1 p.m. This whole day has just been <laughs> on stream, which is cool. I mean, getting a lot done. And then I'll do another, another negative 90 that way. But now I should have a little bit of extra personality with each of these. just bounces too much. What if I do, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna scrap some of these. 
and come back to it with less bounces. So how about it comes down, does that first bounce, and then it'll just do one more bounce. It doesn't need to come back down again here. Let's do that. Uh, Lorenzo says, good thing about YouTube streaming, you can always scrub back the progress bar on like Twitch, you have to wait for the whole video to finish. Yeah, I. Uh, that's another one of the reasons I chose YouTube over Twitch. Um, is I, I figured people would be coming in at all sorts of different times. Given it makes it a little bit difficult to chat uh, or send messages in the chat and have them responded to if you're like an hour back from where the actual video is. But uh, still, they should invent that though. Time traveling comments so that I can see them before you've even shown up on the stream. That'd be cool. I'm sure someone, I'm sure some engineer at YouTube can figure that out, no problem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do sevens instead. And then down on fours. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Excuse me. And one, two, three, four. Oh, so close. We're so close. What if I do... There we go. Okay, that should be good now. And now I just do one of those rotations. Once it turns into a box, which Sorry, I don't know that I was not talking to you, Alexa, but she wanted to make sure that I knew that she didn't know that. Whatever I said, what would, what would I have said that would have sounded like that? I don't know. She just likes to keep me company during streams, I guess. <clears throat> All right. So when does this new bounce happen? We go here. Bounce happens here. So therefore the radius needs to be here. Start and end point also needs to happen there. And then we can do a, ray, a rotational thing here. Move on up to like negative 90. And we'll do an exponential decay. Move that over and what do we got now? That feels much more manageable, though I'm definitely going to have it do a clockwise rotation because it feels a little strange. And then I'll just have to change the start and end point to actually be up here instead. Uh, where is my... there we go. And then we'll have to add some extra little like squashes and stretches and stuff in here for sure. But beyond that, uh, we're looking pretty good. I want to do like this square expanding out as it comes down. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five. And then to here, we will have it be like this much wider or something. Um, so that way we can match cut to our, our text, uh, sort of like squishing out from the center. I need this thing to move away by the time that happens though, so... Where is the last time that this does a bounce? Here? So we can have it start moving down and away by that point. We can do an exponential growth. Oh yeah, that should work great now. And so now we'll add some deep glow to this thing. We'll do like a thousand with 0.2 maybe, something like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change the gradient overlay that's on this um, so we don't have that dark spot in the center. Let's just do another, another bright point. It looks kind of like one of those uh, those rocket pops. You know what I'm talking about? The red, white, and blue popsicles. That is absolutely what it looks like. It might get too wide, honestly, but we'll we'll try it out. I'll do some tracking, which means I need... Uh, let's have it get a little bit wider. Whoops. I've got it set to being left aligned. We want it centered. And then 
Bring that on over. One, two, with the tracking amount starting at like negative eight, negative nine ish. The song that's playing right now has a good uh, lyric video on it or, or with it that uh, I think inspired a good amount of some gradient shenanigans I've been up to. And then maybe just like an overall scaling up of the text, I think. We'll start it at this size and then have it be like that much larger by the end of it. That's a little too much, I think. We're going to go from like 100 to 110, maybe. It's tracking just spacing between letters. That's what essentially what it is uh, for for these type layers, yeah. Um, it's also known as kerning and, and a couple other different terms. Um, but for the purposes of just the type animators and After Effects, that's essentially what it is. Just the space in between letters. Do I want this to like bounce slightly? Like it's just barely moving down and then comes back up? Da -da 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 -ba -da 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 all right. Not quite how I want it yet, but we'll get there. And then I'm going to do a ooh, stroke might be a little bit difficult. Uh, stroke width character panel. There we go. OK, uh, I want it to look like it's going from bold text to thin text. So I'm going to have it start real Real squishy looking. That feels a little better now. Maybe what I'll do is just have, uh, maybe instead it'll be like a zooming out null over the entirety of this thing. Uh, let's see. So we'll do another one called zoom. Too, just so it doesn't get confused with any of the ones we had previous. Move that. Both of these will be attached to it. And then what do we got? We'll just have this pull back slightly, I think. So we'll do scale there to there, maybe. I don't know how that's going to work with what we just set up on the actual text, but it should work all right. anything, I think this means I can move this further down, though. This little platform that's down here. We can do, like, starting pretty small, and then it gets up to that amount, maybe? So we'll, like, start here. And maybe it'll add some interesting bits to it. We'll see. Uh, position is there. Okay, I need this to move a little bit once it gets tapped the first time. So we'll do this, move it down here, and then it'll just move up, move back up to where it was. That's convenient. Maybe a little bit longer. It might just be moving down too much. Is that what's happening? 
or not enough, actually. That could be it. Maybe it'll look better when I'm not so focused on that one little tiny scene. Yeah, that doesn't quite work. Um, hmm. It's just like slightly too far afterwards. That feels a little bit better, but not very much. This is really just a bunch of trial and error. <laughs> da, da, da. Yeah, some of those are so satisfying though. But that part just feels a little strange. Is this week's uh, music from Artlist or from Lewis? Uh, this is from Artlist. Uh, for those of you that were here last week, you'll recall that uh, a lovely sound designer named Lewis Weeks uh, went ahead and made a custom soundtrack for me uh, for me to use for last week's. Uh, you should definitely check that one out if you haven't. I thought it was really, really cool. Um, but anyway, yeah, this one is just from Artlist. It's just like barely too far after. I'm also going to turn the music off for a second because there's just too many sounds happening at once. <laughs> da, 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 da. It's just not quite there. One, two, and then it should be going down like there, but it just doesn't feel right. It's like it sticks for a second. Uh, a second longer than it should. Was that it? Was it because it was... Ooh, that like shorter pull down definitely feels a lot better though. What if the rectangle breaks into six small pieces, flickers to become wander? Whoo, that sounds like three more hours of work than I have. <laughs> uh, but it would be, it would be cool. And as much as I'd like to have another one of those breaks in one of these videos, uh, I gotta I gotta be able to get this done sooner rather than later. So probably not on this one, but a good idea to keep for the next week's for sure. God, it just doesn't look right. <laughs> Would definitely just be a little bit too long compared to what I think. I'm going to be spending on this anymore. That feels somewhat better. How did it work so well at the beginning on this part? Is it because I also have the little rotating like swirling thing that's going on? Which that's that the whole scene looks so cool. It's so close. Like I can, I can feel it. It's just not quite there. And also, I'm gonna have this thing slide up at the end. I think that's gonna be our our loop. Is this coming back up? And that upward momentum pulls up the other blocks and stuff. Oh, it's gonna take a second to load that though. Oh, it's so satisfying. It's not even really that much of a match cut. I mean, the motion's just similar, but it's not really that close and it still works. I'm happy with that. First scene is so cool. I agree. Can't believe it only took 30 minutes. You're so right. I, I think, you know, I'm starting to think I'm realizing the problem that I'm having with these streams. Like last time's was nine, nine hours or something. And that was that was just far too long. I can't be working on this one thing for that long um, without taking. I mean, I, I took breaks. I went and like got water, went to the restroom, and and chatted with people when I needed to and whatever. But um, 
without or like in one day i don't think i can be putting that much that much time set aside for this uh for for one video anyway but i'm realizing what's happening like those first three scenes or so maybe the first four went by in like an hour or something and that was at our like around the 4 30 mark like the four hours and 30 seconds four hours and 30 minutes mark and these last few scenes i think it really is just like a i have way more energy and focus in that first bit and i'm getting so much of the stuff done but then as it keeps trailing on it's just so much more difficult for me to get through these um so we'll see arumani says i think it's the chat <laughs> I don't think so. I think the chat's the best part of the whole stream. Let's be real. Uh, Justin says, looks brilliant. Danny says, can't believe it only took 30 minutes. That scene alone probably would have taken me the whole day. Uh, Arumani says, why not rotate in the end again and show Wander there? Uh, well, maybe. Maybe. I, I don't know. I really don't want to have to do a whole other big transition again. I just want to keep things keep things a little more simple. What if I squish this thing down at the end? So not only is it getting small that way or getting longer that way, but it's getting shorter like that. That feels kind of cool. Da, 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 da. Oh, I should have like a that's what it's missing. I needed something else in the scene, and I'm realizing it's that this whole uh, circle needs a drop shadow. Excuse me, on it or something. It didn't make sense that it was just sitting there floating on the background uh, without any sort of any sort of lighting or anything on it. So the question is, do I want to do some of those like older style shadows? I mean, these were super popular in like early 2010s where you have an object and then you've got like just this super long rectangle that comes off of it and that's the shadow. Or I just do a normal drop shadow. I don't know. I'm thinking it'd be fun to do uh, one of those super long drop shadows. So I think I might, I might do that. Let's see what I would need to make that happen. When does it finish its cycle there? Do I have it pulled up on Illustrator? Whew, these are gonna look so cool with grain. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And I'm gonna do some like extra color work on the end once it's done and it's gonna look so good guys. Oh man, I'm so excited for this. All right, uh, let's grab, yeah, let's, let's grab a little rectangle that we can use for this. I'm gonna send this top cylinder shape over to After Effects, or <laughs> to Illustrator. Uh, and then hopefully it shows up. I didn't select it, that's probably why. Okay, I've got the general shape, that's enough. It didn't give me any of the uh, bits that I would need inside of it, like it didn't give me a fill or anything, but that's fine. I just need the reference. And then all I need to do is just grab, uh, let's do a rectangle, and let's say point there, point there, and rotate it from the top. Ooh, except it's an ellipse, so it's like a slightly different shape. That should work fine. Let's bring that over. It's all the way over here. And then I'll grab it. Whoops, hold on, I'll look at chat in a second. I've had both things pulled up on my monitors. Back in After Effects, there we go, okay. Uh, Armani says long shadows. Uh, Danny says, are you going to squash and stretch the ball bounce in the end? I, I think I'm going to, um, I just got to figure out the most efficient way to do it. Cause I want to keep the gradient on there. And if I use echo, it's going to make multiple copies of the same gradient and you'll like be able to see where the separation is. So what I might end up having to do is, uh, use a gradient overlay for those shapes instead. And then that way I can add echo to this flat shape and it'll do the proper, um, it'll do the proper stretching that I need it to. But that way I'll be able to have the gradient actually fit where it's supposed to. We'll see. I'll, I'll figure that out. Uh, what's this one called? We're going to say top shadow. And then this is going to be a gradient fill. And it's going to be 
the uh, background color to the dark background color. I'm gonna add that in there, remove the original fill, and then like this. Whoops, the other way around. Dark part here. It might be a little too, I think I'm gonna have to blur it or something. Let's just do a Gaussian Blur. I haven't used Gaussian Blur in forever. Oh, that looks cool. That looks really interesting. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to, I didn't even need the gradient. I'm just going to have it be super dark the whole way. Maybe a little bit lighter at this last bit here just so it matches the background. So like that, does that work? Cool. Oh, that looks great. Uh, and then we'll just do like 25% opacity or something. It doesn't need to be super, super strong. 35? Let me look at it on my other monitor. That looks all right. It is a little strange though that this like other light source is apparently supposed to be here so that Shadow doesn't make as much sense, but uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll try it out anyway. Um, okay, here's the top cylinder. The scaling is done there. It's gonna look really weird if I have it like this. So let's do like, as it gets up here, it'll like slowly build in. So we'll have, that stays there, and then opacity is going to be like 35 at that point, but zero while it's here. And then, how's that look? That kind of works. It needs to show up a little bit sooner though, I think. I might just have to do some path animation and deal with it. That's all right. We can do that. Uh, let me add some path animation. Actually, we want the path to be the same here because that's where the actual thing stops. And then at each step along the way here, we're going to bring this shadow just to the edges of the shape which means it's gonna be manual, <laughs> but it'll be fine. This one moves again, and then this one moves again. Just gonna keep putting it on that point. I'll have to move the other one down as well, I believe, but for now it works all right. All right, and then we've got this one like there. And there, I'll just do the intersection of those each time and slowly move it up. How's that look? It takes a little bit too long for it to pop in, I think. So I'll do like it just starts there. Ooh, it's still there. <laughs> Although those shadows back there look super cool. Like if this was all being lit up against a backdrop or something, that could look really interesting. I don't think I have time for that, but it would look super cool. Like, look at that. Look at how those, those lights and things are interacting. It looks super cool. But that's for another day. Da, 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 da. Oh, I saw the bottom of that thing come up. I'm going to have to move it down. Yep. This thing. It's not that sneaky. <laughs> I'll just put the base in front of it.
Shadows are the ones that make it nine hours. Absolutely. The render time alone would be nine hours if I had to have Gaussian blurred shadows everywhere. Uh, what was I thinking here? Yeah, that the, I think there just shouldn't be a bounce on that. Like maybe something else happens to it, but it feels weird only having the bounce happen at this beginning section when it gets hit. So maybe I just need to add it when it gets hit over here. Uh, we'll do this. Thing. Ah, shoot. That means I got to do this. And then one, two. Down and then back up. See if that works or if it still looks kind of jank. No, I think that looks fine. Oh, maybe every time it bounces, the like gradient that's inside of the platform stretches a little bit. That could be cool. So we'll do like uh, gradient fill, start and end point. And then it's the same path as this. So it'll be stretch and stretch and then come back. Maybe that'll look more interesting. Can we reuse the spiraling tilt from the first scene in the opposite direction for the platform at the end? I think so. I think it'll look good. That doesn't really work though. <laughs> Maybe it just gets pushed to like one direct one side instead, uh, which in that case, I'll just do like the end point, sure. Even that's a little too jarring, I think. Uh, it doesn't really work, honestly. Uh, let's try... Let's just reuse the, the tilty thing, like we were talking about just now, uh, which already has position and scale on that. Ooh, that's not at the bottom. Whoops. My bad. Which means this needs to go down a little bit more. Oh, it's just like barely up on top of that. Okay. Okay, got it. Back up to the top. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's add some rotation, shall we? We'll do from here to, uh, it'll go this direction now. Oh, I'm already seeing the problem. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and do what needs to be done here. This path is too short. <laughs> Let's just make the path longer. Now it doesn't matter. Haha. -ha. Tricked After Effects once again. And then we'll come back here to zero. Cool. Let's try that, go there, let's do 67, sure, that sounds fun. And then like that. Add the twinkle sound in the beginning of the track or was that part of the original song? It was, it was already there. Uh, I did not add that in. Oh, it looks like the text kind of rotates too, even though it's not even attached to the null. That's kind of fun. Everything feels like it's dancing. That's how I want it. All right, what needs to change?
That needs to change. Let's try doing the smear that we talked about earlier. Um, ooh, whoops. Got to respond to something really quickly. Hold on. Magic of jump cut makes the text rotate from the re <laughs> rectangle. It really does. Match cuts are something awesome. I'm really glad that I started focusing on match cuts so early. Um, I think that's been something that's really helped me just make what it just feels right. It feels cool. Um, okay, so let's try having a gradient overlay on top of this after we do echo on it and see how that works. So what's that mean? Uh, I will duplicate this, we'll hide the original, and then I'm gonna go ahead and delete the gradient fill. We're just gonna add a normal fill on it and add some echo. Let's see, where is the biggest smear happening? Here we'll do like 10 copies. Whoa, that looks strange. They are all completely different sizes. That's fun. <laughs> uh, let's do this. All right, how's that? Okay, and now, I mean, I, I hate when squares do this with echo. It's really annoying. Um, but what if I add a simple choke over the whole thing? Uh, does that work? I mean, it's gonna still make it look like it's Oh, but that, I think that actually worked. And so now I'm just going to add a null so that we can make it a pre-comp. Ah, oh, shoot. But then it's not going to be attached to the actual thing. Like, it's not going to be using the correct things. Okay, hold on. Let me do, let me do this. I'm going to say hero echo. Ah, it did change it. Okay, so I need to relink this. This is what's happening here. This thing needs to be that size. And now does it fit still? Basically, it's essentially the same. And so I will delete that and delete that. And we will add a gradient overlay over top that will be the correct colors. So what is this? It's white to red to dark teal to light blue okay and we need a radial gradient white to red to dark teal to light blue okay got it here's the white here is the red here is the dark teal and here is the light blue and then i'm gonna offset this it's not quite as easy as using gradient fill, but it should work all right. Uh, and then let's just adjust these. So that'll be down there. And that'll be down there. Ooh, it's just so... Why is this so far off? It's so far down there. I need it larger than it's letting me make it. Oh, that's unfortunate. There we go. Okay, the angle will help me. Perfect. All right, that's about what I wanted. So now it should have some smear on it. If everything went according to plan. Oh yeah. It starts to look a little strange when it changes into the rectangle now. What's the difference between gradient, gradient fill and gradient overlay? Gradient fill is natively built into the actual shape layer itself and gradient overlay is, uh, you can put that on top of a raster image that you've imported. You, I mean, you can put it on top of anything, but gradient fills are just uh, actually built into the shape layer itself and are often better for performance and um, they're, they're just treated differently. Why, I'm not sure, but Adobe just, is like that, I guess. Ooh. 
Ooh, it like stutters kind of right there. I'm not sure why. I'm gonna move that down a tiny bit. All right, let's uh, let's look at the original, compared with that, and see if it feels better. The ending of the original definitely feels better. Like the match cut itself, I think works a lot better. But what if we just only have that show up at the very end and it's just this part the rest of the time justin says gotta go now great stream great animation see your own appreciate it glad we got to chat some hope you have a lovely rest of your evening <laughs> or a very early morning Duh. It feels like this lasts for one frame too long. Like, I feel like I can see it after it's gone. Uh, okay, what if I do like that then? Like the one without echo. I think I do too. I think it fits better. But I still have that pre-comp if need be. So that's nice. Uh, let's just tighten this up a little bit. There we go. That feels good. I still got to do something with these uh, things that are floating around. Can't we echo the actual shape layer instead of adding it on a duplicate? Um, you can. However, I mean, I'll, I'll show you to, to illustrate the problem we'd run into with this. So if I add echo on this right now, it's going to, which first of all, I need to do like composite and back. It's going to make multiple copies that all have the same gradient on it. So uh, I'm going to end up with this sort of trail instead. And in practice, like that doesn't sound too bad, but it just doesn't look like the normal sort of smear that you would see. Like you get all of these little folds in there instead. Um, so it just it just starts to look a little strange. It's not quite as clean. But anyway, uh, okay, let's figure out what to do with these guys here. Uh, anything else that needs to be taken care of? No, I feel pretty good about those. That part feels good. All right, so it really is just, I need to figure out, which I think so many people are gonna be looking at the center of the screen, they're not even gonna notice the things on the outside. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll find out. That's for sure. Okay. We've got this guy. What animation do I want to do with this like mouth and eyes? <laughs> I, I really don't know. Uh, these are the eyes, correct? No, these are the eyes. So let's do, let's try just a little like scale blinking thing. There he is, and we're gonna do scale. Goes down, blinks are very quick. Whoa, what in the world? Oh, I I grouped the, I see what I did, okay. All right, and then down here. We'll do down there and then back up like this, blink. We're going to make them blink. It'll be good. And then we'll do, whoops, I don't want those to be separated while I do this part. All right. <laughs> They're going to look so goofy. Oh, that, that blink actually looks pretty good. That's, I don't think I would have wanted it any other way than how it looks right there. Uh, so I'll go ahead and add those on some of these other ones too, I guess. Here we go. We got each of these with their own individual pieces. It's like this little tiny one. No one's ever going to be able to see the eyes on those. So we'll, we won't do that. 
we'll do it on this big one. Uh, so that one does it like there, right? So we'll do like one, two, three, four, five. It'll start blinking here. Boom. Now he's blinking. And then we'll just make like the, the actual mouths get larger or something. Uh, let's try that with this main guy first. He starts blinking here, which is where the mouth will start uh, increasing in size. It'll start at like that size. <laughs> this looks so ridiculous. Uh, and then I, I'll do a little bit of a scale animation on this one too, or like the, it won't be quite as even. So this part will like start a little smaller or something. Okay. And we'll, we'll see how that looks. <laughs> this looks absurd. This is one of the goofiest looking things I've ever designed or animated ever in the midst of like all of this super pretty looking stuff. Ugh. Incredible. This is great. This is this is what After Effects is built for. Alright, we need group one. I mean I I never do little extra fun bits in here like this, so this should be fun. <laughs> this looks ridiculous. Oh, what if we make the faces actually like look over there and look back the other way? I think that's what we should do. So uh, let's grab the main one. I'm not doing it on all the other tiny ones though, because it's just, it's not going to be noticeable on a phone screen, which is where most people are going to watch this anyway. So let's do that. We're going to have uh, both of these are going to look in that direction. So it's going to start there. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to go down this way. So it's looking like it's looking over there and then coming back to where it was before. Oh man, this is, this is ridiculous. Uh, let's do like 64 and 65 ish. How's that look? <laughs> All right, that was totally worth it. And it's definitely way more noticeable now. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up at that when I watch it. Oh man. All right. Uh... <laughs> this looks ridiculous. I love it. Uh, this one goes one, two, three, four, five, six until it is also looking directly at this, like what is going on over here? And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we'll go back. Uh, this is the, the peak of my career. I don't know about y'all. These look so silly. Okay. I don't even think most people are gonna understand like the the implication, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> this is this is just dumb. This one is so silly. I mean. I'm I'm happy with it. I am happy with that as it sits now. Uh, let's just have this gradient overlay move over throughout this. So we'll have like completely white and then transition to this floating over top. Ooh, what? Why is it showing the blue gradient over there before it's even gotten on the text. That's weird. Wow. Yeah, it's treating that very strangely. I'm going to take deep blue off the text itself and we'll just add it to the overall, uh, the overall layer over here. Control Y, add the deep blue there. Then does it work? Yeah, that's how I wanted it. Okay. And we'll actually do 500 or so. 
This is going to be unexpected for the people on Instagram. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it will. Very unexpected indeed. That's just too far off, I think, is what the problem is, too. So let's do like 100 off. How's that look? What about like 50? Ooh, that's a little too much. So 60. And what if I change this to reflected just for fun? Too much, I think. Linear works fine. Angle would look really strange. Diamond would look even worse. <laughs> Linear works and is the winner. Uh, let me add a hue and saturation thing here. Bring that up a tiny bit. Cool. All right, time to do the like color exploration and all that stuff. And then everything will be done. In order to match the previous shape, we can go from the same color as the box to white with the text. I think you are right on that. It's primarily red there, so let's do let's do negative sixty like here. How's that work? Oh yeah, that's much better. Good call. I think it looks cooler anyway. Ooh, and then we'll actually have it like come back to that color as it's rising up here. Let's do that. This moves that way, this moves that way. Trevor says when the faces weren't as animated, it had a very Miyazaki feel, reminded me of the Kodama and Princess Mononoke. I'm not. I don't know the references to those things, uh, but I can certainly look them up. Miyazaki, Miyazaki? Japanese animation director, okay. Doing well so far, Kodama and Princess. Kodama, Princess, Mon Kodama, Princess Mononoke. Oh, oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I can see that. And then as it goes back up, you roll. Cool. I'm happy with the overall animation. That transition to the cylinder is one of the coolest things I've ever done, for sure. Nice. All right, let's add some just like overall finishing touches to things. Where do I want any sort of glow? If I do, I'm trying to be a little less reliant on the glow on this one, especially since there's just so many gradients happening. The only reason there's even a great uh, deep glow on that one is just because it's like, I don't even think I'm going to add any uh, deep glow to any individual objects. I think at this point I am just going to pre-comp everything, which, okay, I'm going to change the audio on this before I forget back to zero decibels. And then pre-comp it all. Uh, we'll just call this everything. I'm sure people who buy the project files absolutely love my like four different layers of pre-comps to get through before you can get to the actual like editable stuff um, or like the meat of the file. But oh well, this is just, this is how I do it. So uh, people are getting the full experience. We'll add just like deep glow overall to the whole thing at like 0 0.05. And then I'll add a hue and saturation to everything to make the colors back to what they were. See, like, even that, I feel like, is too much. It's too much. Like, point zero one. Point zero one's a little bit better. Maybe I just need to add, like, curves to the overall thing once I've added some deep glow, and then it'll... I 
think that looks good. Ooh, ooh, some of those look so sick. Wow. This is gonna look really awesome on a on a phone as well, like with an OLED screen. Ooh, there's some weirdness happening there though. Like, why does that why does that flicker like that? I think I'm just gonna have that part uh, completely change to black. I don't think there's gonna be a little fade off. Uh, so let me grab the background and I will just have it do that. Those are just going to be the colors at that point. Cool. Nice. That feels a lot better. Good call with the audio. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Usually I forget to change the audio back to the levels it should be. But not today. I'm surprised how well this is playing back for there being huge saturation curves and deep glow over top of everything. Even if pretty minimally. I'm still pretty surprised by that. But the thing that's really going to send this thing over the top... Oh, that might be why. I've got all of these on something other than an adjustment layer. It's just on the actual... Huh. Not quite sure why I did that. There we go. Everything's just a little deeper now. And then let's go ahead and do another adjustment layer that's got our grain on it. The grain is going to look so cool on this one, I, or I, I want it to. I want it to look really, really cool. We're going to do highlights, colors, and shadows. So I'll just handle the highlights for now. Uh, where's one that has a lot of white in it? Actually, none of these scenes have a lot of white. I'll just use this reference point right here. So I'm going to do like 0.3 as the size. The color is going to be monochromatic. Application is going to be multiply. And then it's not going to be in anything other than the highlights. That's obviously way too intense. Ooh, and then I'll make a, I'll actually add a tint to this. Where is the, uh, what's like the darkest color that we use in the whole video? Let's do like this color. Let's like fully saturate it. Can we just do, like just that's the straight up color that I wanna use for this? Cause that would be nice. Uh, let's do one. Tint amount. I would like it to be full tint, please. Just barely doing anything, to be honest. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, maybe it's because the intensity and stuff is so much lower now. But let's do like 0.4 on the intensity on this. We've got some little bits that are coming over here too, but that is also highlights, so that makes sense. Uh, I also want it to be animated at half the speed of the overall thing. I'll do the same thing with this one. Uh, for the colors, I think I just want the white. So I'll grab, I'll grab the kind of like deeper white that we have here, like that. And then we'll do full tint. And I'm seeing some like yellows and greens in there, which is a little weird. Uh, change the application, keep it on film. We'll do midtones at 100. Danny says, heading out now, amazing stuff. Glad I got to see the whole process this time. Excited to see the final product. Peace out, chat, he says. Appreciate you. Uh, nothing in the shadows, also nothing in the highlights. And then point two. Ooh, that looks, that looks cool. Said it's like 0.6. Oh, that feels nice. That feels real nice. 
And then in these like really, really dark parts, I want, uh, well, first of all, did I change the speed on this? No, I did not. That would be very confusing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. And then change the speed on this one before I forget. I want the color to be, to actually be the white. Uh, I don't want it to do, so I'll do monochromatic on this one, I guess. And we will do screen, maybe? Yeah, I think that'll work. And then we'll do what? Nope, not, not upping the intensity. That's not what I want. 0.2 as the size. And then have it only apply to the shadows. That looks pretty cool. I mean, where, where are some other ones I can look at this on? That's a very red frame. That must be when the thing gets hit. Ooh. Ooh, that looks good. I'm very, very happy with that. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Very beginning. Got some on there. Very end. That's, I mean, that's a lot at the very end, but compared to the rest of the video, I mean, of course, it makes sense that there's more there. Wow. That looks really cool. Um, I want to toy with these a little bit. Like, I think in the areas where it's on the colors, maybe I want it to be larger and more intense. What does that look like? What if I do monochromatic? That's probably just too much is what that is. What if I do one? I mean, it looks super nice close up, but I don't know if it's really going to come across. That's all right, though. Space Odyssey stuff. That's right. That's the plan. And I think I want a little bit of chromatic aberration already built into this missile that's over here. I'm going to mess with the deep glow on this a little bit. We're going to check chromatic aberration. And we're going to do like 1%. And green. What about green and blue? Kind of... I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> what if I do something like 0.1 and then enable angle, have it go like along the line maybe? Or no, that won't work because it's gonna, it's only gonna follow. I see, okay. So what if I do one that is, whew, well, okay. Let's turn off chromatic aberration. Kind of like a tad bit more so that it's visible at least in the white parts. I am with you on that. Kind of like a distorted look. Uh, let's disable chromatic aberration on this big one. And then also disable that and do just like a, just a normal aspect ratio. Whoa, why is it so dim now? Or is it just the frame I went on? What? What did I just do? Oh, I think I need to have this over top. Is that it? I don't know. Something happened, though. It lost a bit of its spark. I wanted to add another bit of deep glow that would do just like a little pinstripe thing across it so it looks more like a little lens flare, kind of. But that doesn't seem to be panning out. So <laughs> uh, I don't know that that's going to work. Let me try it again, though. Maybe it'll work this time. Point one. Okay, now it's now it's working. I think. Even smaller. And then on this one, I do want chromatic aberration. I think. Ooh, tint could be cool. Whoa. That's interesting. Uh, I don't know that I want it that intense. 
But that does look kind of cool. And then is that still going to... Oh, because I deleted it, is it going to not do the little, like, flickers? Oh, no, it does the flicker. And then I guess I'll just have the... Uh, the angle on this change over time. So it'll be, like over here by the time it gets there? Or will that look goofy? I don't know. Find out. Here we go. That looks a little silly. <laughs> Uh, what if instead we do like to there and then back? How does that look? Which, sorry if After Effects is blasting everyone's ears off every time I play this now, but we are almost there. Oh, and I can change the color as it's coming across too. That could be super cool. Color. And then once it is over here, it's more of the teal. Ooh, that looks super cool. Red, 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 kind of white, kind of white, more teal, and then... That's kind of fun. How's that look with the green and stuff on it? Which scene is that? Scene four? Scene five? I don't even know which where these are <laughs> anymore. Okay, it's there. Oh, that looks cool. That looks cool. The I mean, I can tell that the opacity's changing there, but that looks pretty cool. I mean, you can really see the green on those white parts now. Um, anything else I want to do to this? I don't think so. I think now it's just going to be, this will be everything pre-chrome ab for chromatic aberration. And then I'll just do my channel mixer with these set to add. Uh, that one will be our blue. Then we have our green pass. Whoops. And then we will have our red pass. And then all I need to do is say 100.25 and 100.5. I don't want the greens in there. So how about this one? Does that do it? I need to find one that has more of a, wait. Yeah, I don't want the green. So do I need to do this one? No. Or is it just because I have this one? <laughs> Whoops, I just put it at zero scale. I mean, that kind of gets there, and then 100.5? No, that puts it in the wrong... Man, uh, 99.25. That really messes it up. <laughs> but it could also just be because I have so much red in that scene already. What about where it actually has white? That's got some on it. And then where's the spot where we've got some more stuff going on? That works well. What if I do 101 and then 100.5? That's probably too much. Oh yeah, especially on some of those. 
Can I see it with the thing going? Looks kind of cool. The top of this thing gets really messed up though. At least at that beginning part. What does the beginning look like? It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I like it a little bit. Uh, doing a little more over-exaggerated. Okay, I think that's the one I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one I was looking for. All right, cool. We are there, y'all. I think that that's going to do it. Now it's just going to be rendering this thing out. What do our little character guys look like? <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous, of course. And then the ending here still looks pretty good. Cool. I'm happy with it. I, I think it looks good. Um, has more character to it if it's exaggerated. I agree. I mean, it's a pretty minuscule thing, though. Like, I can do 101, but it just starts to, like, especially on some of these corners, it's just way too much. Like, that's, that's just too noticeable, I think. Oh, but it does look cool on these, on the little rings and stuff. We might just go for it. I don't know. What about these? Oh, those look cool too. Those look really cool. Oh, it's like fully split out. It's not even the actual white anymore. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. We're gonna go, we're gonna go with the way over-exaggerated chromatic aberration on this one. And then, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And we just won't do it again. But I feel like it looks great and people will love it. So. Lorenzo says the grain looks so nice. Thank you, thank you. I agree. I think it looks super, super cool. Uh, anything else I want to do to this? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll just render it and see if there's anything after I finish rendering that uh, will need to look different. Now, I'm trying to decide if I want to wait to post this until Sunday night so that it's there on Monday because those seem to perform better or if I just post it now um, because I've posted the last few at kind of weird hours on Saturdays and they just haven't done nearly as well as they normally do um, so I think I might end up waiting to post these uh, to social post this to social for a bit um, and a bit meaning just till like tomorrow night or something but we'll see I don't know I'll still I'll still play it on the stream though. Um before then. Like once it finishes rendering, I'll I'll play it. But uh 520. Oh wait, shoot. I gotta do the uh I gotta bring all this stuff in here. Say all with com ab. And then I need to make a 24 second comp. So that it has the looping twice in there. Or so it loops at least once. All right, uh, let's export that one. But yeah, I think I'm gonna think I'm gonna wait to post it until Sunday night this time. Uh, but it'll be there tomorrow night, um, probably around this time actually. Um, but yeah, should be good. And I can answer any excuse me questions and that sort of stuff while this thing's rendering out. Five twenty-two, twenty-two, five twenty-eight, twenty-two, and then it's. What am I calling this? This one is wander loops once. Cool. It is rendering. Ah, it's really hard for me to not just post these things <coughs> immediately after making them. Because it's just it's just so exciting uh, to be able to put that out in the world. But at least this way, I guess you guys get more of a like sneak peek preview sort of thing by seeing it uh, seeing it now. And not having to wait an extra day for it to be on social media. So I guess that adds more value to the stream, depending on when I do it anyway. But yeah, I think I'm I'm not gonna do the whole posting on Saturdays thing anymore. I'll do late Sunday nights or early Monday mornings, and I think those work well. Can't wait to share it on my story. I appreciate you, Lorenzo. 
<sighs> but yes. We're rendering. It's happening. And it's actually going really quickly. We're already 40... Uh, we're almost like a third of the way through the whole thing. It's only been a minute. Arumani says, any resources to study different types of cuts? Uh, you talked, you got to learn the mass cuts early, so I thought we'll ask you. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember the first place where I started seeing match cuts. I wish I knew which, which video like really caught my eye and I was like, I want to start animating stuff like that. Um, but I've always done match cuts. Even like my frame by frame stuff at the beginning were pretty much all match cuts. I feel like maybe it was from watching, uh, I mean, at the time, when I was younger, there were lots of people in like the Call of Duty editing scene and that sort of thing. And so uh, following a lot of those people on Twitter, uh, a lot of them were doing just like super basic match cuts with like subtle movements of the camera um, with nothing on the camera actually looking the same. It's just that something happened to be moving to the right and then the other shot started moving to the right. Um, I don't know. I don't have any specific resources. Uh, but I'll, I'll let you know if I, I find any um, people that are like very specifically into match cuts and that sort of thing. Ordinary Folk does a really good job looking at their stuff frame by frame really helps to uh, understand that like, oh, that super long tube was actually just made from like one rectangle or like one circle or something. Um, I don't know. Ben, ben Marriott also did, I mean, he was in the stream earlier, he did another uh, video recently on, on generally how to do match cuts as well. Um, so I would, I would look that up. I think it's his most recent video, maybe two videos ago. I don't know. Um, but that's super useful as well. Whew. We're going to have made it within the eight hour mark. I'm pretty disappointed that I didn't get within the five or six though. That's unfortunate. I really started to slow down uh, after a little while there. Come on, 15 seconds until the render is done. Then we will be out of here. Out of here, out of here, out of here. And I'll make sure to, to post the project files on, on my Gumroad as well. Uh, those of you that are members uh, of the tier two will get access to the Illustrator storyboard and the After Effects file um, for free with your membership. And if you are a tier one member, you'll get access to the After Effects file. Uh, those posts will be up on Monday, uh, if not tomorrow. And other than that, the entirety, like the Illustrator and After Effects file will be available on uh, for individual purchase on the Gumroad as well. It's the first link in my description if you want to be able to toy around with the stuff that I have been making this whole time uh, and actually get to go and do a bit more. I mean, I don't know how much more you can get in depth you can get than watching me do it for like eight hours. But if you want to be able to see those, uh, they will be there. Uh, Arumani says, how's the Gumroad reception? Pretty great, honestly. Uh, I've had a couple people who've gone and bought every single project file that's on there. Um, and I'm, I don't really try to advertise it very much at all. It's usually just like at the end of a stream or after I've made a post or something, I'm like, Hey, the project files are there. If you want them, um, I'm not going to be sitting there like making posts, trying to advertise my Gumroad all the time, but how are you able to do eight hours of work with little, no breaks? Step one, make yourself bowls of food, bring bowls of table to debt or <laughs> bowls of food to the table or the desk. Uh, and then just keep on, just keep on going. I don't know don't know i got a good night's sleep last night that was part of it i just i built up that stamina i guess all right here is the premiere of the wonderful new loop shall we let's take a look okay maybe not that fast <laughs> all right let's take a look here we go <laughs> I 
I cannot get over how goofy these things look. It's just you're watching the the center of the screen and you can just see in your peripheral vision this thing going like auga auga. <laughs> oh, oh man. Uh those are great. I'm I'm super happy with this. I wanted to make something with this style and I I'm glad that it it turned out as as well as it did. This scene in particular, the lighting just looks incredible. Uh, same with this one at the beginning. They just look so nice. Uh, this planet scene looks super nice as well. Um, super happy about that. But uh, yeah, glad we got through it, y'all. It will be posted tomorrow night. I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna see if the performance is really that much better if I wait to post uh, than doing it on a Saturday. Uh, Lorenzo says, I get easily distracted and take too much breaks when I'm working. I, I feel that. I mean, I definitely take a lot more breaks during like a normal work day than I do for this. But because I'm live, it's a little bit more difficult to like go and leave and do something because then you got to start the stream back up again and, and all that stuff. It's just kind of it's just kind of annoying. I'd rather just go through it in one go. Uh, and then I'm not even done watching your previous stream. Oh, yeah. I had another con I had a comment on a previous one that was like, I'm going to have to start taking my entire weekend to watch these, aren't I? And I'm like, I hope not in the future. I really don't know how I made that first one so quickly. Um, I, I mean, all of these have been pretty quick, relatively. But that first one in under five hours, I really, really want to do that again. But anyway, I'm not going to hit the eight hour mark. We're at 747 right now. Um, and I am going to call it. I appreciate you guys for taking the time to come and hang out. Um, all the questions and things are getting, they're getting really, really good. I think we're having really great conversations. Um, sometime next week before doing a weekly stream like this, I definitely want to do either a uh, review stream where I'm looking through your work and giving thoughts and that sort of stuff on it, if that's something any, everyone is open to. Uh, and in addition to that, looking through old projects and, and just having more of like a just chatting Q&A type thing. I think that'll be fun because uh, I think those are super valuable as well as these more just like super in-depth uh, getting to see everything I'm doing on these animations. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Appreciate you for sticking around. Everybody who's been in the chat, I appreciate you as well. And I will...